Hello everyone and welcome to the second day of the uh, live CTF. Uh, sorry for the delay, we've had some technical uh, difficulties and I think we're just adjusting some sound volumes uh, here. Uh, as you might see on the screen, uh, I'm not with Jordan here today because uh, we have instead uh, live overflow as a commentator uh, calling in remotely. Hello. No, Hello. Thanks for having me coming in here from Germany. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there, but it looks amazing what you guys did. Nice. Yeah, really, really fun to have you here on the stream, at least. Um, so uh, it's going to be super nice. We have uh, a full packed schedule today with a lot of matches. We will be talking about that more throughout the broadcast, but we need to get uh, right into it. So uh, as soon as I get like just an OK from uh, production, yeah, uh, we are uh, ready to go. So uh, I'm just going to see. Yeah. Uh, OK. So uh, first live CTF match of the day. Start the countdown. Five, Let's go. four, three, two, two, one, go. Let's go. I might be a bit biased in this match. Do you know why? Oh yeah, so uh, we have uh, the matchup, right? Uh, Sauercloud versus uh, Dice Guesser. Uh, Sauercloud being the German uh, mixed team, which you have been uh, participating in, right? Yeah, I played with Sauercloud before, as you said, big German team, so lots of people I know in there. So, so I might be slightly biased, but of course I'm also rooting for Dice Guesser, who are also incredibly skilled. Nice. Yeah, it's really cool. So this uh, challenge that they are uh, getting, it's uh, the... Sorry. Um, so it's again a pawnable uh, x86. Um, nothing uh, nothing uh, shocking there. Uh, we can see the two teams opening up uh, the binary in uh, some uh, reverse engineering programs. We have uh, Binder Ninja and we have Ghidra, so a little bit yeah, of a mix up there. I, w I just wanted to say, I hope uh, Jordan appreciates that I, th I believe this was the first time we see Binary Ninja and I want to say Sour Cloud coming through here with Jordan's wishes. Yeah, the, creating a bit of that goodwill, maybe that can translate into some uh, good luck uh, for the team. Yeah, Jordan should maybe uh, slide them a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we do. We might slide teams uh, hint. Uh, it, well, but in that case, of course, to both of them, uh, we got a question here. If we can just up the volume of uh, live overflow a little bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, sorry. There will be. There might be like you know, f few technical uh, hitches uh, uh, throughout this this beginning of the stream. But uh, let's try to go to yeah. So we are looking here at uh, one of the teams. Sorry, I'm just making. Sure, I What's have the, the what was the name of the challenge again? Um, yes, uh, we have uh, Fair Enough is the uh, ch name of the challenge. And uh, uh, like spelled as like Fairy Enough. So it's kind of like a magic brewing thing theme going on here. You can see in the, the compilation here in, in, in Ghidra uh, that there's some kind of menu. You can stir to the left, stir to the right and stuff. Uh, so we'll see what that um, translates into. Yeah, in, in case the people don't know, these challenges are a little bit smaller. They are not hardcore DEFCON CTF challenges to be solved in many, many hours. They are intended to be solved quickly. So there's kind of just like 
one area it focuses on. Um, so is this challenge more reversing or more exploitation oriented? What, 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 what do the players expect? Yes, here? so uh, here this is uh, again a, a pwnable challenge. So uh, we can see here on uh, Sourcloud sites, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Sourcloud here using uh, Binary Ninja, as you said. Uh, you can see that they are running the program in the GDB with Jeff to uh, you know, get some understanding of, of what's going on there. Uh, there's some kind of uh, array here with data being populated in this uh, case 7 of the switch uh, case. Uh, Did they call it Scratch or does this binary come with uh, symbols? Uh, uh, you know? Oh yes. Uh, sorry. What did you say? Uh, I forgot. As as Sour Cloud uh, named uh, that that big array, it seems a scratch. I was just wondering if the binary comes with symbols or was that a, a decision? Oh yeah, I them? think this one is stripped, right? Or I'm not uh, entirely sure. I just want to point out in the corner uh, of of uh, Sour Cloud's stream, they have a. Uh, a like speedrunner uh, timer interface here. I really uh, uh, like this small touch that I've added. You can see oh, that. Oh, I, I actually, you know, I'm I'm watching you right now over the internal uh, stream here. I thought that is a tool from you to keep track internally, but you are right. It's actually on their computer. No, no, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, like a live split timer uh, for uh, live CTF flag any percent. Uh, yeah, as a, a speedrunning uh, fan, I definitely uh, you know appreciate those small little touches. It uh, took them ten seconds for to open Binary Ninja. Um, hmm. we, we should ask Jordan if that's an acceptable time for the tool <laughs> to launch. Yeah, and how much was uh, you know uh, how much was the, the program and how much was was them? Um, but uh, yeah, as you said, uh, they're trying to look like the. It's look like lo looking like they're trying to like name things a little bit to trying to see what these seven options is in this menu actually kind of translate to. Um, we're going to switch over here to Dice Guesser uh, to see them um, starting to write a little bit of a solution script here. Um, not, you know, um, not sure exactly what they, they, they had a function there called create byte. Um, so they have something in store there for, for uh, you know, starting the solution. Oh, they're looking up uh, uh, B-Suit's identity. This is like, there's something like a maths uh, problem involved in this. Oh, I, I uh, sorry. Oh, no, now, is this is a math challenge? Well, so this is the thing with this challenge, right? Uh, it's basically a uh, shell coding challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but they cannot just like input their, their bytes, uh, you know, however they want. Uh, they have to create them by like incrementing and decrementing. I think the idea is that you can only increment and decrement using like prime numbers. So you have to like express your target value as a linear combination of prime numbers. Uh, I think if I, I remember correctly. Yeah. The the code like this in assembly, like modulo math or whatever, uh, can look quite ugly. So I'm, um, they didn't get the source code with this. They had to um, reverse engineer, obviously, with Binary Ninja, right? Yes, uh, that's that's so, correct. So, and you said it's stripped. So uh, w do you know how Dicecaster figured out that it's that? Or was it in the menu? I didn't quite. Uh, no, no, no. They, I the think menu. they were looking at the different operations. Uh, if so, so. Um, uh, you can see them, um, yeah, I'm just trying to s follow here a little bit what they are trying to write in their function here. They seem to be thinking a little bit hard. So the importing random here, which uh, I'm not entirely sure what's the idea uh, of the using The comment random. says brute force lol, so maybe, maybe, maybe they are copying the check maybe that is also in the binary that's checking something instead of oh, generating it, they just... Yeah, or so to... these, yeah. So if we could switch over to, um, uh, no, I see there's some kind of, uh, you know, discussion going on in production booth, so we are not switching over to SourCloud, but I will tell you that SourCloud is uh, doing, also creating some kind of function here where they're using like four or nested for loops or something like that. So. 
uh, there are different approaches here. One using uh, randomization and one using, I think, like pure br brute force. Um, but um, yeah, so I think they're, they're both kind of onto something here. Um, so yes, here we can see uh, Sour Cloud again. Um, and you can try to see there like the code. Um, I think we have these options three, four, five, and six in the in the menu where you can see that it's like adding and subtracting uh, value. I mean, first it's some kind of offset in some array, I think, and then they're like adding and subtracting values there. I think, which is, I think, this whole thing where you're adding and subtracting prime numbers to your yeah. shell code. As, as as somebody who is not that experienced with math. I mean, the menu and the description itself of the challenge doesn't really give away this um, math operation behind it. So being able to see that quickly in the assembly code is really impressive to me. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I would have realized that it's like some math going on there that um, and, and what kind of math. Yes. Yeah, the fact that uh, we saw the correct keyword being Googled by one of the uh, Dice Guesser uh, players is uh, uh, pretty nice uh, to say, I think. Um, and uh, but yeah, it, it's like uh, some of these uh, CTF challenges, you know, like some sometimes the, there are a little bit of like curveballs thrown in, like uh, problems from other domains. We saw like a Sudoku challenge uh, yesterday, uh, a little bit of like a maths problem today as well. Um, but here you can hey, see, you, sorry, yes. What do you think uh, from the difficulty level? The last challenge yesterday took a lot of time. Um, the before that were faster. What do you, where do you expect this to be? Do you expect them to need a hint uh, for this one or do you think they are on a good path? So we tried uh, yesterday, we worked a lot, like yesterday evening, we worked a lot on like calibrating, you know, difficulties for the challenges based on, you know, the first four matches that we did. Um, I think, I would say this one is, uh, it's probably easier than the most difficult one yesterday, but it's probably more difficult than the easiest one yesterday is my mm. slight guess here. Uh, we'll see uh, how that turns out. But you can see here this uh, loop that I uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, yes, but we're going over to Dice guess Guesser. Oh, and they are looking up some um, like uh, algorithms uh, here on Google. They're look looking at linear combinations mod n. So here we get into the, the so they, they understand in what like uh, what kind mm -hmm. of math problem you, we have reduced this till to. To be completely honest with you, I would have already completely lost. I would be on the failing side of this table. <laughs> it would not be a good choice for Sour Claw to sit there right now. Well, it's good uh, then that uh, we are in the commentary booth and they are uh, playing, right? Uh, <laughs> right. I chickened out and stayed in Berlin while the team traveled. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we can see here the function they have written here. You have this create byte and they create a random integer and oh no they are selecting a random integer among those four integers and then they are appending that to a list and then uh oh okay so basically uh so you can your values that you are uh inputting into the shell code you have these three values 16 72 15 and 253 uh so you can i think add any of those values uh, and then you need that to get to your destination value. So what Dicegesser is doing is that they are just looking at their target and then just randomly uh, picking uh, these four values to add to it and then checking if they have reached the target. So this might, well, we will probably not yield the most efficient way to get to your target value, but hopefully it will get you to the target value within a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah. And, and sorry, yeah. And uh, is it then how how is the shell code then constructed? Is it then they have to go to a, like a certain target value that is then accepted and then move to the next one and then slowly construct shell code? Is it constraining the shell code? No, also? this is yes. Or? This is this is the way you input your uh, shell code. So like, uh, I guess you start with like an array of all zeros or something like this. Uh, like you have some some starting point. I'm not completely sure about that part, but then you can like byte by byte modify those values using these uh, rules uh, to like modify the values in your array and then you can have this thing executed. Uh, so this is like how you're brewing your magic potion here, right? You're right, stirring it. Comes yeah, uh, so you're brewing the magic potion by adding these prime uh, numbers and then at the end, I guess you're consuming your magic potion or something. And we can see here, 
uh, the code for, for uh, um, Sovereign Cloud. Uh, they're using uh, C3, uh, Constraint Solver, a uh, big, uh, big, big fan. Um, do, you use, uh, do you use C3 a lot? Uh, yeah, whenever I have something like this where I would have to solve some equation, which might be very easy to solve, but I can't do it. So I try to use Z3 and hopefully it's a, it's a formula Z3 can handle. So yeah, if I ever face a challenge like this, Z3 is the, the tool of choice for me. Nice. Um, we can also. Is it is this a problem that Z3 can solve, uh, or is this um, might struggle with? I think you, it's you know? probably not well suited. Like maybe the search space is like small enough that it can handle it, but uh, I'm not sure that. No, wait. This is a completely. Mm, yeah, it probably should be fine. Uh, I'm a little bit uncertain, but you can see here they are. So for for uh, you know for our viewers, so C3 is a uh, constraint solving uh, software. So you provide it with a set of, set of equations, uh, a bunch of variables and a bunch of equations, and then the program will figure out values for the variables that satisfy all of these equations. Uh, so in this case, you could say like, okay, we have four unknowns like the multiples of our prime numbers and you can say like a times the first prime number plus b times the second prime number and so on should equal our target value and then c3 tries to figure out uh, appropriate values for a b c and d uh to uh make this happen and then they can use that output as uh um, you know the 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 commands for their exploit hmm. I was just uh, going back uh, again and looking at the assembly uh, code um, uh, um, just to get a try to understand a bit better what, what is happening here. So basically you have um, an array and you, the, to the first two options uh, move the cursor in the array back and forth. And then with other options, you can modify the array value and that array is later your shell code. Um, and these array values, uh, you can just, you know, add or subtract a certain value, but it, but which seems at first very easy, but I guess it's because your input length for the choices is is is, is short. No, it's a while true. Hmm. I because I, I I'm looking at, again at the this assembly and trying to figure out how how do they treat it as a math problem. To me, it looks on first sight just a basic so, array to just. So just to cut you off a little bit here. Uh, I can see here on Sour Cloud's screen that they are trying to run the program remotely and they seem to have a shell. Uh, uh, so they have a, I think it's a locally working. Oh no, do we have an issue here? Is it? Uh, no, no, that's a local, it's a locally working. They have shell locally. Uh, so they are very close. We can see this. You can see the submitter uh, binary, they're running it. And that should be... Yeah, that's game, that's game. Good luck, good job to uh, Sour Cloud for... Oh, hi, I, yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. So uh, what we saw there on screen, we saw them running a... Uh, um, submit their binary once they had the remotely working uh, exploit. Uh, that was a uh, fairly quick one. Um, so yeah, to be honest, the, the, yeah, C congratulations. Amazing. Uh, go team. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, that right. is the, this match we will be back in, uh, yeah, with, uh, we will, we will catch up with the schedule. So we will be back in already in 20 minutes, uh, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I will be swapping out with Jordan and, uh, Live Overflow, you are staying on for the next match, right? Sounds good. Great. Uh, so and, uh, if, if I, if I can just plug my stream in between the matches. Oh, totally. Twitch TV Live Overflow, I'm going to re kind of like recap what just happened, trying to better understand because everything happened so fast. So, you know, uh, in, in the meantime, if you are bored, uh, come over there. And then, yeah. Sounds we'll like an excellent, uh, sounds like an excellent idea to have, uh, you know, a recap there. Uh, we will go to an intermission on this stream. Check out Live Overflows. Uh, you're streaming on Twitch? Right. Twitch, Live Overflow. Uh, we'll go to an intermission here. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Uh, see you later.
Welcome back, live CTF, uh, round two, day two. Uh, I'm back, I'm Cyphertex or Jordan. Thanks, Kyle, for doing uh, round one. Uh, we still have uh, Live Overflow. Uh, live Overflow, are you still there? Yes, I'm, the, I'm here. Excellent, Hi. all right, good. All right, so we've got round two. Uh, this round, we've got coming up um, uh, Samurai and Perfect Roo. So let's get them started with a big countdown. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh. All right. Okay. It's quite so what is this challenge called, Jordan? Okay, so this challenge. Oh, I gotta check my notes. This has been a crazy morning. This challenge is called. Oh, seek and destroy. Uh, maybe a little Metallica reference was was I think the person who who named it. Um, I think so. We we told each team a category, and this category we told them was exploitation, mm -hmm. and we we kind of we didn't say it was opponable, uh, because in from my perspective, opponable. You have to like find the vulnerability and exploitation is like no 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 you just you have to exploit it like there's already one one there so it's it's a subtle distinction it really doesn't matter too much I think to be good at both uh, so yeah. I think we've got uh, let's see so we're Se seek is definitely uh, an uh, a technical term it, there's you know the seek uh, method and so does does the challenge have to do something with it, that it it does that's exactly right yeah great great question so seek and destroy in fact it describes exactly what the binary does uh, you can give it a file. And you can give it an offset that which it will seek to, and then you get to write bytes. So you can just open up any file, and you can see actually here, like the the actual decompilation for the. Let's see, we're back over on this screen. So okay, we're doing we're doing check sec um, on it, but yeah, some basic uh, yeah checks at the beginning just to make sure not to miss. To, to, uh, sometimes you know we we ha talked about it yesterday as well that uh, some sometimes challenges uh, don't have stack canaries or don't have uh, position independent code and maybe you you have a wrong assumption so better to check this at the start yeah it's 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 so easy and especially in a live ctf environment right which is really stressful where you're trying to like keep track and remember and you just always you, you might just assume oh of course it's going to have rel row or it's going to have pi or whatever so yeah it, it's it's such a good habit i feel like to have like a just sort of like things that you always do things that you like always check off and and um Oh yeah, we're getting my my name fixed here. So sorry for we'll get the uh, uh, the the title slide changed. Um, so the yeah, so they're running check sec. They're they're looking at the protections on the binaries. So if I describe this, so I like this because you don't I think know any of the answers uh, to these binaries, right? So we're kind of bringing you in. Uh, I mean, I've I've peeked a little bit. At okay, the, you, I, I you do have access. access the, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, but but yeah, I I don't have a good understanding of of it. So like the yeah, the solution for this one, I I love this one because it's one where 
like the obvious solution, most of these, the obvious solution from like a CTF player perspective is the one that we want you to do, uh, but we still have to see you do it, right? And we have to see see you uh, come off of that. So. Uh, Does it have to do with uh, that on Linux everything is a file and you're supposed to open? Uh, I don't know. I guess yeah, there are no, many no, solutions yeah. To, keep, to keep going. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So everything's a file. So like, what are some of the things that like are files on Linux that you wouldn't expect to be a file, right? Like you've got the proc file system, the dev yeah, file exactly. system, like these weird things. And so, okay, if if uh, if you were doing this and you've got proc, what in there would you use to to start writing to? Yeah, a proc self mem. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So proc self mem is just going to give you access to the memory of the binary. And we uh, see here uh, people already looking up proc self mem here, perfect root. Uh, well, I was just looking it up. Yep, and, and already the building the, the, the pwn script. So like they, they know, like they're looking at this thing, they're just making sure that their script is going to be formatted correctly. Like, you know, do you send it hex, do you send decimal, do you, like, how do you send the data? So it looks like they already know we're going to open up the, the binary. Uh, we're going to tell it where we want to write to proxy self-mem. Although there is one gotcha. Uh, I think in our official solve script, uh, we, we first open um, maps, right? Because we want to know mm. where we're actually mapped in memory, too. So it's nice that we can we can open that up. Um, and I'm wondering, is there, is there other ways to cheese it? I mean, on, a, on an actual, like, full Ubuntu, and maybe if this is, like, actually running as root, you might want to, you know, instead of going to self prec mem and writing some shell code, you might want to just open, you know, etc, uh, passwd or etc shadow or so and write yourself a backdoor user into there or, re or changing the root password, which might be a bit easier or nicer to debug as well. Yeah, um, but that's a great idea. Is, is there a way to cheese it or is that, do you have any other idea for solutions than proc I mean, self -mem? we we didn't have an intended one, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one. And I would, I would love to to find out that, that there is. I, I, I expect, knowing these players, that we're going to see them both go for um, just the memory one. But I think you're right. Like, yeah. I think actually looking for like something more logic-based or kind of, you know, injection-based or anything else. Like I, a script, like on, I mean, if you if you have root permission, I don't know how the challenge container is set up. Um, it's running as root, if you could. So I the binaries know. are not running as root. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. So I, I think, uh, you, you know, you do, some of that stuff doesn't work, but like, you could you just uh, so I don't know if you can create a file, but if you could, could you create like a dot ssh authorized keys and just log in or like there may be other uh, yeah there may very well be other options which I actually could think is really interesting. Destroy their own challenge by instead of going for the memory, but overriding their own challenge. Just binary. to overwrite the binary on disk. I, yeah. I'm trying to remember how the Docker setup is is done, if that's possible or not. Um, that in a uh, here we go. We're gonna bring a producer in. We'll see if, uh, if it should not be possible to destroy anything. But uh, you know, if they manage to do that, we will. Uh, yeah, it, we have to reset it or something. But it should not be possible. It should not be possible. I think the you know the binaries are dropped in where they can they have execute and read permission on the binary, but they shouldn't have write permission on on the binaries in in, in their folders. So, so I, I'm seeing perfect root is uh, kind of like creating uh, a script with generic methods like open file, um, reading file, just like functions in their exploitation script uh, to, I guess, easier than uh, work with it. Um, yep, just the usual uh, kind of wrapper stuff, exactly. The primitives. We, yeah. we talked yesterday about like the debate between a quick one off that you just like get as qu quickly as possible or like building up the primitives that you can then more easily debug and test and then chain together if you're going to do a lot of operations. And so, like, this is one where you know, I, I don't know, is it better to to do to do the wrapper? Almost, I think it probably is because this one looks like each one of your writes. Um, well, so if you've got like the ability to like one shot it, you could just send your offset and your size and do the whole thing in one in one shot. In which case, I, I mean, you don't even really need to to to, to wrap it up. The um, Samurai also does the same. So they, they are also working on an exploit Python script uh, where they also have the primitives open, close, write, read. Uh, so, so kind of like similar strategy from both teams writing a script with the wrapper primitives. Yeah, it is, it is exactly the same. And, and I love too that um, you see, I think is that just Notepad++ plus plus that uh, <laughs> yeah, might be. Uh, Chris, Chris is using. So yeah, we have Chris Eagle from Samurai who's one of the, I think is is certainly been around the CTF scene longer than absolutely anybody else at this point, like still actively playing at the highest tier of competition, which is just really, really cool. For a while, I thought I was going to be an old man CTF like him, and then it, it got too hard for me, but he kept on going, and I, I love I love seeing him wow. like continue to... I mean, it's, the, the very first CTF I played, DEFCON CTF, 22 years ago, 
I, I joined his team. He was already like a legend in the CTF community. And now, 22 years later, he's still competing and, you know, is so far holding his own. In fact, you can even see on, on his script here, he's already, he's, he does go for the, uh, the maps uh, reads, right? So he's going to get the address space uh, yeah. out of practice of maps. In fact, yeah, just looking at the two scripts kind of, uh, I think he... yeah, a perfect route I, I saw was still like having just the the test a test file. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so, Samurai already has the proc self maps uh, in there. Yeah, I, I hate taking bets because I've been wrong so many times. But you know, it's it is fun to kind of guess and and I, it looks like a little bit of lead to Samurai, but this can go uh, either way. I, I I I think these are fun because a lot oh, of well, like... perfect route yeah, is uh, is just changing it to proc self mem. Uh, there we but go. maybe they run into the issue as you mentioned about like where to seek to where to write to the the address. Oh they, no, they've got a maps. maps. They've got a maps one now. Oh, okay. Yep, there we go. Yeah, they, so they they've got proxy of maps. Okay, so honestly, these are neck and neck. Uh, yeah, they're both pulling. Oh, this is interesting. So it, uh, I I think we're seeing what's interesting is we're seeing a targeted um, exploit here from Samurai, right? And so I saw him like he's pulling up like uh, you know PLT entries, got entries. And he's going to go for like a very targeted uh, exploit. Mm, um, I think one, yeah, yeah, just like a one shot kind of thing. Whereas I think our our you know original solve was just really dumb. It just blew out, put a bunch of knob sleds and put a bunch of shell code and just like over it the whole thing. Um, and yeah, actually, like I don't know, like of of course the, theoretically it's easy to overwrite the memory, but. Uh, then you need to figure out where the exactly the entry point is, where to yep. write to the shell code, finding a good function maybe to overwrite. Um, um, then I, I don't know, like uh, what's a good target function you can overwrite where you have enough space for your shell code so you're not trashing other code where you're still executing currently. The binary, I don't know, there, there are a few caveats, but maybe overwriting GOT is just a very typical exploitation way. If they can overwrite a GOT entry, that's what they do in regular exploitation challenges as well. So well, they, they feel most comfortable with that. Yeah, as you say, even if maybe it's not the most efficient, if it's the thing they're used to, they're very fast at it, and they know how to like land one like that. And so, yeah, I could see that even though the sort of like ham, like you know, brute force hammer way of just not flood the whole thing, maybe that's less reliable. Maybe they don't trust it. They ha they know you know they sort of know their their traditional thing, and they're going to go with that. So. Yeah, I would have, for example, not thought of uh, the knob slide. I would have think or thought about, okay, which function can I overwrite and when can I call it or where does it do I return to after main or something? Yep. You know, I, I would have thought about this way, but oh, you're absolutely right. The knob slide is just the brute force easy way, but I probably wouldn't have thought about this in the moment. Yeah, and I think that's uh, some of that's because, like, you know, in a CTF, you don't see things like knob slides very often, right? Like, those tend to be more like real world, like, uh, you know, browser-based things or something like that. Oftentimes, where like you you you've got to like you you need that because you just don't have the precision you otherwise want, and you're okay with like a probabilistic exploit. Um, and I think for for just CTF players, even challenge authors, like we like it to be really clean and pretty pristine, and like knob slides feel so dirty. <laughs> like it's like uh, ooh, I don't want to you know uh, have a lame knob slide in my in my challenge. Yeah, but but yeah, it's maybe what you say what you say that what. what players are maybe not used to uh, knob slides. I mean, of, of course, these players know about knob slides. Clearly. They understand yeah, what clearly. that is, but uh, yeah, they are not used to it. So maybe that's also kind of the same reason why they go for overwriting uh, the global offset table instead of, um, you know, going the brute force way, just what they are used to from other exploitation challenges. Yeah, so just looking through them, I mean, it definitely seems like they clearly both know exactly what to do, and this is just yeah. a race to see who can do it faster, right? And I, I think that's super fun because it's it's frustrating when like one player doesn't see the vuln, and you're just like, oh no, they're you know they're way behind. Uh, this is just going to be, I mean, it's, it's of course I think it's pretty obvious what you're supposed to do in this, um, but yeah, uh, neither one got got too sidetracked. And like I said, I think because these are like pwnable exploitation people. When they sit and look at this, and they've got a a right to a file, they're like, "Oh, of course, I'm going to go for a proc self mem, right?" It's like just the first thing that they would think of. Um, I yeah, think, it was also my first thought. Exactly, and I think other people might have been more like looking for. And I still, I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a really clever like, you know, write this file, edit this file as the user, log in as the user normally, change the password, you know, set some other, like, add like an X auth file, and now you can like, you know, uh, like remote X forward. I don't know, something something weird like that, right? Like, I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if there's something. Um, that would that would work like that. 
Yeah, but no time for that in a in a head-to-head -head competition like this one, which is pretty stressful. So you go for what you're what you're used to, what you know. Yeah, well, and uh, and like yeah. you know, it's one of those like high risk, high reward, right? Like if you try something crazy, it might just work and you're done. But then yeah. there's also a decent chance it fails, and they both know like, okay, this clearly was designed to be owned this way, and I just got to figure out exactly the right mechanism for it. Uh, we did. It must. A, God. Yeah. No, say say. Did you see something? Well, I was just going to reply to a comment in chat. That we just, somebody mentioned oh. that uh, it's nice to see that both screens are working today. Yes, we did. We had replaced every component of one of our capture setups, uh, all, except for the, the HDMI, HDMI cable. cable. And it was the HDMI cable. As soon as we replaced that, everything else worked. We, we switched back, you know, adapters and capture cards, and everything else was fine. So just a bad, you know, brand new HDMI cable, just bad. So... By the way, Jordan, you cannot see me, but I saw you dressing up and proudly wearing something very nice yesterday to go for a real esports caster. Today, you don't see me on stream, but I'm I, I put on a small, um, you know, a small like jacket, uh, and now I see you sitting there with a hoodie, which is. Um, <laughs> I know. What I happens? know. I I set this high bar in this standard for uh, for CTF. I didn't bring that many suits. So I was oh people are clapping because they think that it was solved here, but that was they're playing in the room by the way our last match because they want the audience in here to be able to see what's going on, but we don't want the competitors. Wait oh no it was it was done. No because the video they're clapping because the video. Sorry about that yeah so I think uh, that's the downside to playing the video uh, in the background uh, from the last match. Both oh. teams are still going. Oh, uh, Both teams are still, I know I freaked out I'm like wait no did they actually do it but. Both teams are still going. I was worried there for a second. So yeah, so I uh, I just didn't bring enough suits, <laughs> um, and I didn't want to wear the same the same suit three days in a row. So today I'm I'm in hacker garb. I have my binge t-shirt and my hoodie. Uh, but we'll see. I do want to I do want that esports vibe going. So hopefully we'll get we'll get video figured out later too. We want to be able to have uh, have our remote casters come in as well and, and, and be overlaid. But all right, so let's. Uh, I Go ahead. Yeah, they, they they went back also again into uh, looking at some assembly code there. I I'm I'm wondering what kind of problem they they are facing right now that that's confusing for them. Yeah, yeah. See, Perfect Root is in the debugger and is in Ida, and they're kind of flipping back and forth. Whereas it looks like uh, Samurai was in a VM. They like were bringing a VM up to to run and test probably. I think that's another interesting difference between uh, players' approaches, right? Where some of them will go straight to a debugger, and then some of them will build the whole exploit just modeled from pure static analysis and then throw it and it either works or like they fix one thing or, you know, there's very few changes they need to make. Um, I'm one of those, I feel like uh, I'm a debugger style exploiter, which like I'm sloppy. <laughs> like I need to figure it out on the fly and kind of see see it as it goes. No, I, I need the visual um, feedback as well, yeah. Yeah, I, but, I can relate to that. But then actually, um, uh, Rusty, who built the last challenge that, that we saw, uh, is one of those, he will write the entire exploit and just throw it, never touching a debugger once, and it just works the first time. Uh, and it's just like, it's not fair. You're not, you're not allowed to model the computer in your head that closely. You should have more bugs. So let's see, what do we, what do we look at? We're looking at uh, Samurai, where... Yeah, okay, they, so we're they, S-tracing, it looks maps. like. Um fail to open file though that that's an interesting response but they did read something no no on no, uh yeah so proxelf maps i okay. think they have pr problems with reading from proxelf maps so this is it a... maybe yeah so they are they should have control over the mode yeah if you specify the wrong mode in the menu i believe um, ah, okay. Right. So, so in fact, this is actually one of the things in our testing that we ran across. This, this in in like older um, platforms, the the mode settings were like sloppier and it didn't really matter as much. You could like, um, so like with mode, you mean like uh, for, for the f file open? It, exactly. Uh, yeah. When you pass in like you know, is the opening for reading or writing or appending or whatever you know, kind of changes you're making to it, um, and uh, in the other different flags that you can pass in, and so I think. So I haven't seen him looking for, um, so we're getting L trace. Okay, so L trace will show us that call to open. Um, and yeah, we'll see if, if uh, he catches that. And I'm actually looking back at perfect route. 
Yeah. Okay, so still looks like plumbing on, on the, the perfect root side. Just kind of... They're parsing out the maps. So they do... Okay, so they've gotten a map. So I would say perfect root is a little bit ahead. They're reading the maps. Oh, so they've yeah, got it working. Yeah, mm -hmm. Right, so they were able to dump that back out. Whereas it looks like Samurai is getting... And it's so frustrating, right? When it's like a little, little bug. And yeah, you're just like, what's going on? And Samurai tried to read the proxy of maps, but uh, had a an error again and and then the, the the screen was just blank and no mouse movement for like 10 seconds i think they were staring at the screen trying to figure out what is wrong why can i not read uh prox self mem at least uh, maps i think that at least that's my interpretation of what what happened there yeah so i'm wondering how so i mean they've got i'm just trying to see where oh yeah there we go there we go okay yeah perfect rule is getting very close now it looks like um they might be already the code is a bit small for me. Do you see um, how far the code is, like what they are trying to do? So they are specifically trying to get out libc and stack addresses into separate variables, right? So they're parsing yeah. out the, the maps, and then they're going to get the base address for each of those those regions. And they're trying to make sure. So they're, they're already just p parsing maps, essentially. So once they've yeah. got their map, um, it should be pretty quick at that point. Yeah, this is, this is definitely not one I think we're going to need sudden death for. They, they're both... Well on the way. Okay, yeah, so they they know the goal. They yeah. I mean, they, they, it's just technical implementation struggles at this point. Yeah, and it is going to be interesting. So I look like I'm. I am curious. Are they both going to go for God override? Are they both going to go for like a similar kind of um, you know gadget or or mm. once, once they have it? Um, I, I kind of get the sense. Actually, you know, it's interesting. I saw the 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 mention of a stack. So it looks like we might actually see like a um, like a uh, some sort of stack uh, exploit, uh, or maybe uh, Perfect Roots just pulling that out just just to make sure. Yeah, maybe instead of uh, overriding GOT, they go just like for the return address and then do a one gadget or something. Yeah, uh, jump yeah, and that's what that's Let's one of the things it. I really like about a challenge like this, right? Where it's like there's an infinite number of ways to solve it. It doesn't like that you could you could do so many different things, uh, and then you kind of want to see like, okay, so we're running the debugger, so. So yeah, I, I really like how we've seen a lot of teams do this, right? Like, and the the fact that like Pwn Tools really lets you both not only switch between your local uh, version that you're running and then throw it, you know, remotely, yeah, but also so powerful. break in right in the debugger interactively, right? So like you've got your script and you're like, oh, okay, right here actually I want to stop and go ahead and break in, like, I, the, you know, throwing remote versus local has been around for for a long time, but the idea of like actually specific like i used to have to put like sleeps in my shell code and then attach a debugger separately like just yeah or just writing GDB so much... script yeah uh, right exactly that particular challenge exactly yeah. and this is just so much cleaner to just be able to be like oh no, and right here i want to inspect the memory especially like a challenge like this where you're just overwriting memory in the process space right and you want to be able to like just pause break in and be like did my right work yeah. did, did i hit the right I place and in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, fight like this, you know, especially when there's head-to-head -head like this, every little speed up you have in your process, the iteration process is just so much faster. You're just saving seconds every time you have something small to check. And, and that adds up in, in a challenge that's just maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, and, and even I saw um, uh, uh, Chris Eagle from uh, Samurai. Uh, he already had his, like, throwing framework, like, in his, in his copy paste buffer, so like he literally had it set to go, and he even had like a little comment. Uh, what, um, I missed it. I missed calling it out uh, on on stream. But if if he scrolls to the top of his file again at all, he put like a, a little comment that said, "My teammates abandoned me, and they've made me do live CTF. Help me, mommy." <laughs> oh, no. um, right at the top of it. Bullied into it. So I oh well, I think he kind of wanted to do it too. He so he okay. actually came up earlier and was saying that he uh oh, where are we pulling out? Okay, so yeah, he came up earlier and said. He was really excited about some of the ones yesterday and then really concerned about others. He's like, oh, I really wanted to do the very first one, but I did not want to do, you know. So it's interesting that people are kind of watching along in the audience, like thinking, like, what are we going to get? What are we going to have to solve? And uh, It's uh, so incredibly stressful. And it's it's a situation that none of these players are used to, yeah. uh, to looking over their shoulder. And, you know, just for, I have the my utmost uh, respect for doing this. I appreciate it so much that they uh, agreed to doing this. 
Um, oh, anybody that even tries, yeah. right? Anybody that yeah. even comes up here, sits down, and you know, you can see a little bit on the camera here, but just like this room has like the best, some of the best CTF players in the world, and you're gonna go sit in the middle of them and go one on one against somebody else, like with people standing around you, looking over your shoulder, people watching your screens, like you, yeah, that it's a totally different experience. There are really, really good hackers who would not do well in this. Like, it's hard. Yeah, and, and we know what kind of dumb problems we always run into. Yes. Uh, it, it could be something really dumb that you need to Google. We, we had some interesting uh, Google searches yesterday that were so, just some basic searches. But yeah, it's it, like, um, but that's what you do. And and you c might feel embarrassed doing it here on, on stream. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's normal. And what, what I love, though, and this is actually one of the things I love about your videos, too, right? When you show your like discovery process, when you show mistakes that you've made or things that you've tried. Um, and that's the best part about this, because we get to see, oh, wow, these people are amazing. They are epic. Both of these players are far better at me at exploitation. And, and yet, yeah. you know, I can, I can still see and learn, and I can say, oh, okay, they made that mistake too. I feel like it's both encouraging, but also you also see, like, oh, wow, they're also really fast. Also, they're really good with yeah. their tools, and that's just because they practiced and they've worked at it, and it's, it's yeah, achievable. Th thanks. I mean, that, that's the most amazing thing of live CTF and why I also, of course, like, my appreciation also goes out, uh, especially to you, who I think has been carrying this a lot, but... Thanks for pulling this off because being able to watch it, these uh, professionals solving these challenges, seeing where they struggle and the strategies they do, it's it's entertaining, of course, but it's also so educational. And, uh, you know, my name comes from because of these very yeah. early live CTFs that happened back in the day. So, you know, th this, this is a special place in my heart as well um, to, to be able to see this uh, here. Yeah, well, we're really, really happy to have you. And I will, I will be clear that, like, I, I kind of, like, bugged a couple people into doing it but there have been some serious heroes that like i've only you know, worked on like one of these challenges part of it and, like a whole bunch of people on the team from uh glenn and carl and uh josh that have worked really 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 hard and done lots of challenges and lots of stuff leading up to it so this has been yeah this has been a blast i i am seeing so looking over it at perfect root yeah like it's, they are pretty far. They, yeah. they have libc base leak, and they have a bin sh offsets and everything. And they've actually they, they are building your op chain. So we you know we saw earlier they're going after yeah. the stack, and it sure enough it looks like that's that's their plan. So let's yeah let's. At, at this point, it seems like they're just debugging their shell code or their op chain. Um, I guess everything else seems to work. Yeah, that they they seem like they could be real close. And I see samurai over in. Over in in uh, Ida still, so that's generally not a good. Oh, it depends. I mean, it could be. I have to wait till they pull up the script again. But I mean, perfect route is also opening Ida here all the time. That's true. Yeah, so you, you flip back and forth. You're right. Yeah. That's true. I, I I do wonder why though. I I also don't know the effects of overwriting ProcMem. Is that immediately visible? Does like how many instructions does the CPU execute before like caches are? Yep. I, I, yeah. I, I have Flushing. Actually, yeah, I would be very worried about weird side effects that happen because that is like not typical like program behavior. You're, you're exactly here. right. Yeah, and so um, that is one of the things that we debated on this exact thing was uh, dealing with flushing. And um, you know, one way to do that is to to I think if if, if we if we keep an eye out and the next time they they, they bring it up, um, okay, I'm gonna look at Samurai real quick. So Samurai's got binsh string, a system address. Oh, so. The, the, yeah, pretty far then as well. Yeah. So I think they're maybe a little bit behind, but like honestly, very similar. Well, but we'll see what their overwrite target is too, right? That I think is gonna be the question. I think whoever gets an overwrite target, th to your point, yes, cache flushing is a real issue that they're gonna have to, that they may have to contend with depending on the solution. So, uh, I, I think though the the way that the the script works is as soon as it, um, it as soon as it closes the file handle and then the like there's a there's a return i forget exactly what it is but th th we'll flush the cache but um mm. th that is something they are gonna have to worry about but, but that's i guess also something if you have a huge knob slide you don't care because at one point the cache yeah will be that flushed is... and then suddenly your knob slide is there yep and then... yep yeah that was one of the advantages of that kind of approach which i i mean i when i first uh heard this challenge described my assumption was that we would solve it exactly like we're seeing on screen. So I do think it's interesting that, yeah, I, I didn't think not slide either uh, first. So testing and uh, testing in, in GDB. Yeah, this seems like they uh, perfect really still struggling. I think with parsing the maps, I, I saw them fiddling around with um, the, the trying to leak the stack value. Oh, no, they had the address um, wrong, maybe. Yeah, I, it seems like 
yeah, so it's maybe some, maybe, you know, the, the, the maps might change because of ASLR, like, order might change, so maybe that breaks their, I, yeah. I don't know exactly. Yeah, how honestly, well, it looked like they were a little further ahead than Samurai because of, like, how many, uh, you know, primitives and, and offsets and everything they, they kind of look like they had. I'm not so sure about the stack uh, based attack, right? Like, that might be mm. a little trickier. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see. It, this actually could be a chance for, uh, for Samurai to catch up. So let me look over here at Samurai. It, it is quite tough. I mean, you know the stack base, but uh, f figuring out where exactly your return pointer is to override uh, for, I mean, you, you can kind of spam it with just a huge pop chain, kind of like a rock. Yep, uh, yep, yep. A rock, return rock chain or whatever. Or yep. Just pop, pop, slide. Red, sli red slide. Yep. Or oh, red slide, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it, I think it's very difficult um, on the stack just because of how much, yeah, to, to find the right place. Uh, so um, that could be quite a struggle. I also don't know the kind of uh, mitigations turned on, you know, the, the, the stack offset kind of stuff moving things around yeah i missed the check stack uh, results uh and i don't remember uh some some of the challenges that we we've specifically tell the teams the exact compile flag that we use because again mm -hmm. for a speed live ctf kind of event you want them to go as fast as possible and you're not trying to to make them waste time figuring that stuff out um but i don't i don't think we did that in this case and it may have been because our particular exploit you know didn't really matter so we didn't think about that um and so it, it is interesting. It might be a little bit harder for teams uh, if they're doing this more targeted attack with without you know knowing which of those things they can rely on. So we will see. In fact, actually, I wonder if I mean, might I think so? We started a little bit late. Normally, we would be moving, looking at like a sudden death here soon. We've got a few extra minutes, but um, they're so close, and I don't even. Yeah, wanna... looking at samurai, I also see a stack variable, lip C base and stack. So maybe uh, samurai yeah. is thinking about also going for overriding something on the stack. To be honest. Okay, so now we've got a file handle. Oh, okay. There we go. So we've got the base for lip C, and uh, that may have been. Yeah, they're, they're converging, you're right, I think, on a very similar solution so far. I also saw on, uh, uh, was it Samurai, I'm not sure, uh, looking at free hook, so um, not FH free hook, um, so they're thinking about overriding, um, you know, going going that route, uh, getting, um, redirecting the code execution. Um, not going over the stack, I think, I think uh, some Samurai changed their strategy using trying to use free hook but i'm not sure if it's called even uh I, uh oh is that with the sorry yes i think i said file handle but you're right for the fh was if that's free hook yeah i saw i saw them just before um they oh, were yeah, back in, in in ida yep. at, at free hook interesting so or is that called always at the end like uh, uh, when when the program exits from or uh, is that only happening when free is really cold. only if there was only if there was something allocated i would think unless the unless like libc in it does some allocations uh in which case maybe yeah i don't know this is oh man just look at all those like pointers at the top there's I all wonder sorts if of they tried something else first and they couldn't do it because maybe of caching it didn't trigger or something and then they started going for the for for something else i, I, I mean... wonder what, what the reason was Oh, actually, okay, so I'm, I'm actually back over here on Perfect Root, and we're seeing a number of interesting gadgets. So we've got, like, a Pop RDI gadget. We've got a Binus H, yep. Rob Chain. Yeah, this is this is starting to look, uh, um, man, yeah, this is this is just a, this is kind of a slog here now. They're just trying to figure out, like, who's going to get something working first. Um, Open file proc self mem they are writing now. So I think they are so um, confident now that the parsing of the maps and the offsets yes. and everything is now fitting. And they, they, I think they feel like they can go for the actual memory right now. It's, it's funny because, I mean, they both, within maybe 30 seconds of either, both changed their payloads to write to the, me the, the memory, right? So they were both uh, pulling everything out, and now they both just switched to writing. So we'll find out who has, like, the least bugs... So looking at perfect route. Yeah, still. Yeah. Constantly some Python exceptions uh, still like. And, and, there's, and now 
Perfect Rune has the problem. Their script parsing maps just runs for like five seconds before they see if they if their next stage has an error, and that just costs time. Every, yeah. Every time ten seconds, it's it's just. Yeah, that's a the, yeah, that's a good point. point it's, uh, yeah, and that's what obviously those... could debug this more with GDB local. Uh oh, but uh -oh okay, might... hold on. They're copying oh. out the IP address. They're trying to. They're getting ready to throw the remote. They just okay. okay so okay. let's look. Let's keep an eye on Perfect Route here. Yeah, let's keep an eye on Perfect Route. I mean, if usually you're ready to throw remotely, you think you think you're about done. And again, still looking in IDA. Yeah, sometimes I at the, curious I what they're what, looking for. What, yeah, what problem are they trying to verify or check or? Yeah, it's it's I I think yeah. I mean, if you switch to remote, you think you're close, right? Like there's no reason to like slow yourself down with a remote and unless I mean, I, except maybe I, I think it might sense if you, if you if you did your parsing uh, locally, you want to check oh does your maps parsing work remotely as well? Yeah. Uh, maybe just a sanity check if like they're on the right path for it, that that well, could be. But, but I mean, they could have done it Previously, they are already at the next stage, uh, so I, I, good question. I would have also thought that they are feeling pretty confident now because they they were working on on their rock yeah. Game. But but looking at it, I'm not I'm not so sure. It it is so funny to me though too how just even watching some of the screen, especially when you're kind of going back and forth, it's really hard to get a sense for like how far along they are. Like you think you understand, and then all of a sudden like they're done. You're like, wait a minute, or you think that they're. We, you know. we saw it yesterday. We were looking at one stream because we had the feeling they were so far ahead, and they might be able yep. to pull it off. Suddenly, the winner message pops up, and we realize, yeah. wait, the other yep. team just won. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's exactly. They go so quick, quickly. All right. So uh, we did have a glance there briefly of okay. So Samurai's uh, script. Invalid choices, yeah. So they're still just kind of working with the the plumbing of making sure that all of their, um, and and that is the that's the stuff where nerds will get you, right? Like the the little like your parsing of the text, your sending of the data. Is it a stir? Is it an int? Did I hex encode it? Did I not? Like that's the stuff that like oh, just like especially when you're under fire, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I the the scripts can get quite ugly parsing leak leaking values, yeah. parsing the response text and stuff. I mean, Pwn Tools makes it very nice for the general menu work. Yeah, uh, which which almost challenges. all of these have been right. Like all yeah. of the, all ICT stuff is is like the very straightforward. Like here's some menus, do your thing. Yeah, but then you have something like maps, and then uh, you you write your custom ugly Python string splitting whatever, and then I don't know uh, a small thing changes, and it throws everything thing off. So we are coming up on a time where we could consider giving a hint or something, but I don't know if we want to. I mean, I think they... Uh-oh, I think I lost audio. Oh, no, sorry, I'm just listening for a second. Oh, I was, okay. Yeah, I was like, so, so Carl and I were, were discussing uh, off, uh, off uh, mic whether, uh, whether we want to give a hint, and if we do give a hint, um, I think the 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 biggest thing that's that's yeah that's basically tripping up both of these uh, players is that they just assume by default, of course, that NX is on. That's why you're seeing the stack overwrite, right? So they didn't they didn't even consider oh. just blowing away some code uh, and writing some shell code directly uh, because but, mm, yeah. I it, I mean, uh, proc self mem is not subject to. Uh, write protection right like you can overwrite your uh, so so you program memory but they might not realize this because they are so used to well it's it's, modify it's not it's not that even it's if even if you um if you modify it like where are you writing and is what you're is the place that you're writing into like if you knob slide through something that's not executable you, you see what i'm saying like if you do a big slide oh, and part of right, it was marked right, nx right, right. it would stop mm -hmm. it and so you wouldn't be able to use that reliably and it'd be harder to kind of target your stuff so maybe I mean, you still need maps then to uh, limit your. That's true. That's true. Write. That's true. Maps. Yeah. Maps is actually going to give you all your all your segmentation. So it would give you that. Um, yeah. I mean, but again, like this this approach should be possible. Uh, so we. I sorry for for missing. We had a couple chat messages. Oh yeah. So so Roxanne is mentioning, 
Uh, imagine if this was ARM with an instruction cache. Yeah, uh, caching uh, and it, like that where you have split caches can be especially, especially annoying. Um, uh, honestly, if we had done that for LiveCTF, we probably would have built in some cache flush like menu option, like literally just something that's like flush um, that, that would have done it for them. Uh, oh, and, and also the comment uh, they made earlier was that even printf or scanf can do allocations for big inputs. And so free free is a pretty good target to go after. So that's a, that's a mm -hmm. great point. Even if the, the program like ostensibly didn't do it, even you know just having a bunch of, of printfs or other things in there might scanfs might have might have triggered it. Oh, they were trying to check if the shell works perfect root. They were just typing ls and it didn't work. Uh, oh, so it is. They they are they are checking if their source script works now. And it's got to go through. It's go through. Paused. Difficult to say. Oh, uh, so they were what? they were executing a bunch of nulls. So the return, mm. whatever. So yeah, I just saw a bunch of like you know the add whatever uh, disassembly, which means that you've you've landed on a run of null bytes. Uh, that your debugger is um, triggering exception on. So they're real close. Like they're they're trying to align things. Looking back over at Samurai Two. I mean, hitting the correct offset on the stack is pretty difficult without uh, a red slide. Because, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, of the environment local. You have all these problems that you have with regular, uh, like old school buffer overflows. Yeah, with just the stack, just uh, username um, being different, right? Can you know a, a longer, shorter username can throw it off. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff will. Uh, looks like a typo there in the script. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so so uh, yeah, I I don't know. I do think perfect root feels a little closer to me, but. Um, yeah, they did so at the start for me as well, and then suddenly somewhere I was there parsing maps as well. So yeah, I, I know. I mean, it, it feels that way. I agree, but uh, I I got deceived too many times already. It's exactly. It's only few matches. That oh, I know. <laughs> I don't even want to even say. I, it's it's fun to guess. Okay, so where are we breaking? Are we still in? Oh man! The other thing that's interesting too is that uh, we talked about next year. We want to have like a pause button, right? So we want to go to like on just on our side, freeze the frame when they're looking at like a debugger thing, and and because it's so hard to keep up with the things that they're looking at because they're going as fast as possible and they know their tools, they know their layout. I was just talking to Kale uh, because uh, when you went, go on break between the challenges, I on my stream had the time to go back, do the freeze, do the analysis. And while I was doing the commentary with Kale, like I had no clue what was happening. It went all just too fast. It really being is. Being able then to use the time in between, slowly looking at the solutions, the last moments and so forth, like that analysis makes sense. So, so my suggestion actually would be not to pause during I mean, they're, they're oh yeah, yeah, more, more of like yeah. a more of like a recap, yeah. Yeah, like to have analysts like coming in uh, in between the matches and and looking at more precisely at, at those interesting moments. So uh, so that's or, actually it's inter yeah. interesting note. One of the th when we tried this, so I did this I guess five years ago. We we, we did a version Love Live CTF kind of at uh, DefCon Finals when it was uh, legit BS running it, and uh, we I messed up the audio, which is what kind of ruined 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 the whole the whole video, unfortunately. But we had four players, much more like pony racing, where we had four of them. And we knew that, like, you know, two people on camera trying to watch four people is impossible. And so what we actually did was we had a dedicated an analyst watching every screen. And then they, we had, like, an IRC chat that the, the commentators uh, were reading. And so someone would say, hey, team so-and-so is doing such and such, or they missed this, or they're making progress on this, or oh, they're really close. And so we could see their summary relay it to the to the stream but like it takes so many people yeah. and even then mm -hmm. it's still so hard to like to catch up because like yeah not being able to pause and you know take a second when they when they flip to something so you can kind of follow it's it's still it's still tough yeah. but but that's what what i'm doing here uh, the, the cool thing about the youtube chat is that and i encourage everybody on uh, watching doing this as well you can pause the youtube stream and don't worry about missing something because then you can uh, continue watching 
set it on 1.5 speed and in no time you caught up again with the stream so so if, if there's something happening interesting on stream and you want to look more closely at the code that they are writing or at the disassembly uh don't hesitate to pause and then set the speed to 1.5 and catch up with the live stream again. that's a that's a really good suggestion yeah i i really like that and or even you can even watch a normal speed and then when we break between matches just just skip forward right. and go live then too yeah those are both um both both perfect all right, so we are definitely coming up on, on longer than we were hoping to run, uh, but... They, they have been struggling very long on... on they, they all, they both know the solution. That's really just technical debugging issues, yeah. programming well, issues. So, so one option is, I, th I think we definitely need to give them a hint. Um, mm. So I'm going to let the production crew figure out a hint uh, for, for us uh, and propose it. Um, so let the, the, the two of them talk it over. Because um, I, th I think they need a hint. My guess yeah. is it will be something around. So part of the problem, but, though, is it? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, they they know the solution, so it's probably the hint more in what makes it more reliable. Maybe hinting at uh, the the knob slide or something. That that's that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah, to just control than letting them know that. By the way, like you don't have to go after the stack, right? Like that's because mm. uh, especially because they're both doing the same thing, right? Do we both see them trying to do something with with a stack uh, based exploit? Um, and that's definitely, I think, harder mode. Uh, if one of them had gotten lucky or not, not targeted that way, we uh, might have seen a faster solution. But yeah, but but it's still interesting that uh, both are struggling at this point w with the same strategy, which tells me that that strategy is just kind of like unreliable or has very unpredictable, weird behaviors, which throws off both of them. It's not that one yes. of them is like bad at coding or something. Absolutely, and the other person just pulls it off. There, there's some just they, they both took to the more difficult route uh yeah through through the binary and that's and that's the thing is the the only downside so sometimes when there's a very constrained exploit there's only one possible way through it that can land it and that actually even though it's maybe harder um sometimes it's easier because it you know every step along the way you know exactly what you're doing the, the more yeah. options you have i feel like uh yeah it, it's like pie. either either you Imagine a plane and you know exactly the rings you need to fly through and yeah. the rings are small, but you know, if you miss them, you crash, but I mean, you know the path or versus just an open field and you need to find the, the destination, but uh, yeah. you don't see the direction really. Yeah, that can be uh, more confusing because yeah. you just feel like, well, I could go anywhere. Who knows where it could possibly be? Uh, and this one's kind of in between because at least finding the vulnerability is very, very easy. There's really, you know, it's built in. It's just a vulnerable yeah. service, but it, the question then is, yeah, but which path do you take to exploit it? Because there are, you know, several different ways you could do it. But I find this also a great example of like real world uh, security work. Oftentimes, it's easy to find. Sometimes uh, it's often hard to find bugs. But sometimes it's easy to find bugs. But then really exploiting it might be the majority of the time. And here, I mean, time wise, we have maybe one minute yeah. finding the bug, and yeah. I don't know how how far we are in. We are forty five minutes or so into trying to write the exploit for it. Um, it's, yeah. it's crazy what kind of uh, time is necessary maybe to develop something like this. So it looks like we have a hint proposed. I'm gonna take it from the production team here. Let me. I want. I want to see the hints uh, so I can. I can read it to to chat. So the hint we're gonna give them is Proc Self Mem does not care about segment permissions. So we're we're telling them you can overwrite directly into something that would normally not be writable. Right. Yeah. So that that, that that could be a good hint. I, I really wonder if that's like their mental model that could be. It, 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 you know, it's interesting. Some of them, you know, it, it's entirely possible they realize that and they just thought this would be an easier, more reliable. And they, once Absolutely. you, once you go down that, that path, you kind of feel like you're stuck into it. Yeah. Okay. Go, give them that, give them the hint. We got a hint coming. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to send the hint over. Give it to, uh, and we'll, we'll give them that, that hint. Um, we'll see if that helps them. See if that helps them. Yeah. So it's so. So I'm I'm seeing here. Perfect Root was just um, still debugging uh, their code. Uh, um, I I think they were, if I saw it correctly, they were breaking on system and then checking the first parameter, which was indeed uh, bin as age. So. Um, Oh. Stuff seems to work, but also not. I, I have a hard time to figure out what, what why it's not actually yeah. landing. Yeah, that's a good yeah. question. So, so we'll um, 
So I think what we're seeing, it looks like um, Samurai is kind of considering the new input and trying to figure out should they rework. And that's, that was the other question I debated about this hint because this hint sort of says maybe you could come up with a whole new style of exploit, but is it better to keep trying to finish this one or is it better to like rewrite to a different approach? Yeah, I wonder if that hint influences their decision. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Right? Uh -oh. oh. This, this, are they done? This might be done. Oh, we're looking at perfect route. They're very close. Let's see. Yeah, I, I cannot see what's going wrong because from the debugger, it kind of looked oh pretty good. Like they they print uh, RDI and it's been as age. Um, hmm. I mean they they were. Maybe lo locally, maybe it might be working, but not remotely. I, I wonder what's. Well, I think that's what we saw earlier. Is we saw them switch into a VM, um, and they're running as root. So I think they intentionally tried. I mean, to... they they use hard coded offsets from libc, which maybe they have the wrong libc. You know. We we uh... did get them libc. So every okay, single okay. Uh, okay. binary today, I believe, we gave them a libc because we wanted them to have like even. The only downside is in some of the binaries, we really don't think they need it. It's almost a distraction. We don't want them to like assume that it's required. Um, but we did give them a libc just for all of these, if for nothing else, so that they could run right. it, you know, even in their, their local environment. So let's see if this does it. I This just doesn't feel like one that we're going to need sudden death on, but we are coming up on the time where I think we're officially at sudden death time because we started about 10 minutes late. Um, but I so uh, perfect root did have a shell error, like a syntax error, like typical, you know, bin sh, you pass in something bad. Um, yeah, but, but they're but, still but adjusting their their actual ROP yeah. chain, which doesn't. Wait, wait it, it seems like locally it works, but maybe some offsets are just uh, not right uh, for the for the remote. But yeah, hard decision to call it off now or not. Uh, I don't want to. I know. I'm glad I don't have to decide this now. Well, we'll. Um, I. I. I think we got to do it. The the good news is I think we, we expect that um, the next two challenges are both. Uh oh, somebody's pointing at something. Let me double check here. Uh oh. Uh, we might be close to perfect route. They're trying to copy off the. Yeah, they're they're I mean, running remotely. They're running remotely. Okay, okay, okay. Where'd it go? Invalid choice. What happened? <laughs> Is this just... Oh, that's the worst feeling, though, if you've got a thing that, that runs locally and doesn't remote. Is, were they just adjusting the, the stack a little bit? Trying to... Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if... They didn't... They changed it, and then they changed it back, and so I'm wondering if they're actually going to... Are they going to rerun this with different offsets and just brute force it? I mean, I'm I'm fine with that if that's. I think that's what uh, offset. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah, yeah, offset, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is frustrating when it's. Uh, oh no, I'm think I am. I've got a pop up. On a, do I click that or not? <laughs> Don't click on pop ups. <laughs> The battery life. Okay. All right. Yeah. So unfortunately, how much battery life do I have on this machine? Six percent. So I'm about to lose my. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. There it is. There we got a winner. Congratulations. Oh. Oh my stressful. god. Stressful. A... So stressful. Oh my god. That was very very close. Oh. Uh, just before canceling it. But congratulations. Y yeah. All right. So that was that was fantastic. We have a very short timetable. We got to turn this one around. So uh, we're going to go ahead and can you reset it? Let's put it back to the break. Uh, we'll, we'll, so we'll be back shortly as soon as we get the next teams up and try to get back a little bit on schedule with, with a quicker one. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you in uh, just a few minutes. Yeah. Bye-bye.
Hello, welcome back to the third match of the day uh, from Live CTF. Uh, I'm back here in the commentary and I still have Live Overflow with me. Uh, oh. We are going to start the match uh, in just a second if I get an okay from uh, production. Uh, there seems to be a uh, slight something going on, uh, but... Uh, oh no, is that HDMI cable? Oh, no, no, no. I think it's fine because I have them both here on the monitor. So it's just like uh, 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 we, yes, it was just uh, we needed to like, refresh the input in, in uh, our production software. So we are ready to go. So let us all count down the third match of five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck to go. the contestants. Yeah, so this What's challenge, the challenge called? yes, the challenge is called Envolns, and this is kind of like a reference to a sequence of challenges that have been going on, going on for the year called End Cuts. Uh, but uh, it's a bit of a meme uh, challenge where uh, we have just given them a menu where uh, they can just choose which type of vulnerability they want to use. So we've said like in this menu, like we have a stack buffer overflow, we have a format string vulnerability, we have a, you know, um, local file. We even have like, you know, some, some jokes in there. There's like uh, missing DMARC records is in the menu and, and stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah. But when you say meme challenge, you don't mean stego challenge. No, uh, I mean, absolutely not. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a legit challenge and it has like a, a legit solution. Um, so we can see here on the uh, water paddler side, yes, they are running the binary. Uh, you can see this menu here. You have the stack buff, the uh, command injection, you have malloc free use, uh, you have a SQL injection, you have XSS, uh, and I so on. I would definitely check out XSS first when I. Yeah, I mean. This challenge. That uh, makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so there you can see them here doing the, the check sec, uh, looking at what uh, kind of uh, protections there are here. Uh, and uh, you see we have no rel row, uh, there's no cannery, no pi, so like a lot of mitigations turned off. Uh, so you'll see. That's yeah. important. Yeah, something like this could throw players off. It's important that they check this at the beginning. Definitely. Definitely. I must say, I like the font that the uh, water paddle player is uh, using and like the color theme as well. Pretty, pretty nice. Is that, is that actually, it, it looks like kind of like compressed horizontally. No, no, no. It's a bit of a squished, uh, a bit of a squished font. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, you can see that they're already writing their... Um, yeah, uh, they have a wrapper ready already. Right. Yes. So uh, we are switching to Reykjavik and we can see that they're also, uh, you know, writing their... Um, starting writing their exploit script here and they started running the command. Uh, they are looking at the stack buffer overflow uh, and trying to get that working. Uh, however, uh, they will not get that to work because there's like a slight troll in there where the program will call exit after it uh, has performed the buffer overflow. Uh, uh, so, evil. yes. Oh, did they just see it now? And yes. They just had the cursor on exit. <laughs> hopefully, they, hopefully they immediately thrown away this idea now yes and don't get caught up on that so so some of the entries in the menu are just uh, like just will just print a joke message some of the entries are kind of like a uh, you know it looks like a vulnerability but it's not actually a vulnerability and there is some of the entries where you can actually do something uh, useful and um, yeah and uh, how difficult is the expo? Is it a buffer overflow? Is it a heap in the end? Like which one of these menu items is the one that they sh that yeah. they are looking for? So uh, oh I uh, yeah so uh, when we were creating this challenge uh, late last night I can I can disclose that much uh, we had the different ideas for for the solutions uh, my reference solution involves uh, so there's a command injection vulnerability but your command injection is limited to only a very few characters I think you have like seven character and we unset the path so you can't really do the command injection uh, like by itself but that length is controlled by a global variable and then we also have another vulnerability which is an, ar an array out of bounds so my reference solution was to do like an array out of bounds write and to modify that to make the command injection longer and then do the command injection right okay 
And and you you think that there are multiple solutions when you because you were saying yes. like the way you came up with uh, yes definitely for example yeah. they have an basically uh, unrestricted format string uh, vulnerability in this as well so if one mm -hmm. if they want to go that route they can definitely do that um, I don't remember exactly what other things we had but uh, you can you can uh, read any file on the system uh, so you can do that to like leak do, proc self yeah. maps. I just saw a recap pick. Uh, I think going for the format string, I saw a percentage P there uh, oh. in their script code. If yeah. you switch over uh, to their, uh, yeah. to their screen. Yeah. Um, so they found that one uh, already. Yes. So this is the. So that could go like, very quickly. If they are good with format strings uh, and maybe even have automated tools to make format string help them with it, it could go very quickly. Or are there some restrictions on the format string, like the length of the buffer? Uh, no, I think the format string one is basically unrestricted. Uh, we. Uh, so yeah, the, what they, you. They're yeah. The copying in system right. uh, offset already. So this could go very quickly. Yes. So, so what you could do with the format string then is since we have railroad disabled, you could go for uh, overwriting uh, uh, the got entry of some function uh, with the system and then calling one, like making a call to that function through one of the other things. So that's definitely a viable approach. Even though they found the format string, now Recapic also found uh, what seems to be the command injection. Mm. Um, I, I think I think this challenge could be a bit evil in the sense that you could easily get sidetracked because all of them sound like very juicy <laughs> vulnerabilities. So which one seems to be the most reliable, the one that you can implement the fastest? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it could be quite tricky. Definitely. Maybe we should have like classified this as like uh, triaging as the category or something because uh, you know, you really need to kind of make a judgment call on, on these vulnerabilities. Like, is this uh, exploitable or not? But, but Jenny, I think it's a good choice. Uh, format string is awesome to leak addresses and offsets, um, but writing a format string exploit, you know, writing to it is can be a bit finicky. Yes, definitely. Uh, so so, so I, I think uh, often CTF players like format strings for leaking stuff, but then use a different vulnerability to use the leak. So maybe that's why they were back in Ida looking for maybe now something to use the, the leak they have because they could have now continued on the format string but instead they got sidetracked now with the command injection probably because they were maybe looking for yeah something else now um, definitely I, I wonder if that was the right decision because with the format string they could solve it so but they decided to know let's let's abandon this let's look at something else um, yeah it looks like they're looking at the command injection and this like looking how this how this is structured and uh, uh, you know, seeing how this works. So uh, maybe they're onto something. This they see this global variable called injection size. Uh, so uh, uh, we are switching over to Water Paddler. Uh, we can yeah, see. Yeah, what, what are they up to? They have been doing like s traces of the program to just figure out what it's doing. Oh, it looks like they just tested all the entries in there. They kind of doing a little bit of fussing, almost, which I think is a really cool uh, approach as well. Yeah, I guess with asterisks, especially if you have the vulnerable functions, kind of the represented, you know, the print, printf for format string, uh, the free maybe, uh, and, and things like this. So you could very easily with asterisks just see kind of the, the vulnerabilities uh, dynamically without doing reverse engineering. Right. Um, so could be a okay approach. Also for the command injection, seeing exactly what is called, uh, you, you might notice uh, exactly. that. Exactly. As well, and we should like maybe clarify that for for our viewers who, who are not maybe familiar. So S trace is a program that will uh, log all the syscalls that your program uh, is performing. So reads, writes, uh, you know, execution of uh, command uh, programs and, and and so on uh, will be uh, logged by the S trace command. So it's a way to see how your program is interacting with like the rest of the system in a very easy way. Um, we can see here on the uh, Rekipig uh, side, uh, as we said, they are uh, they commented they out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is command three now? So they go from menu item three. What was that again? That was the command injection. Oh, that was the command injection. OK, so they feel like that's the way to go now. Right. Uh, let's see. In the LS, is that enough characters? I, I guess that could that, that would fit probably. Uh, let's see. No, that's because get, the thing is that you need uh, so you're inside double quotes, so you need to do either double quote semicolon, 
or uh, mm. back ticks for a subshell. Uh, so those, both of those kind of operations will cost you two characters. You, you yeah. only really have five characters for like your payload. Um, yeah. Okay, that's not enough here. No, and uh, we unset the path, so you cannot just do yeah. just like back takes and sh, for example, because you need yeah. to do slash bin slash sh or something like this. Um, I, I saw on on Waterpad stream they were also going for the command injection. They were also setting up some functions um, uh, for for the command injection. Um, right, they are yeah. looking at the command injection. I mean that command injection does really look very juicy. Like you you know you're sitting there wishing like what if this variable was just like a little bit bigger and this would be so easy, right? Yeah, uh, but they are highlighting it, so they see that size. They 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 see okay, this mm -hmm. the size is taken from somewhere. I I hope they make this mental step forward to oh, I can use another vulnerability to change that size. Uh, yes, I'm curious uh, if they if they yes come to that. We also consider the possibility of doing dot slash s star space one, which is. But that's also one character too many uh, for mm. them to run. So we, the, this seven is uh, is very carefully chosen to be, you know, just oh, too small. Oh, do you see small. what they are trying here? Copy, star, x. Oh, that's uh, that's interesting, uh, but it will not work because that binary is a suit binary. So uh, mm. if you copy it, it. Even if that work, which I, I'm, I'm not sure, but even if you copy it, it will lose the, uh, the suit properties uh, that's, and that's, it will not work. But is, the challenge itself is not like the said UID, the, the, the actual uh, no, no. submitter code. Is yes, the, exactly. Uh, because the submitter uh, program it, it, will read, it, it's a set UID binary, it will read a config file in the same directory to be able to contact our uh, like winner yeah. server. Oh, that's unfortunate because, uh, to be fair, to defend uh, the the player here, uh, let's say in a, in a typical setup, the, the target binary you exploit, that gives you the elevated privileges and you perform in certain actions. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, in in some sense, they are able to do the privileged action, but yeah, that, that's a bit tricky with the, that the submitter program. Do, do the players know that it's set UID, that that's the way? Because I, I don't know. They you don't know, know that, yeah. but the instructions are clearly saying, like, you need to run this specific command to win. So, uh, gotcha. okay, like, okay. it's a yeah. very literal interpretation of, of that that that's yeah. applies. Okay, fair. fair enough. Yeah. Um, so a very clever idea, for sure, because when you have restricted shell stuff, it's sometimes really crazy what kind of creative ideas uh, they could come up with and copying uh, this, this copy command uh, something I like you know my brain was brainstorming could I do something with just five characters you know yeah and writing uh, files slowly a script slowly or something like that but um, with a pending or something but yeah yeah no I, I love it I love the I love the idea unfortunately it, it will not work but it's like you know you need to try it right and we can see yeah. here on Recipig, um they are we're setting up some debugging in their script uh, and they were taking another option again option two which is the format string so they did mm. put that back into their script again they I guess they they must have realized the um, the length check maybe and so they maybe come back to the format string maybe mm. uh, to to change that because they still have um, yeah, the, um, yeah, they at, at least they are back on the format string. Maybe they go for full format string exploit, or um, they they know the the command line length, the injection length. Right. Let's see. I have not seen any of them look at the uh, out of bounds uh, read and write yet, uh, which is interesting because. Uh, that was the one I used in my reference uh, solution for this. Yeah, and, and usually that's a pretty powerful primitive because you I, I don't know exactly what it's doing here, but generally if it's really like fully array out of bounds, it might as well be just a write anything anywhere, uh, which is a powerful primitive. Is it is it that powerful? Or is it has it some restrictions? Yes, it's really great, and it also defeats like uh, you know the ASLR since it's relative. So it's just straight up. We have a, a global variable that's an array, and you can just choose mm -hmm. any index on that array and choose any value. That's the vulnerability. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's a that's the most powerful and easiest primitive. And then together with the format string, even ASLR is not a problem. Uh, through that, players know very well like how to leak a value 
through, through the format string and defeat ASLR. So even that wouldn't be a problem to if they want to go for like libc or something. So I want to um, point out here just that we see a percent %n character in the format string uh, script, which means that they are trying to write something to uh, some uh, pointer. And you see right after that, you saw like a pointer as well. So it really looks like they are trying to uh, write uh, something. And now they it's are... Yeah, it, do you, do, can you tell from the like the offsets that they are trying to write here, the amount of characters, um, what that could be, what they try to target? Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, the, the, the way sounds. this works when you use percent %n like is you need your, your, the address of your destination to be located on the stack so that you can reference it with the percent %n thing. And that's why they're... Oh, we have a winner! They did Wait, it. What? Whoa, Who won? <laughs> I think it was the Ricky Pig. They did it. Yeah, it was Ricky Pig. Oh, they, wow. It worked with the with the format string thing. So, a uh, really great job there. Uh, and uh, they did that. So it was a format string overwriting the got uh, and then uh, running the binary. Uh, if I understood that correctly, uh, really oh, cool wow. to that see was, that. That was quick getting these offsets. Uh, yeah. Correct. Really I nice. To, I need to check back at the at the script. In yeah, the, yeah. 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 Um, so, oh, the, the camera resets onto a wide shot. Well, let's fix that later. But anyway, uh, this was this match. Uh, we will go to an intermission. Uh, Liverpool, will you uh, do your uh, like intermission on your stream as well? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm live on Twitch, live Gr overflow, and I, I will have a look at, at Great. the photo finish here. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So head over to uh, Twitch TV slash live overflow, right? And uh, hang out there. We're going to an intermission. Our next match will start in about half an hour. Uh, so
Hello and welcome back to another live CTF. Uh, I am Cyphertex here and I'm joined by Lightning. Hello. Welcome. Uh, so Lightning, you've been, uh, you're a part of Nautilus Institute. So I think but different people are in different stages of chaos right now. But you had a challenge that was fielded yesterday and so you're kind of relaxed now, right? Yep. So you decided to come hang out with us. We're happy to have you. And, and you've been doing challenges for, for many years too because you were also a part of uh, LegitBS, right? Yep. So old hat. Back, yeah, we we were on the same team together, yeah, for many years ago, so we've known each other for a long time, and uh, I think I would say I always tell people you're known for making the most uh, painful challenges possible. You love, it's not a bad thing, it's just like your flavor of challenge is like super, super uh, like hard, the top tier difficulty, You've had some great ones over the years. In fact, you were responsible for um, a special architecture one year at DEF CON as well. Yes, I, and I told you pure pain, right? Like this teams had to like figure out and do all that stuff. We'll talk more later as we got time. We're gonna get the teams going now first to let them count in. So teams, we're gonna go ahead and count you in. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go! So the teams are gonna be downloading uh, their binaries here, and we'll, we'll watch them um, get up to speed. This challenge is called Quick Cast. Uh, yeah, so the angle's a little low on our, our monitor. It's kind of kind of dim, so we have to kind of squint for some of these. Um, we've got. So I was I was gonna look. Oh, we do have a binge user. Okay, good. There's another binge. We had a binge user who won this morning. I'm always excited. Um, and we've got an ID user over here. I've used binge way back under CTF. Yeah. I've not used Binja since then. Uh, it's been a long I've not time. been in a position to actually have need of it. Yeah, yeah. You've been doing other other kind of tasking. Yeah. So so Binary Ninja started as a CTF tool built actually on right really for this. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of specs. Uh, so in fact, uh, the challenge author, Rusty is the challenge author of uh, this particular challenge, who also wrote the old CTF Binary Ninja and is the, one of the main Binja devs. So um, this particular binary is called QuickCast, and we told the teams it's just it's opponable. Um, but I did have something pointed out to me that I didn't even notice right away, because the the, the challenge is like magic themed. It's like I think it's there's a RuneScape or one of, like one of these kind of mm -hmm. online games, but it's it's also the name is Quick Cast. If you were to take that as a hint for the type of challenge, do you have any like what type of vulnerabilities might be related to either of those words? You so my initial thought is potential C plus plus or casting. If not that, you also have the casting between different types. Yes. Um, more than likely an object confusion as a potential. Ta-da! <laughs> the idea of C++. So it's not C++ only because we have to keep the time limit short, yep. right? So we're trying to kind of minimize the time. Um, and we're already seeing teams kind of kind of make their way. I mean, yeah, this is definitely funny because we're going to watch them go back and forth. But yeah, I mean, that's we basically told them the volume in the name of the, the it is it is a type confusion vulnerability. Yep. Um, and so we're going to see them. This is this is again we're going for real simple, straightforward kind of kind of vulnerabilities, and we're going to watch them. Uh, this will be interesting because we're going to try to see who can find the the, the type confusion first. Um, but it's 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 pretty obvious because there's literally a type of value, number in text uh, in the menu yep. choice there. So you can you can literally see it. Um, it's asking them, uh, and of course, did we see a check sec? Uh, yep, there, there we, we saw a check sec as well on, um, uh, excuse me, on uh, Catspin, right? Wait, am I, I gotta make sure I'm, yes, <laughs> no, no. Catspin is, Catspin is over on your side, there we go. <laughs> I was gonna give him straight. Um, so Catspin <laughs> in, in, in Straw Hat, all right. So check sec, which we've seen several, uh, several other uh, competitors do as well. I'm not sure why someone's blowing an air horn. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, that's nice. You can see them kind of interacting with it um, uh, over here. So they've they've actually got the uh, servers what it looks like. So I think it's pretty obvious too, right? We we don't want them to make them spend an hour looking for the bug and then several hours exploiting yep. it. Like we have to keep the whole thing down fat. You know, so they're tiny binaries where like the only thing you can do is basically the bug for for a lot of these. Um, so it's interesting how different people go after challenges. Yeah. I mean, some of them start a challenge and see what type of input it's wanting at first and start mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Other ones dive into the middle of the binary. Other ones look for specific functions being used first. 
find all the stir copies or mem copies yeah. or yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is no one right way. There's no right way to do it all. Yeah. That will always guarantee finding the bug. It's in some ways turns into a guessing game as to which one you think is going to give you the most benefit. And and you know sometimes it changes on the challenge author or the type of challenge yeah. or yeah. And this is this is one where. You could probably have run it and instantly known the bug yeah, so because it asks you for this. Yeah. yeah. So a challenge like this, where a lot of challenge authors name their challenges based on some form of hint. Example, oh, yeah. I did that with Kazad for the dwarf bite code bug uh, I did yeah, years ago. Yeah. So knowing that this one has a cast hint in the name, I'd probably start at the beginning because I'm not going to go looking for common functions or printoffs. Yep. So that leads into I need to understand what's at the beginning for what type of casting your data manipulation is handling, and probably at least run the binary at least once to see what is that even wanting for input. Right. Is it pure text? Is it pure binary data or similar? And, and in this case, because it is so straightforward, the second you run it and you see type of yeah. text or string, uh, it, it, I think it definitely can, would confirm that that guess, that yeah. intuition in terms of, in terms of what it is. So we 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 do have over here actual like solve scripts. Actually, on both sides, yeah, yeah, both this is are great. Doing They're, solve scripts already. And, and we have seen, I think we've only had one competitor so far didn't use Pwn Tools. So everyone else, clearly, which it's not a surprise, uh, Pwn Tools is, is clearly the, the, the tool of choice. Um, so, so interesting enough, I've never actually used Pwn tools, tools. Now, do you think that's because you haven't been writing exploits? Because most of when you were doing exploitation was further back and it just yep. wasn't as common. I was writing exploits before yeah. Pwn tools was even around or common. Yeah. So I never got in the habit. I actually have a common exploit script in fact, it still has a comment in there about the show code is ripped off of, was it Eisenbahns or something oh, like that? Oh, uh, Einbazen. Yeah. Einbazen's show code. That was good so show code. So every time I read exploit script, yeah. that's still in there because yeah. I copy from the same thing every time. Yeah, that was, that was I believe that was a show code payload that they traded for points as like, there was a joke category of bribe the organizers and ghost in the show code years ago. And they traded, they traded show code. Um, it was it was really good show code. Like cause, you know, you still I'm still, still using, using it. it. Yeah, even on 64-bit systems. That's functional. really funny. Yeah, that was fantastic show. Yeah, because I think it was like 3264 compatible in a very short, uh, short range there. Okay, so we're definitely exercising the vulnerability, right? If we actually watch, um, uh, uh, in I think both are. They both are trigger. Yeah, I mean, it's they're both just kind of triggering back and forth. It's going to be interesting. So like, okay. Walk me through now, if you're given these exploit primitives, right? You're given a type confusion between an integer and a text a text variable. What would you, like, how would you use that um, to start building, like, an actual exploit? Um, the first thing i do is I'd actually check, especially for a simple binary like this, I'd actually check and see if stack's executable. It's not common anymore. But that's still something that can be turned on. Yeah, and we, and we have in several of these challenges. Yeah. So you're right. That's that's so a good one to check. If that is there, then there's a lot of very easy, effectively rep the stack and just go. Uh, we did get a, a question in chat. Somebody was asking for your Twitter handle. We forgot to to publish that. So we should make sure we get your uh, your Twitter handle updated. Can, I can, believe it's Manic Lightning. I'd have to look it up though. It's yeah, been also used it. It's been been a while. Or oh, you don't even have to do that. If if you have something that you want to be uh, want to be known as uh, for for a Twitter handle, we can we can update that. But uh, no no worries yeah. either way. Manic underscore lightning. Okay, there we go. Do you guys see that? Manic underscore lightning is our Twitter handle. All right. So yeah, again, we're uh, there's this is just to see basically which one of these teams now can turn this like kind of obvious primitive mm -hmm. of this type of confusion. In, into a working bug. Um, and this is actually one that I haven't seen the, the I know we have a, a solve script we've tested with it. I actually haven't seen the exact payload. Um, but it, if we, oh, here we go. This is a nice uh, look there. And we've got, yeah, 256 bytes. They're going to get in when it's a string. So we're looking for God entries to overwrite. Yep. So which one do so we want to? So over here, they do very similar to how I tend to do exploitation in that starting to get some of the payload together and throw it into a debugger. Yeah, yeah. To, to so make sure, validate what you've done so far. Validate you look at that I'm on the right track and process before I write what's a shell code and then one, and have to figure out what's going wrong. Yeah. I start debugging partway through the shell code itself. We talked a little bit in the last room. There's like, there's, there's a, uh, a lot of people that will just write a complete exploit, never touching a debugger, and then only use it if they need to at the very end. 
and other people who use the debugger as a part of the learning process and, yeah. and, and validation while they're doing it. And yeah, I, I do more of the same, same as you do as well. And it's usually because I'm dealing with the harder, more complex things. So yeah, you can write all the shell code, but one typo and everything yeah. falls apart and you don't know why. Right, and so you want to kind of like do incremental steps that are each verified and, and, and you're sure kind of right. as you go along. With these simpler ones, you probably could get away with the full write and go. I, I certainly, the, there are definitely people that, it, that it's could. It's all of the yeah. dice. Yeah, but that's the thing is, if it doesn't, then and you got to kind of back it up. If you tested smaller bits, it's you less, have people less like Rusty wrong. that writes yeah. assembly that write binary with pure hex. It's the I've shell code goes this. straight in from the top of their head. Right, exactly. So he uh, he tends to not use a debugger very much. No, he has used a hex editor. Yeah, that's that is his 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 phone script. All right, so we are actually starting to see. Um, a couple of kind of handlers here. So, the uh, the Straw Hat. Wait, am I back around? I keep I keep getting back around. Too tired. Straw Hat and Cotspin. Yes, Straw Hat and Cotspin. Help me remember this. Chat chat will make fun of me <laughs> if I get it wrong. So I got I get it right. Uh, so Straw Hat is um, uh, is again starting to see, kind of build those those helpers. Um, and so we're seeing uh, a prompt, uh, a set number, and show string. So this is this is going to let them uh, interact with these with these primitives. All right. So what do we what are we doing? We've got libc addresses. We've got a pi offset. So we're calculating the the, the pi shift. And they're going to do uh, libc start. So they're they're are they leak they're leaking a libc start. It looks like. So they're going to they're going to set the number to the offset for libc. Then they're going to show what that value is. Um, but they're just going to do this interactively, right? So they're not actually saving it into a variable, it looks like. Yep. And that, yeah, how are we are doing? Are we here? They're already, they're working on the leak right now? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it. I'm seeing they've got some decimal yeah, they value already have dumped. The yeah. Leak value on the bomb. Um, yeah, they I'm not exactly sure which value they're leaking. Probably libc, though. It's a common thing to go after because they need to do a straight system call. Yeah, actually, you know, that's a good question. I don't remember which uh, flags we compiled this on, if this is uh, ASLR or if it's... Um, so So that would definitely... I mean, I'd, although we did see teams uh, run check sec, right? Because, again, the first thing they want to do is don't make any assumptions. Yeah. See what it actually does. If it doesn't have ASLR, that actually makes your shell code a lot easier, yeah. especially on small ones like this. It takes you all of two seconds to run check sec. Yeah. It might yeah. save you multiple save minutes. Save you several minutes of, I mean, which again, with these, with these primitives, you could certainly solve it either way, right? Yeah. There's no question you yeah. could. You, it's all with ways. It's yeah. a matter of you're in a race, but so a couple of seconds may actually save you a lot of time. Yeah, e exactly. So, all right. Uh, value is, or stuff. Okay, so now we're opening up a libc. Someone is looking at the, uh, they're dumping symbols from libc. They're looking for libc start, probably. Sure enough. Yep. And so Straw has pulled out the libc start. They've got their libc base. You know, actually, I was just remember. I think weren't you one of the were you one of the spotters when we did the other live CTF at DevCon a couple years ago, where we had people watching. Yes, I was. I thought, yeah, I just realized that. I remember you were one because yeah. I was describing in the last uh, chat how we had like a analysts specifically like watching, because because it, it is it's hard yeah. to like switch back and forth. Yeah, yeah I was watching and annoying. What's frustrating is that the guy I was watching, he had full working shell code trying to call BinSH for yeah. like 10 minutes. However, because it's running on Android, it's supposed to use your BinSH. And oh, it never got I over. forgot about that one. That's right. So, like, the one I was watching like had it fully working ahead oh, of time. No. It spent 10 minutes trying to debug it until someone else got and it. And someone beat him to like the and final little bit. It, <sighs> it was so devastating. That's painful. Yeah, that is hard. And we've seen a couple of people. In fact, uh, we actually saw that earlier with a samurai player here had a working exploit, but didn't know it was working because they were breaking before a flush was called that caused that like there was a memory being overwritten mm -hmm. and they were breaking in, in the debugger. I mean like, oh, it's not working. Clearly I need to change my exploit. They literally just need to set the breakpoint after the flush and they would have seen that it was, it was succeeding. Yep. So, well, that's yeah. the other fun part is the way a lot of programs work with networking and stuff, it's very easy to forget about a flush yep. and have code work local. It doesn't work remote. Yep. Oh yeah, not something that runs that works on my machine versus like you can't throw. That's a painful one for whatever the, whatever the like, reason is. Offsets are different. Is it or, failing because I screwed something up, or is it failing because they altered the binary? Yeah, yeah, is or it's it, just a different libc or some weird platform. Flush. 
can uh, be horrible. Yeah, yeah, that, that was bad. And in this case, we did do the flush. It just, uh, the break point was, was set beforehand. So let's keep an eye on it. So we're still over here on... Uh, um, looks like they're still working on the leak over here. So uh, okay. I think it looks like they're actually ahead. Yeah. From current observation. Yeah, I think, I think Straw Hat has a working leak. And I have to be, of course, impartial, even though we have a Benji user. Even though we have a Benji user, I am officially impartial. Yep. Um, and we, yeah, we didn't build uh, all sorts of terrible, like, tool-breaking bugs into these. We just wanted these to be simple, straightforward challenges. So yep. there's, there was, there was a debate about how much we wanted to uh, put nasty things into it. And there's basically nothing that's, um, nothing that's, that's tricky. Oh, you've got, you've got a hi, mom, in chat. <laughs> my oldest father. Hi, welcome. Wait, we, I don't know if, yeah, our video's not on. That's right. Yeah, I don't know if my family's tuned in yet or not. They got a lot, a lot of video to recap if they if they catch up. All right, so I see, but the leak was happening over here. But this, I feel like they've. It's really interesting. This happened the last uh, couple matches ago, where they kind of just slowed up. They hit this point where yep. they've got all the perimeters, they got all the pieces, and then they just kind of are working through issues. Like, what's the gotcha? What's going to block in them? Um, and we'll see. And now the other thing we're trying to remember too is we're trying to remember if we want to give hints, we're going to do it earlier. So let's look at the production desk and, and let them. Well, they're writing the think value. They're calculating their offset for where they're right over here. Oh, okay, so so they they already know the overwrite target, and they're just gonna they're gonna change that. Let's see, where do we environment offset? Interesting, huh? I don't know what they're doing with that one. So actually, they they're leaking something about an environment offset. Uh, Straw Hat, I don't know. It's an easy way to adjust. Um Local uh, for remote. And remote, so yeah. maybe a habit. That's that's true. Verify. That's not a bad idea. That makes sense. Just to make sure that there's nothing else. Yeah. And that's an easy thing to do habit-wise, especially when you have multiple different libcs. I've done that in my own shell code where you want things to adjust, knowing that you may have a newer version of libc. It's just a dot yeah. version off. Or or even just like run it and dump it. You don't even have to do anything with it necessarily. And that way, if you see it's changed, you know you have to put like you don't have to put the effort in to make it account yep. for it right off the bat. Yep. Uh, but you could. Just oh, validated their right hit the uh, sterling like they wanted. Okay, so if we're good, if we're close to an overwrite, that's a good sign. Although we are over in a VM in Straw Hat, so Straw Hat's actually pulled up, uh, pulled up the challenge in a VM. Yep. So they're they're trying to match the and actually I do see they're also running in a bunch of twenty two oh four. I don't know if they just defaulted to that. If they saw others on the stream where we we did specifically mention that that tends to be what we use. Uh, in I our think instances. my current VM is twenty two oh four. Yeah. It's, just a newer version. So they've they're wanting to make sure that they've got it running, running in a debugger, running the challenge, and this actually this may be one of the first ones in a while that they weren't using pwn tools. Oh no, this is using, using pwn tools. Pwn tools they just got it popping up in the new terminal separately. But yeah, that's uh, that's another thing that I. So here's the reason why you should use pwn tools if you if you're not in the habit of it. Being able to write your your payload and write your script, but then actually just say like break here, right, and get a debugger at that point at that progress, and not have to put like a sleep or some well, other. You do you know the last time I actually competed? A little while ago, I would imagine. The very first year of legit BS. Okay, so that's before right. Before I joined them. That's right, because yeah, we played in the same team that yeah. year, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. The last time I played was, was with you. That's right. Oh man. On black hats. I feel, and so that was like ten years ago, basically. Just no, about so nine or ten, four or five. Because because LegitBS ran for Seven. five years and then a four over the overflow. So yeah. over the overflow, so I don't maybe eight, eight or eight or nine. Four. Yeah, yeah, it'd be eight. Yeah, because the very first year I was competing wasn't actually running. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, and, and then I brought along DOS fun for you for you guys to have fun with. <sighs> yes, DOS fun for you. <laughs> oh, the memories. Actually, th I thankfully I don't think I worked on that one. I don't remember who who solved that one, but it wasn't me. You guys, you guys actually got screwed up with that one. Yeah, we may not have. Oh, like Rusty, ha Rusty got screwed up with it. Yeah, it was something that, that that blocked it. All right, so oh, here we go. Okay, so now we're starting a write over here on Straw Hat. So Straw Hat's actually got a set string now, right? So they've, um, 
They've got their their leaks all figured out. They're pulling out of the offsets, but now they're just now starting their 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 right. But they're going to use the set string to change a value in memory. So let's compare. Well, they already have, so they're already doing the right with the location of Sterling. That's going to overwrite. I do like that. By the way, this is great because they are going for the like just write the payload. Yep. Right. So we're seeing Catspin is like just write the payload, and Straw Hat's got like the helper function and the utilities. Um, you get your three X's as a test, so do an override and see if the X's show up. Oh, this is good. So they're both right now really close. Or they're both working on their overwrite, and once it's done, uh, they will. Yeah, it's I. I couldn't pick. I could not pick at this point. This is really close. We're back into Ida. So what are we looking for? We've got GDB up. We got our breakpoints. I don't do it. So do we have? Um, I think they're getting. I may be mistaken, but I think they're getting ready to start putting shell code then. Well, if they're just are they just going to go to like call system? They might not even need any actual shell code if they're going to overwrite like a system pointer. We might just get a shell. I'm curious what they. Well, they have some other values up top. I didn't catch which ones they are pointing to. Yeah. So what, I what don't know if write. they're. If they're jumping straight to a function, I don't know what it would be at the moment. All right, here we go. We're back into Ida over here. Looking at the overwrite. All right, yeah, I don't, I mean, they they know what to do. I don't know that they need any hints at this point. I think we're just uh, watching them put the final polish on it here. If they, it's going to be whoever, the, the as, soon as, 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 somebody has, as soon as somebody down. has a, a right, well, it's just hanging now. So they're, they're uh, you know, that might actually be one of the issues the, with the framework. It's hanging on the read. Well, that's what I was going to say. One of the problems with not doing a sort of like helper function thing is that it's easy to mess up like a, read, a new line or like, you yep. know, you forgot another input line. Yep. So that's, we might be seeing the downside of that approach. I think they got that payload faster. And if it works, it'll be quicker, but they're more likely to have bugs. Uh, but we're still, they're, we're still they're over. They're neck and neck at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's they have the leak. They know the offsets. They, they I think they they both know that the address they want to target, and the value they want to put. They're just trying to like finish it out, get this right, and that determines who moves on to the round of eight. So this is the last round or last match in round one. So okay. we've got sixteen teams. Uh, we've already identified the top seven mm -hmm. um, that uh, are going to move on, and then one more. Uh, this this will be the last one. We're actually going to take a little bit of a break in the stream, so we're going to leave the like the intermission up uh, after this one a little longer, uh, and let us recuperate um, <laughs> after uh, a long time. And uh, we'll 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 put up the the rest of the schedule for the teams that are here, so they know when they're going to go, and, uh, and we'll line up the challenges for the rest of the day. And from there on out, we have the just four more matches this afternoon. That'll take us all the way down to a top four. So we're going to go from uh, 16 yesterday. To just four coming in tomorrow. All right, good. I was half afraid somebody would land it really quick while I was kind of like, you know, talking about the, the logistics. But um, I'm seeing a... S they're debugging their hang on the read. They're, they're debugging here on a stack on a, yeah. Um, is it the right or the, yeah, they've set a break point. Yeah, this is definitely the thing that I also never really used Pwn Tools for and got into the routine of like being able to like easily debug it. It was always much more painful for me to debug like well, a half-working system. Well, it's interesting considering that I started this type of work um, 11 years ago. The number of tools that have come out, especially after Cyber Grand Challenge, yeah. there was such an advancement in the type of tools for this type of work. Like automate. Well, there's a, I mean, the number of like ROP finding you know, yeah. tools alone, like it's, uh, nice. we've seen a couple uh, teams working on before. Yeah, my my favorite for a long time. My favorite rock finding thing was grep and obj dump, and that was all I ever yep. did. And then rock gadget came out. Yep, and I've, I learned several more over the last uh, last day as well. And I'm sure there's more that I haven't heard of because I haven't kept up on them. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is why something like this is a lot of fun because you get to see yep. like what the what are the teams using? What are the best people currently? Um, the the tools in their tool bag. Now this is interesting. are we open up libc? No, oh, we should. Just open up another tab. Oh. All right. So we're going to LibC. LibC we're looking over here open too. That's really interesting. They're both opening up LibC at the same time. So is it because they're looking for the the relative offset between um, a pointer that they've leaked and, and like system or something like that? 
Uh, yeah, let's keep an eye and see if we see if we can catch them looking at uh, that, or are they just? Actually, it looks here like we might be just looking at um, the stack. Uh, yeah, so we're looking at some stack addresses. Did we find it? Is this a function pointer? And there's an offset. Uh, that's not where you're looking. That's just going to exit out. There we go. Look at the base address. Yeah, there's no. I don't think there's a hint we can give him at this point. I think they both know exactly what to do. Yeah. We're just waiting for the first one to, to finish it. And let's see. I mean, time-wise, we're we're 30 minutes uh, in, so very within expected ranges. Um, we're not kind of in a rush or, or freaking yep. out. I think. And and the second one of them gets that right, I think we're about one It'll minute be from being done. Yeah. Yeah, just one one reliable write is is all it's going to take. Yeah, it's one we have to be careful too because this is this is the kind of situation where they're both neck and neck. We're both just like a little bit away, and uh, if you're looking at the wrong one when oh, yeah. uh, when it happens, so that having each of us here really helps to make sure that nothing slips by us. Oh, here we go. So we've got a function called write address. Is it working? They don't seem. They, they don't, they're not typing like they're real confident here. But we've actually got well, a function this, called write. So at this point, when you start getting this close to it, you start having to revalidate in all your, your mind, assumptions. All, not only all your assumptions, but do I have all the right offsets? Am I doing the right math calculations? Did I swap a math or two variables around so I subtracted in the wrong order? Try to make sure not to get any of that wrong. I mean, even myself tends to slow down yeah, at the yeah. end of the shell code. Yeah, this is true. Because I know I have shell coding to dump in, or what the last step is. Yeah. It's that extra little bit of math required. Okay, so we're getting a... All right. So we're getting a string. Okay, so we've got a bin sh string pointer. This is looking real close. How I are we... I think they have hexes sterling on libc. What's this? Oh, so they're going to overwrite Sterling. Do they? Yeah, this is, I want to say. They have the Sterling of libc also. Like they're. Yeah. All right, we've got that. our SH, we've got our system. And now it's time to do the right. ROP gadget. There we go. So here's another one of the ROP finding tools. So they're going to scan it, dump it all out, and let's see what they're going to grab for. So uh, are they looking for a pivot? Because if they've got, uh, yeah, my guess is they're going to look for a stack pivot, right? So if they get, yep. they got a stack pivot. Um, so move. Yeah. What was it? Pop RDI ret, I think. Yeah, pop RDI ret. Yep. Stack pivot. Uh, or is it? This is one of the things I mentioned at the beginning. It's like a simple challenge like this, going straight for stack is the easiest way to go. You aren't dealing with the heap or other complexities. So they're writing, the, yeah, the, the pop RDI to the stack, and then they're going to write the stack. Oh, no, yeah, so that's just going to get them. Uh, this could be it. OK, so if this is, if this is correct, we have, a, we have a working exploit. If there's no bugs in any of this, this math. So let's find out. Uh, let's keep an eye on Straw Hat. And here it is. This is their local attempt, so they're still not running in the server. So we'll find out if there's anything else yeah. over there. But. Um, we call this still still debugging, or are they switching to? Are they gonna make a ret slide or something? They've got a ret. I can't tell. I can't see enough of the screen. Yeah, to, so it's a, it's, give a, feedback. it's a bad angle for you. So, so right now they're working with um, working with their pop RDI gadget. They're working with a, a pointer to BinSH. Uh, they're working with their system gadget, and they're using their write primitive to overwrite uh, the stack um, directly. Four. Uh, there we go. Okay. So they got a shell. So now they're going to switch it over. They're going to run it on the remote server. Here it is. That should do it. If if this works on. Yeah, so they're going to 
add that last little bit. Here it is. Okay. Double check, make sure they're not close to where they're going to miss it over there, no, but I think we're still, about to... They're still doing the bugging over here on their right and over right. I think this is it. I think we've... Yep. Okay. All right. Let's get ready. Very well done. Yep. Put the remote connection in. Let's see, as long as this works remotely. Uh-oh. Oh no, we talked about this earlier. When you're the feeling when your when your remote uh payload doesn't works local, it doesn't work remote. Yeah, so they're gonna double check the leaks, double check the environment variables, figure out Yeah, so it definitely does look like the that environment may have been important. So maybe I don't remember if when they when they dumped the environment if they actually used that in any of their calculations. So they might now need to go back and, and fix up. Let's see if they use the environment. Now it's interesting though because, again, uh, we're using we're using Docker into twenty two oh four. It should be pretty similar. Well, the environment shifts the stack information around too. Yeah. So if you start messing with environment variables that's, or using them right. as an offset, that's right. it can screw you up. That's right. I do. In fact, I remember like uh, the poor man's defense in the day used to be you would make a really really big environment variable yep. just to throw off people's like you know stupid uh, stupid stat hard coded stacks. Um, so yeah, it looks like we do still have a little bit of work. So that leaves the door open. Uh, it is. It is certainly still possible at this point uh, for Kostabin. Kostabin, come back. All right. Come on, binge users. Let's go. And they have all the pieces over there. Yeah. 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 I think they don't have any. They're still working on the, the right and the, the, the right still not. Yeah. The location. Now, and are they writing? To, are they writing to this? So here's the difference, though. If they're not writing to the stack. They may actually avoid some of the the, the environment mm -hmm. shifts, right? Yes. So it's entirely possible, even though they're behind now, if they take a different, if they write to something else, um, if they're able to figure out a way a way to get a, a write that doesn't require uh, essentially a, uh, a stack pivot, um, but I, they would have to either get a, a different gadget yeah. or more than likely because they're doing the Sterling over here. The idea is to do a um, pop ESP write. So that the stack becomes your buffer. Yeah. Like it removes yeah. all the environment variable calculation issues. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, that's a, yeah a, a safer pivot. So if they can pull yep. that off, I agree. I think you're right. I think that's going to let them uh, avoid some of the environmental like flakiness that we're seeing over here. So, oh man, we might we might end up closer than we thought. Is that system libc I saw. Yeah. Point in the address for system libc. Because then you write buffers for your command and call system on it because replace system yep. with sterling. Yep. Or replace sterling with system. What is. Oh man, some of these colors are hard to see on the screen. The common out stuff. Okay, so I, I we're about to see a 4i in range. So I'm wondering, I suspect we're about to see a brute force coming in here, uh, which is also very valid in a, in a live CTF oh, environment, yeah. right? Like, oh, I don't know what my, what my offset is because the username is a different length or whatever it actually is that's throwing off. They're writing their shell code right now. They just did, it looks like a overwrite of Sterling on oh, the system, and they just passed bin SH straight into the buffer. So we, I would say, are back neck and neck again. Honestly, this, this could easily go either way. This is really close. So we're, yeah, we're looking at we've got our we've got our brute force going over uh, here from Straw Hat. They're working on uh, just figuring out the offset between their uh, exploit that runs locally but doesn't work remotely because the environment may be slightly different yep. in the way that they're doing the stack. And uh, they've overwrite. done the overwrite of Cosbin's overwritten Sterling with system, and then passing BinSH directly just to call system on it. Okay. Yeah. If they're avoiding, so they're even the, doing the pivot. The, yeah, they're just for, it, call but, system on their buffer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. That's a much cleaner exploit. I think that's a that's a much better idea. But oh, which one? This is fantastic. Okay, yeah, I. They're both like real close, real close here. I think I've gone Python back and forth. Typos. What's that? 
They're trying to fix their Python typos. Oh no. And that's the other thing again, just as a reminder, for all you like looking at home. Oh, here we go. Sorry, we had a couple of uh, chat questions. Yeah, we're able to watch both of the teams at the same time. Yep. So, so with the the stream is switching back and forth between which one is kind of the main one. We have some separate monitors here that we're mirroring uh, each team's uh, display directly, so we can kind of watch both. And uh, our production, we have a couple folks in the production desk that are also um, keeping an eye on things. And so sometimes they'll they'll you know listen to us, or if they see something interesting, they'll just kind of put it up to make sure we uh, we don't miss something good for y'all. Uh, one of the things actually I was, was making note of for next year, we should we should do like a multi-camera YouTube stream approach. You can actually do multi-camera. We could upload our audio to all of it, but then you could switch and you could choose whose screen you were watching directly, which I think would be would be super neat um, to let people choose between them. So that'll be that'll be something for something for next time. We're still so yeah, we're still seeing this this um, the brute force attack. This brute form. force attack. Uh, Actually, they've removed the brute force attack. So did they? I, I didn't notice if, if they actually calculated the offset based on that. Uh, there, it looks like they're putting it back together. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, the prompt. They forgot the prompt line at the end. This? So I'm a little surprised. They're setting up a debugger at the top of this. I'm not exactly sure why, though. Why they're breaking it so early? Yeah, so I... I, it, I don't think they've actually tried to send it remotely, so I'm not sure what they're validating over here. I think they need their prompt uh, command. No, no, I think it's just the prompt. Or, oh, oh was they, they were breaking it earlier. Yeah, they missed that a whole bunch of... Th okay, here we go. Tweaking offsets, tweaking offsets... Trying to get it to work. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. And double check the number, double check the number. Congratulations! Woohoo! Straw Hat won. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, awesome. So well done. Well done, Straw Hat. That was a that was a great match. Uh, thank you very much, Lightning, oh. for, for hanging out. Um, thank you. I would had a great time. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody else. Like I said, we're going to leave the stream up and going, but we're going to take a little bit longer break between matches. We'll be back in uh, about an hour and 10 minutes for our next match, and we'll see you all then. Have a good day. Cheers.
Hello and welcome back to Live CTF. Uh, you're back with the original crew this time, uh, Cypher Dexter Jordan and... Hi, Carl, CETA2. So we have uh, more uh, challenges ahead. We are done with round one, we're on to round two. Uh, right away, let's just go ahead and kick it off, let our teams go. Behind us, we have the new organizers and we have Team Starbug. So let's do it. Five, four, three, two, one, go! So the round is live, uh, and now everybody's an expert. Everyone in these rounds has won one of these rounds. They know what the infrastructure is. Wow, that's like the fastest, I think, to like decompilation I've seen so far uh, from Star Starbug there. Right. So we have, um, yes. Seems like you have a capture problem with uh, Starbucks on the on the feed. So we're gonna go over to uh, organizers and uh, we'll have production uh, reset the capture card in the meantime. Uh, no big deal. Uh, so we can see here them using Ida as well, looking into the, the I, binary. I will say, I'm glad they've got different themes. We've got a light theme and a dark theme, which <laughs> nice. actually makes it really easy yeah, to, yeah. To, to see the difference. So all right, thank you for the work production. We are back live with capture. We can see both of them now. Um, so, uh, this challenge is called... Story time, right? Story time, right? Uh, is this, yeah, this is the story time. I saw it, tell me, tell me your story. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that's, uh, that's the challenge. But I kind of want to look at it again, make sure we don't start talking about the wrong, I, I have nightmares that we like start talking about the wrong challenge. Mm, yeah, um, exactly. Okay, so this is story time. Although I have not seen this version of story time, so I worked on an earlier version um, but I know that we've we've been you know iterating on these challenges, and I haven't seen this particular iteration of it. So I know it got actually simplified a little bit, and uh, we'll see what teams are doing. Although I did notice somebody looked like they were running it on uh, Mac OS directly. I thought they ran X Adder to make it executable, and then they ran it. So it was but this was still just a, a Linux binary. I thought right. Yeah. Not, yeah. Okay. So I, I kind of thought I was. Missing something. I'm not sure yeah, what. Yeah, maybe they are like in the SSHing or like in the terminal or, or something like this. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's let's jump over to uh, Starbucks and uh, see again the Ida with the light theme, also doing some compilation. They're looking at this uh, function that looked uh, a little bit difficult to understand. You said you created like the original version of this, and then we did uh, like a remix of it. Yeah, uh, this was well. Actually, I, I would say I worked on the one two versions ago. Okay. So <laughs> this was probably the the uh, the challenge uh, I worked on the most originally, and it was a little bit too convoluted. And so we've 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 iterated right. it a couple times. And I see that we already have uh, a uh, controlled. Uh, Function pointer. If I didn't was that that fast, this I, could be. I would love for yeah. this to be a fast one. I I, I might have uh, like. I mean, they were certainly running in debugger. I saw yeah. them run like. The, you know, it the, was a breakpoint at the call command. It was a calling a register, and I think I saw uh, control of the uh, register value. Uh, so uh, we have some shell code written. Uh, this is. I mean, this could be really fast as if, if this is going like this. I'm I'm down. I'm here. Like we, yeah. I was. I've always said, like, look, if every round is five minutes long, then we made them too easy. But like a couple that are just pure pwn, pure speed. Yeah. Uh, as, also, as long as there's no auto pwn scripts, we haven't seen anybody who like one click solves something. Right. That would be embarrassing as an organizer. You could see Starbucks there. You had the uh, this, uh, the mitigations of the binary. You well, they're looking at win right now too. They've, there's a, a function called win. It looks right. like so. This one has a built-in win. This might be very, very quick. Did they, what, I can't see that top line on theirs. Uh, what is that right there, that, the long line? The shell, long line is a shell, shell, that's shell code. Okay. And then you have some uh, kind of like long sequences of some characters, then sending one command and then this like payload. Um, they are trying to run, this doesn't seem to be working quite yet. Um, let's check in with organizers quickly. Yep. They are doing some reversing of the, this function, renaming some variables, taking, you know, making sense of what's going on. Um, so, uh, so I d no, this so this function does have uh, some compression in it. So there's a compression and decompression uh, algorithms, which that's where the bug lies, and that's uh, what they've got to deal with. At least the original one. I assume that's still true. I'm actually curious. Uh, we'll watch them and we'll we'll figure it out and see how it goes. I sometimes I like knowing, and sometimes I like not knowing. Yeah, I think yeah, like, yeah. You know, there's just like a different feel. Yeah, it's kind uh, of exciting, like the you know, seeing uh, 
what, what's going on. But we can clearly see here that they are definitely putting together some payload consisting of like two different bytes, like a long sequence of one of them and another long sequence of another one of them. Maybe this is unrelated to the compression uh, uh, function, I mean, if that's it, still in place. So uh, there, the, the compression implementation does, uh, yeah, being able to control whether something is highly compressible or highly mm -hmm. uncompressible is, is absolutely something that um, seems likely. And, and it depends on the implementation, right? Like, is this a run length encoding? Is this, you know, there's a lot of different yeah. compression screen schemes. And I am actually curious. Um, I suspect if we look at the official hint that we've got queued up for this one, it would probably be something like the name of the compression algorithm, uh, because that probably makes it easier um, uh, to, to, to land what they're doing. So, I'm, I mean, it does seem like Starbug is really, like, interacting a lot. Yeah. Right? They're, like they're, they're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, Sometimes you want to be thinking and sometimes you want to be writing. And I think Starbucks is more on the writing and the organizing is more on the thinking side uh, at the moment. Um, and, yeah. and yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of people just sit and stare at a binary, mm, yeah. think about it, and then just write out a, a complete exploit like yeah. in one shot. So uh, You see now organizers uh, switching out of IDA, uh, going into... Uh, and and, the, and uh, in fact, organizers uh, player did specifically ask us for libc. So in the previous round, you may have remember um, that was one of the rounds where they were trying to run the binary that was provided, and because they didn't have the libc, they weren't able to run it. So we did actually update all of the rest of the challenges, and and we now do include like the libc, even if they don't need it to exploit it. It might just make it easier for them to run it. We don't want them to have to fiddle around and find the exact VM and exact environment. Right. Uh, I want to switch back over to Starbucks and see now some of the debugging uh, that they're doing here. Um, again, they have a like, partial salt script uh, in the works. Uh, we see this call to RDX, and RDX looks like a very controlled value. That's not like a reasonable uh, like function pointer value. Yeah, so yeah. they have, but it did look a little bit messed up. So it looks like you know they have like kind of control I of mean, it. Like, if there's compression, yeah. and maybe if it's post or pre, you know, that, that yeah, is going yeah. uh, to throw it off potentially. And maybe maybe this is, you know, could be a situation where they might have gone a bit too fast into the, like, trying to go for Instead it. Instead of actually just understanding yet yeah, fully yes. what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Uh, but, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we, that's, uh, we, we will have the hindsight. We, we, we won't know uh, until yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's always hindsight 2020, for sure. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so back over on the organizers, um, we have they have been throwing together a script now. So they've actually got the start of a script. Um, and they're running locally. Yep. You can see here that uh, Pi is disabled on the yep. uh, binary. So uh, if they're going to do, uh, there was a win function, right? So they there will know exactly yep. where in memory this win function is located. At least I think helpful. there was one. I saw I saw one that was called mm -hmm. Win. So I don't know if somebody had named it before we looked at it, but I, I do remember seeing Win on uh, Starbucks screen earlier. Oh so. yeah, yeah. I also saw it there. So yes. So uh. I think it, I I don't yeah. Like I said, I haven't I haven't actually analyzed this version, the final version of the binary. So yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm seeing you know we're in the create story. Oh, this is the first person who's used Ida debugger. Oh. I'm actually really curious. Okay, Everybody let's, else let's has consistently this. been using so. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember uh, New Yorkers uh, doing this before when they came up for a previous round, uh, but they're using the decompiler together with the debugger right. to set breakpoints, like essentially in the source code. Which is, I mean, it's a nice experience when it works well. Yeah, that's the thing. Like in principle, I mean, it's kind of obvious that you should like integrate the the like disassembler and the the, the debugger. Uh, in, in practice, historically, like that hasn't worked very it, well. People don't do it very often. No. Yeah. Uh, and so that people resort to an external uh, debugger, sometimes using some kind of bridge between the two uh, to various uh, degrees of success. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of little like uh, sync scripts that would, you know, maybe they just sync, sync the instruction pointer. Yeah. Um, I have used the IDA debugger a few times, uh, kind of successfully, but it's still not uh, like in my standard uh, yeah. playbook. Yeah, that's why, that's why I remarked on it, because I don't know a lot of people for whom that's their default choice, especially I feel like in the CTF community. I mean, yeah. I feel like. Like Jeff and you know, you know Peta, and I, although I haven't actually seen like LODB, I'm waiting for LODB to. Yeah, oh, we're gonna switch over to Starbucks because yeah, go ahead. They are connecting to the remote service already. 
Uh, it might I mean, you know, I know, it I might know. be that they're just validating that like some of their, so that's a really good thing. Like if you're developing your exploit locally to sometimes just like check off uh, partial steps to see that yep. you're seeing kind of Still the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like if you're doing a leak locally, making sure that like you can actually do, oh no, no with this, they are doing the remote shell and it's, whoa, yeah, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> well that done. That was fast. Speed Congratulations, run Starbucks. Indeed. Good work, Starbug. Um, Jordan, would you want to do a little bit of outro here? And uh, I'm going to go and just Absolutely. check out the players. That was fantastic. Yeah. So, well done, Starbug. That was fastest match on record. Uh, good work on that one. So, we said we made that one a little bit easier. It clearly was easier indeed. Heartbreaking to lose. But at the same time, we now have our first team that's going to make it on to the, uh, the next round. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and get back to the intermission. We have a little bit of longer break now. We'll be back in about 45 minutes with our next round. Uh, and we'll see you all then. And i got to figure out how to clear out this winter thing. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.
Welcome back to match two of round two. We are here, uh, Cypherdex and Carl. Hi. Zay two. two. Yep. Yes. Uh, Jordan, I don't know. We keep changing. Yeah. Uh, Maple Mallard Magistrates versus Shellfish. Let's go ahead and count this off right away. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, let's check them out. They're both downloading their challenge and they're going. So. Each team was told this was a heap challenge. Yes, and that's, uh, I mean, that's not false. It's true. Yes, but, but it's, it's not what they expect. No, exactly. Yeah. Typically, and when you talk about heap challenges, we're talking about like attacking the like glibc allocator, like the metadata structures right. there. This is not going to be that difficult, I think. Yeah, I feel a little bit mean, especially, mm. we didn't do this intentionally. No. But it's especially somewhat mean because Shellfish, uh, in fact, particular, the Shellfish player who is here is the author of the how to heap GitHub repo. Yeah, which is a great resource. It's fantastic. It describes all of the. There's just a myriad of number of heap attacks, and they're all fantastic. Uh, none of which are going to be used <laughs> here today. <laughs> yeah. And this, this was not intentional. Like we did random assignments of teams and challenges. It just so happened this way. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the challenges that, uh, that yes. the teams are looking at. So let's uh, switch over to. Oh my God! Both of them are having white. Uh, both white eyes. Uh, and oh, I, we didn't fix the names. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, new, new rule. New rule is that uh, teams <laughs> must use different theme colors to match their <laughs> their theme colors. Oh, we right? can create like custom uh, we color themes. We, we can do filters. We can do color filters. No, no, we can oh, like, like custom color themes for yeah. like you know Ida, Binary Ninja, and yeah, so that's on true. for the live CTF. Uh, anyway, um, so we are looking at the Mighty Ducks uh, or MMM here, uh, and they're looking into you know uh, disassembling, uh, renaming some variables, just checking out what's going on. Well, and the program was called Stack. Right, yes. or stacks? Stacks. stacks, stacks, plural, right, stacks, because there are, mo I guess, multiple yeah, stacks. Yeah, like, I think you can, like, create a stack, and then you can add and remove things, and if I remember correctly, it's some kind of, like, over or underflow thing. Maybe you can, like, pop more elements that there are in the stacks, or something like this, I think, but we will we will see about that. Uh, the repo that you're looking for, uh, Diego, is how to heap, H-O-W underscore T-O underscore heap, H-E-A-P. Is it just how... A Digit two, and then he. Oh, it might be the digit. Uh, yeah. I just saw it on the screen. They both both teams okay. actually pulled it up if earlier. If you Google shellfish how to heap, you will find it. And it's on GitHub. Yeah, it'll yes. be it'll be right up. I'm sure somebody else will find it in chat uh, and paste it in there. Yes. Because uh, it is it is quite common. This is this is a good matchup though though because we've got two very well known teams right. You've got basically the the PVP and and, and friends. Uh, and shellfish, of course, has been around for a very long time. Yeah. So wow. like this is this is a I, I'm excited as we move into these these top matches. Definitely, we can see here on shellfish um, screen that they. Oh are wow, that's quite a little bit of. Yeah, they had already. Yeah, they came prepared. Oh, did they like pre? bake like a bunch of useful gadgets in each type of libc uh, or something. Because that's uh, that's good that's for actually brilliant. Good I, for I, yeah, yes. I'd never. That's that's fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a little bit trying to see what they're doing. Uh, although I will say they were a little worried when we told them it was a it was a, a heap challenge, mm. and it was only forty five minutes to solve it before sudden death. They were like, "That's not even possible. Like heap challenges take longer than that. Like how what, how are we supposed to do that?" So well, just wait. You know, you'll see. So hopefully, that was a little bit of a hint. Yes. But, uh, that, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll see. The question here from uh, Endeavor. Wait, is this PPP versus Shelfers? Yes. Or, I mean, it's technically MMM, uh, which where is PPP plus friends. Endeavor is, oh, he's right over there. He's yeah. Little, oh, that's why he's got headphones on. Because so oh. Endeavor is also a Nautilus. Yes. Um, and uh, so he's uh, working on the, the main game over there and apparently has time just to watch us. So he, things must be going really good in the oh, main yeah, game if he's definitely. over here listening to us. Uh, let's switch over Smooth. to uh, MMM. Mighty and Ducks. Oh, and I will point out, too, this is actually, I think, the well, we haven't had a whole lot of repeat matches, right? This is only the second match of round two, and we have already seen a substitution. So our player for MMM is not the same player that we had for round right. one. We so had, uh, I don't know if we scared uh, them with yeah. Robert came in for round one. Robert Chow, Neo Neo, legendary CTF uh, player. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, won his match, and now they have swapped him out they for someone else. And I don't know if we scared them with Heap, and so I, I do feel bad but again we, we decide the name descriptions independent of the teams and yeah uh, that you it, know it might also be like a strategic move like you know maybe uh, robert is working on something in the other part of the cdf right now that he it was, was more for critical that. like who do you send like right uh, well i know i know a, a couple of teams too even debated strategies of like do we just listen as long as we make it out of the first or second round mm. we don't want to fight and get for the top spots so i was worried about that that was before the points were available though so yeah, I'm so do they all know? They, they do know that the points. The teams were given point totals, 
and the the number one team wins four thousand points. Oh wow, that's yes. uh, that's significant. So it is a lot of for points. comparison, that's almost the difference between last and first place. No, no, no. I that's, mean, that's about seven thousand, but you know, yeah, six, yeah. Six, I mean, like, but okay, it's it's so from from tenth place up to it's it's from, a lot. Yeah, now, by the end of the game, there will be more points. There's more challenges. Sure, but it is a lot of points. Yeah. So it it is enough to definitely move the scoreboard. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll give you a scoreboard update. We want to check on the teams and make sure we're not not forgetting them. We're already seeing interaction, uh, switching to a new stack. Uh, yes. So a small uh, exploit script in the works. There, yeah, trying out some interaction with the program. Again, this is you know we talked about this before in the stream, but it's ver the typical situation where you might want to go for a strategy where you kind of build up these like abstractions in your exploit script, like yeah. you map different actions within the program to kind of like Just building functions. blocks, yeah. yeah, and then you can then call them in like whatever order you need, uh, which can then be very useful. Uh, there's some like initial. Uh, cost to doing that, like in, in terms of time investment, but uh, uh, like Jimbo is very efficient because you look at us, they've got like CR, DL, like two letter functions, oh, right? right? So it's like this is this lo truly looks optimized for speed where they're minimizing even the amount of like the names of the functions being called, right? If we switch uh, back to stream, please. Oh, we, might, we might be a little delayed, I think, on just on our, our monitor. Oh, okay, sorry, uh, we are. Uh, what I wanted to do was to switch over to Shellfish to look at their exploit script. Um, when you know we were talking about that, they had like pre-made like a bunch of gadgets and stuff. Um, I'm trying to see if they're doing like some you know actual stuff related to the challenge yet. Uh, I am not quite seeing it. It seems like they are messing around with gadgets, so they might have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Uh, hard to like. It feels like you wouldn't do that unless uh, you know. Uh, you have the other building blocks uh, you need, but yeah, hard to tell. So you can though see Shellfish looking a bit in the debugger here, uh, confirming some values here on the uh, some global variables. I think uh, something called stack, something called buff, um, and you know, trying to see I guess where different inputs and stuff end up, uh, and so on to to you know. Maybe you have some hypothesis about uh, this value might go in here, and then you do that in your exploit script, but then you want to verify in the debugger that things are actually behaving the way you're expecting to. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know one of the interesting things is it's really hard to make a challenge of exactly the same difficulty, uh, and so we just didn't try. Like it's it, we clearly have some challenges that we know are easier than others. And that's that's going to be the case, um, but what matters is they're fair in the sense that each round. Your opponent gets the exact same information, gets the exact same binary, they get told the exact same description beforehand. Uh, and so on any given binary, it may, in a given match, it may be easier, it may be harder, but you are going to go and prove your mettle in, in both of those situations against the person you're playing with. Although, again, we're talking about, these are some legendary CTF players that we're seeing kind of before us, and it is different to come and do this kind of an event uh, than it is to do a normal long-term CTF investigation, right? There's certainly skills, obviously there's a lot of overlap, but uh, you can definitely specialize in like a live CTF, quick punch style challenge, and not be as focused on the long-term stuff too. Yeah, no, totally. It's, uh, and we've seen like uh, multiple occasions where players have uh, you know, missed uh, crucial information in the challenges uh leading to you know not being able to solve them as fast and uh, these are like you know there are no beginners these are here. top tier yeah. these are absolutely s tier players every 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 single person playing in this event is an s tier like there's just no question right like yeah. these are all good teams yeah. to even get here and then these are the representatives the best representative from each of the teams yes. to come play so yeah there's no question i wouldn't stand a chance against any of these folks i, I i'm sure of that no it's uh it's uh, it's a bit scary uh, definitely. And like, you're also kind of, uh, you know, feeling the pressure, not only from the opponent, but from your own team. Like if, if you go up as your representative, you know, you're representing your team and like, you, you don't want to let your teammates down. It, it does look like we actually have another IDA debugger. So Jimmo over on uh, the Mighty Ducks is uh, setting breakpoints uh, in IDA using the remote debugger. So actually using the remote service to right. debug the Linux binary um, and 
uh, they're running into problems actually with that. So they tried to do the remote debugger, now they're trying to do a local process. Uh, this is actually a good example of where, honestly, just using your Pwn Doug and Jeff integration might have actually been faster. Yeah. Because um, we're seeing continued kind of kind of errors um, as a result, and and uh, you know, remote debugging can can be really uh, difficult too. There's a lot of, lot of wrinkles to it. But there we go. So it looks like we have a debugger. Thankfully, we get that that nice blue color in the background. So now we know they're debugging. Yes, and you see those. You saw those two breakpoints, and I think it was like. Jumping back and forth between those two breakpoints, probably a loop thing going on there as well. Um, yeah, um, I want to switch back quickly a bit to Shellfish again, looking a little bit at their debugger. You see that they're building these abstraction functions called like alloc, delete, next. So yep. uh, these are kind of like your your, your uh, primitive, your primitive operations in, in this like heap uh, interaction uh, yeah. thing. So and, and just for folks that maybe aren't even familiar, we, we should kind of cover what like a heap vulnerability typically looks like versus what like, you know, what we're expecting right. from them in this particular event. Totally. So um, normally, I, I mean, it, it, it's a broad concept, but normally when we're talking about heap uh, exploitation, we're talking about uh, one of the like mainstream allocators, like the glibc allocator or like the yeah. Windows uh, allocator. And, and these are the allocators when a program needs a piece of memory, and it doesn't even know maybe even in advance how big it's going to be. It can say on the fly like, "Hey, I need some memory. I need this much. Please give me some memory. Oh, I need more memory now. Give me some more memory." Right. And, and the, the program can do whatever it wants with that. Right. And the operating system typically only provides memories in like full pages, which is like usually way too much compared to what you need. So. Then you have an allocator on top of that, which is responsible for like chopping these pages up into smaller bits, handing it out to the program, like keeping track of them, doing the bookkeeping, if, like when the memory is freed up, like putting that back into the list of available stuff. And to do all that, it, it stores a whole bunch of metadata about the different memory regions and so on. And a lot of heap challenges are about performing sequences of like illegal heap operations to corrupt this uh, metadata about the allocated and free memory regions to cause some kind of like mismatch or confusion. For example, you might allocate uh, memory and get a pointer to something that's already allocated. So you have two pointers pointing to the same area. That's like one example of like an end result of this. Uh, that's a very like broad description of this. Oh, we missed it. Somebody commented it. Shellfish pulling an inspector gadget. <laughs> um, was this because there was an actual tool called Inspector Gadget, or uh, or do we miss something else? I, I wonder. Yeah, um, or maybe because they bring, you know. Oh, so we have some comments here. Uh, they have like a UAF uh, question mark. So U UAF stands for use after free. Uh, common uh, concept when yep. it comes to like uh, not necessarily only heap stuff, but typically sure. when we're talking heap uh, exploitation stuff. Yep. Uh, and to answer your question about Binary Ninja, yep, Binary Ninja also does have a remote debugger. Uh, it can support a couple of different styles of remote debugging too. Uh, but actually, I don't know if, in particular, it supports the the style of debugging being done on this challenge or not. I'd actually have to double check. Yes, checking over with uh, MMM, uh, they are. I mean, still not that much code written in their exploit script, right? I think I think they're still working it out. I mean, I think they built the the interaction primitives. They understand that there's something going on that they. I, I I have not seen anything yet that indicates to me somebody knows the volume yet. Yeah. Like I'm still waiting to see uh, some indication that they're they're gonna um, do that. And right now we're just they're creating things and using them. I mean they may in their head know, uh, but certainly from what we've seen in the code, uh, we're just seeing them understand it. Right. That's and I I don't know Connor. Does anger management have a remote debugger? That's a great question. Yeah. You you would know right. <laughs> <laughs> better than I would. Oh, uh, Connor is one of the um, Anger developers. Would, uh, Connor, would you say you work in Anger? I just I had to use the phrase. <laughs> I had to, to be able to like, to 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 use, to yeah, use the joke. I'm big fan of Anger. It's a binary analysis uh, framework. Um, you can use it for symbolic execution. And yeah. The stuff yeah, like a that. lot of automated program analysis, yeah. and there's a lot of research, a lot of cool research uh, concepts really that get cool. implemented on top of it. When that's it's from UC so uh, SB, right? Uh, I mean, sh so Shellfish, yes. uh, it, yeah, is, is broadly associated with it, um, and a lot of uh, uh, ASU folks as well. Actually, I think the majority of the work is, is actually over at ASU now, maybe. Okay. Um, but there's there historically it's been it's been USB UCSB now it's now it's I think 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 uh, ASU, uh, and thank you for that. Yeah, it's been 
it's been a wild amount of work just even getting the logistics going, but uh, yeah. so far so good. I have um, a lot of friends uh, here in Vegas. I have not met them. Nope. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of people that were like, sorry, we'll yeah. see you on Sunday, maybe. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so we, uh, you know, hope that we managed to bring you some uh, entertainment and education in these uh, streams. That's, that is the goal. And so I still haven't seen a debugger. Yeah. All right. So back in the ducks, we're still seeing creation. And I wonder if they're trying to hit a particular length size on these operations. So they're creating, creating, creating. And it is a little funny that we told them that the challenges uh, got a heap in it, mm. but the program name was Stacks. Oh yeah, that's uh, there's a little bit of running it because it, you know the stack in, in in when you're writing the code is like a stack of plates where you put stuff on it and then you pull it off in the reverse order that you put it on. Yep. And and so that's just a stack and it gets used a lot in in computer science programs, and it's probably the most common data source for a lot of types of storing of data. But then the heap is the 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 other one that gets used a lot for other types of data. So like they're kind of like different sort of, you know, regions of memory, but they're also different styles of exploitation. Yep. And we're just combining two of them. I mean, most programs use multiple, but like that were in fact drawing that comparison I think is I think it's funny. Yeah, it's a little bit funny, yeah. Definitely. I mean that's as an organizer, you are often trying to make a good joke. Really, that's the that's why we make challenges. Oh yeah, a lot of the challenges we uh, almost came up with the name first and then uh, figure out what the bug should be. Uh, there's no almost. It was one hundred percent done yeah. several times uh, <laughs> in this. Uh, okay, so we are Seeing some probing of uh, so mighty ducks. Yeah, so now we're looking at some probing of sizes, and they're attaching to the debugger. They want to actually look at the stack values. They were kind of pr running it over and over. Now it looks like they've stopped to take a look at it. So they were trying something, and based on the result that they were looking at, um, they're yeah they're going to have to set the type to get this dis displayed appropriately. Hit D a whole bunch of times and get that um, get that converted. Yeah. So they're following through their their results. We can uh, switch over to shellfish again. We're seeing that they they are naming. They're trying. Oh, to there we go. So they and they're oh. also in the debugger as well. Yes. And now this is interesting. Bmap found a unique crash. Oh, are they fussing? They are fussing the program. Uh, that's one hundred percent a great strategy. Honestly, <laughs> with something this simple, with the menus are this this common. That's yes. not terrible. I would love to see a fuzzer solve one of these. No, I mean, I, that would make me happy. I think it's awesome. I just think that, like, you know, you would have to be fairly comfortable with a uh, fuzzing uh, to be able to, like, you know, set that up quickly enough for it to be, uh, you know, wor worth well, the investment. Well, and, and beyond that, right, the trade-off with fuzzing is that you, you get to a crash very quickly, yeah. but you don't necessarily get to understanding to be able to turn that crash into an exploit. Now, right. with a binary this small, maybe that's not a problem. So I think that would be fantastic. I'm like, I'm actually, yeah, there we go, test crashes. So it looks yeah, like... Yeah, so they're going to triage the crash now. So they're trying to, like, take awesome. the input that caused the crash. Oh, I'm, I'm like, I'm all in for this. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, this this will be great. I'm gonna go ahead and catch up on. Uh, we should comments. have almost had uh, uh, Brandon for uh, you know on commentary for this. He would also have. Uh, oh, liked this we're missing out. So Gamoza yeah. is gonna be joining us for the next uh, the last two streams of the day, and uh, he is a a world class expert in fuzzing. That would have been that would have been super fun. I'd love to uh, hear what he would have to say about it. Um, so yeah. we'll yeah we'll, we'll we'll see what his thoughts are. No, I love it. We so we've seen like a, you know a range of tools being used uh, throughout this tournament like. We're seeing a fuzzer here. We saw uh, C3, the constraint solver, being yep. used. We even saw like an online Sudoku solver at some point. Uh, yeah. You know, we have a bunch of different gadget finder tools. They've been like ROP finders. Uh, uh, yeah, ROP, RP plus yeah. plus. Uh, yeah, ROP gadgets. All of those. A lot uh, of pwn tools. Like different debuggers. Different. Uh, yeah. You know, de so decompilers. It definitely says something. Like, you know, while there are kind of like mainstream choices. There are definitely variations of, of like what you can use, uh, and uh, yeah, all of these skilled players having having slightly different preferences, using slightly different tools, and uh, still being able to like you know perform at this uh, yeah. level. I think we see a lot of like variety in like their text editor, but not so much in their debuggers, right? right There's really yeah. only two. They, yeah. They've used most have uh, all predominantly been GDB. Yep. Um, and then you've had a couple that are using using Ida's yep. uh, debugger. We have not seen the binary ninja debugger yet. Not as a debugger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've not seen. I mean, Gator now has a debugger as well. Um, right. 
but we haven't we haven't seen that one out. But I mean, Radar has a debugger as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it does as well too. Okay, we yeah. actually, yeah, we haven't seen any Radar uh, users yet. There, I will mm. say, Radar users are fun to watch uh, when they know it really well. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I, you know, to not to say anything offensive. But oh, look, I, I saw it. somebody just showed us a screenshot of the shellfish team up in the room. So uh, here, put us, put us on camera. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's wave hi. Hi to all the shellfish folks up uh, enjoying. Sorry for sniping the rest of your poning that you're doing for the, the event. Uh, but let's go back here. Let's, let's give them some extra time on, uh, on uh, Kyle's screen just to. Uh, yeah, I want to see that, some, to, that sweet, sweet fussing that. action. Yeah, let's oh. see if those fussing are, have gotten any results. We have a. Sig trust, yeah. Um, so they were checking it in the debugger. Little bit difficult to follow right now what's going on. They are uh, trying to write a couple of these operations, inspecting some memory. They have put some breakpoints in memory to trying to analyze this. Um, maybe we should go over to. Uh, yeah, so I've been, been watching uh, Mighty Ducks, and uh, and again to be clear, the official name is. Something along with M's and Mallard in it. Mallard, and Magistrate, Maple. No, Maple, Mallard, Magistrate. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I like Mighty Ducks, so that's 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 what I've been saying. Um, yeah, or the mm bops, <laughs> <laughs> or the mm mm, -mm <laughs> song. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. we go. Okay, okay. This looks better, right? So we just saw. Oh, and they that doing... was interesting. So we're actually seeing targeted uh, make an immediate value. Okay. This looks like we actually have something interesting now. Wow, that's uh, so we went from well, looking at the GOT, which is yeah. very interesting. You might something you might want to overwrite. It, uh, I would assume then that this is a no railro um, challenge. And just to like you know explain what that is, uh, one of the mitigations that are available is something called railro or relocation read only, in which the uh, uh, GOT table uh, can be made uh, read only at lo load time, which prevents these kind of like GOT overwriting uh, exploits that are, um, you know, it's quite a nice uh, technique. Um, but uh, I, as I said, I don't think we have this enabled for this challenge, which does allow you to uh, overwrite these GOT entries. And uh, what you then have to do is just to make that the function that was originally in that position have it being called. Uh, so you might, you might say you have like a Sterling, for example, in your GOT entry, you replace it with system, and then the next time some, something calls Sterling, it instead calls system with the same argument. So that's a quite, quite nice way of doing like, exploitation. Uh, yeah. This is, this, is like, this is really fun to watch. Like I'm, I'm really enjoying just uh, not having to talk for a second while you explain Rara so yeah. I could watch uh, uh, Jimbo do this. This has been, this has been pretty cool. Um, so... Yeah, what the building these primitives up uh, live. Yeah. So did you say we have uh, Jinmo playing? For I believe so. Yes, I believe we have. Jinmo, oh right. Um, uh, who's also like legendary CTF top, player. Top, top tier. Top. Yep. Um, no so, question. So uh, back, I used to run uh, something called pony racing uh, on my YouTube channel, which is like similar to this. We used to have four contestants going heads up, and Jinmo was on one of the episodes and. Like usually, our episodes used to last like sixty to ninety minutes. Yeah. Uh, he was done within ten. I think it was. You said it was the fastest solve ever. No, no. I, like, right? like usually in the beginning of the episodes, we yeah. do like a round where we go like uh, uh, through each of the you contestants. Just kind of introduce everything. Introduce and, yeah. the contestants. Look at like what their tech stack looks like. Yep. Yep. When we kind of like went the full round and come came back to Jinmo, like he was always all, all, already like Almost. halfway through this yeah. solve script, or like two thirds through yeah. his solve script. Yeah, you're like, all right, we can't go anywhere else because we're going to no. miss it. No, so it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. Like, mo usually we stopped when someone solved it, but for this one, we just continued until so another like person. other people have yeah. a chance to yeah, 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 keep yeah, working yeah. on it. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, you, just, you can tell the, the, the speed there is, is really impressive. So I think... Um, I think that might even out the advantage that shellfish might have have thought they were having with heaps, but I, I still really like that fuzzing. I mean, it's entirely possible that a fuzzer gets you to a workable, close enough to an exploit that you could land it. Right. Um, so, so we'll see. We've got a couple of new. We can switch over to um, shellfish actually. Yeah. And see that they are again doing some debugging. Um, they. Uh, are trying to run these different commands, so interacting with the program, um, trying to do some addition, and it says that this command has not been implemented yet, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. 
right. So they are adding elements to the to the stack with those additions. Um, yes. Here again, we saw a glimpse of like their fuzzer uh, output, and um, yeah. It's, I, uh, it's it's interesting to me just watching demo like the number of times um, that there was a like decimal value returned where the, it was copy it command run python enter hex parenthesis number paste it, it just feels like something that should be like a macro or a hotkey right 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 um, but it was still done faster than I could have made a, a macro hotkey I think because it's just very very quick uh, to to watch that so oops. so setting. Doing some more in interaction with the program. Oh, uh, that's funny. They both they both literally wrote the exact same line of code at the exact same time. Uh, split change to a split view here. They were both receiving for the same, the yeah. same pattern. Oh, this I wonder like because they're kind of doing uh, different approaches uh, when it comes to kind of like finding the vulnerability. It seems, but I wonder if like despite this, they are uh, pretty close. I mean, uh, it's. I, I couldn't really tell you. I, no, just looking at the source code that they were, I think it was just a coincidence they happened to be in like the mm. same uh, pattern that they were matching on the inputs. Uh, just sort of like one of those coincidences. But uh, farewell. Uh oh, win. Farewell. Oh, hold on a second. What was this? Okay, read, handle command, handle equation. Yeah, let's go over there to, to, to MMM and see. Uh, you're seeing something there on their screens? So. Just watching. I mean, uh, just even trying to keep up. I will say the downside of when somebody is so fast is that you can barely follow along as they're as they're doing things, switching between their exploits. Um, yeah. So we've got a couple of things going on. There is a, an S trace going on, watching what's going through the program. The um, uh, yeah, this is this is like <laughs> I'm gonna need to. We're gonna need to have uh, live overflow do like a play-by-play -play of this, like slowed down and recap so that we can kind of follow what's going on because this is this is like so hard to even kind of kind of follow. Yeah, we had some comments in the chat. Someone said it would be nice to have like the contestants do like a walkthrough after. I, I would love to hear. I that. agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're, not, we're probably not gonna get their time though because they're in the middle no, of DefCon. Exactly. Like it's still like we're already you know. Asking them to do this, uh, and they get a lot of points. They, they, they do, they do, right? A, and I, I mean, I've heard positive feedback, right? But you know, you should only push it so much. We right? don't want to, yeah, yeah. overstay our welcome. Um, yeah. But yeah, actually, that's a good point. So we have uh, live overflow. Uh, you know, um, famous uh, content creator within the security space. Uh, he is. Uh, I don't know if he's online currently. Maybe he's he, might be, he, might be he should be asleep yes. at this point. Yeah. I hope he is. <laughs> uh, but if not, hi, hi. Um, but uh, he has been doing like kind of watch parties and um, uh, like recaps of the matches and then doing some analysis and stuff. And uh, uh, I've heard some really positive feedback on that as well. So uh, really good to have that as well. So I think this uh, this is a point at which where we were if if we felt like they weren't making progress, we were considering hints. Uh, just. Looking at it, I I think we're 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 chugging along. Uh, but I will kind of ask our production booth, who has a like a, a Sol script to kind of compare to potentially, and, and look at like what the right right answer is. Are we? You think we need a hint, or are we thinking we're? It's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, I think um, they don't look stuck. They no. don't look uh, like they're going to dead ends. They look like they're just solving it um, so far. So uh, I'm. Uh, I'm at this point happy to just to kind of let them go. Um, we, I, I will say, we have had our sudden death uh, binaries ready to go, and we haven't had to use them yet. Um, but we, we have, we have considered like the end of today is probably the most likely time where we might, might uh, need to, to use one of those, just because some of these binaries are, are difficult, and we don't have time. So tomorrow we have the, the chance for the semifinals and the finals. Yeah. Uh, to. Um, to I'm spend a little bit more time on them. I'm just now noticing one thing is that uh, Jinmo is using Windows. Yep. Um, and uh, that's not something that we've seen too much of. Um, there's been, I think there's been a couple, but not a, uh, yeah, not a predominant. I would no. say it has been Linux and Mac pretty even. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of both of those. Uh, and then a couple yeah. of Windows, but certainly not the most common. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Windows has certainly been a popular, like especially with like, Reverse engineering uh, scene. Mm, uh, Windows yeah. have been pretty yeah, big. The crack me yeah. And the, yeah, that's that's probably true. Uh, pretty big there. Uh, like a lot of people there working on you know maybe like you know game uh, game hacking, game cracking stuff. Um, yeah. 
but especially with the addition of uh, oh, WSL, WSL, yeah, uh, the Windows uh, popularity has definitely increased within like the hacking. Yeah, process. I think. I mean, I think Windows became a much more viable platform for doing this kind of work. Yes, when you could just like run a real terminal and get a real, you know. Um, we also have uh, Ginvel, uh, also like famous CTF uh, player who. At least for also many, many years, run, ran uh, Windows. he used yeah. Windows as his primary I think he OS. did actually switch kind of recently. He, he was considering, I don't know if he did or not. Or? I think he has since switched to like Linux for his main OS, but yeah, yeah he was like a prime example of, of like, oh, Windows. It sounds like Live Overflow is still, is still live. Okay, you know. uh, yeah. Um, good evening. Good evening. Well, <laughs> yeah, we look forward to, to chatting more and seeing uh, if, if you can help us untangle some of these, some of these exploits in, in hindsight as we, you know, ask the, uh, the participants and get a little more insight to what they were doing and we have time to kind of analyze them. Because it is it is difficult uh, when you're trying to follow along live as it happens, so. Yeah, we had live overflow as well on commentary here earlier today. Yeah, um, so if you missed that, make sure to go back. You can rewatch the start of the stream uh, yeah. right now. Uh, also, if you, are, you, watch, if you didn't watch yesterday, uh, yesterday we had a, a change of resolution halfway through and it split the stream. So the day one video that was originally uploaded only was part two. It only had like the end of the stream, the last match, I believe, the last of the four. Um, but we've since uploaded part one. So if you check our channel, you'll actually see the first three matches are also online as well. At some point when we've recovered, uh, we'll probably go back and add chapter marks to make sure we, we timestamp them so you know, you'll be able to more quickly navigate to each individual match. Uh, but it's gonna, we're going to need some recuperation time. I don't think there's any question uh, after, after this weekend. Oh, yeah. So um, you can see here shellfish uh, still, or I mean, again, doing uh, debugging, looking at these um, global variables. I think there are global variables, the stack and the, and the buffer, um, considering these different actions that you can take uh, within the program. And like, um, you know, see here, looking at the, uh, oh, creating this uh, struct here within IDA. So this is like, you know, recovering the uh, different data structures that have been used in memory, uh, trying to figure out like what they look like and how they are um, evaluated or used in memory uh, really helps your understanding and helps you find where the bug or bugs uh, are. Um, it's a very important step of like reverse engineering uh, or like analyzing your binary and trying to understand what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to take me, I mean, I'm going to want to really take some time to even just to break down the, the tooling that, that different teams have been using uh, as we watch, uh, watch yeah. which, which things they're using and watch, you know, watching even how, like, for example, the Mighty Ducks are uh, attaching the debugger in, you know, into the VM. And I keep seeing all these, like, permission errors that just, like, blow through. They're blow, blow, blowing by them so quickly. Yep. So you can see here, MMM running the program and did oh they're just, just deleting their IDA database oh, having some tooling issues maybe yeah i'm not sure if and yeah they're restarting the debugger they had problems with the debugger and man so fast okay new new rule we need a jinmo mode on the stream <laughs> just it slow. just slows it down that's right that's yeah. right all it does is run it like half speed for a little bit so we can kind of catch up uh, to be able to 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 watch it that is super fun to watch I feel a little bit like probably what like my my parents feel like when they see me, mm, you know, like yeah. use a tool on a computer that I know well. Or like, like I understand some of these concepts. I, I think I know what they're doing, but just trying to follow the specifics can be uh, can be challenging. Oh, it's crazy. Sometimes you just like you just sit back and enjoy the ride. Here. Like, um, yes. So again, working with the IDA debugger. Um, it's, it would be interesting to like try to, you know, gauge the the progress of the players here, but it's it's kind of different. It's really difficult yeah, to yeah. do. So now I will say, okay, we should absolutely. I think we're we st knew what time we started. It was only maybe five minutes later. Yeah. So I think we're we're about thirty two minutes into it. So now is definitely hint territory. Yep. Um, if we want to try to give them a hint, um, so let's let's see if uh, we can come up with a good hint. Yes. Um, for this particular one, and I think the author is actually over there now so yeah so uh, maybe uh production can work with the that's i think that's happening over there i think that's what they're doing okay uh see if we can come up with a good a good hint for it that that we can give right. them out and let me prepare our fancy hint system 
otherwise known as a piece of paper that we write hints on and we split it to write the same message to both teams. Yeah. That is our you know, I had, uh, I've been building some of the infrastructure here and I had like some, you know, interesting ideas for, oh, okay, how can we like send a message to both the players at the same time? And that, you know, in the end, we didn't have time and it's like, yeah, let's do paper slips. But the challenge deployment, the solution, that, that stuff is working, which is, you right. know, the main... You know, we went for uh, the, the most uh, important stuff first, right? Yep. And then, uh, you know, we can see uh, in future iterations of this, what kind of like extra stuff, we, how we can improve this. Uh, and, uh, you know, like if you uh, viewers, you know, if you have any suggestions for uh, how, you know, how you think this could be improved further, uh, feel free to like post it in the chat or like at us at, uh, on Twitter. We have a, a live CTF Twitter account um, where we've been posting a little bit. Oh, yeah, I don't think we actually put it on the page because it's at live CTF uh, org, I think, right? Oh, okay. I, I think it's actually at live CTF org. Yes. Um, if I'm remembering correctly. But I'm actually going to go over and talk to production real quick and get it. Do a, that. Get I'll uh, keep going here. We're going to go over to Shellfish because I saw some more sweet fussing action, and we always want an in on that. Um, so they're looking into the crashes. We can see here that they are uh, wanting to iterate through all their crash examples and kind of try to see. Uh, I'm just testing them out, I think, and seeing how if they can recreate the crashes. Um, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see here, and then and trying to run a crash. They had the wrong uh, file. Sorry, they had the wrong path to the example. Uh, trying to get all their files sorted out. You know which which one is wh where. Uh, but here they had a um, you know a sysmalic assertion. Uh, so this has caused a crash. Uh, you know, but here's another one. It's a sig abort. Uh, there's a uh, pop EBP instruction that tried to do something that it shouldn't, and we had a crash on that. Um, so that's a little bit what's going on in the fussing. So let's go ahead and bring up uh, the full screen view, like the actual true, true full screen. Yeah, we're gonna go of for each of the teams just for a second. Clean, uh, clean view. There one. we go. So we're gonna pull this, and this is actually gonna let our uh, our production crew. A little bit more easily uh, hone in on on these these solve scripts, and we've got the challenge author behind the scenes who's going to look at it and see if there's a good hint that we can give, just to make sure we we know where teams are at. Yeah, again, I I have less of a awareness of this one too, so I don't know what the what the answer is either. We'll find out, um, or it may be that they're just really close and we just let them go, and they're gonna, you know, I, this is this is one of those where I'm at any moment we could get a solve, and I would have I I really don't know. I can't tell. Uh, certainly, if we get something like, you know, we can see a function point over right, we might get a hint like last time. Uh, but they certainly don't look like they're out of ideas <laughs> in terms of what they're doing. I just don't know if... So they've got a pointer to free, calculating offsets. I, you could see some... Extra, what's, what's it called? Make jump? The make, function? make immediate. Make, make. make immediate, okay. So uh, uh, trying to... Put the value. What was the address that we're looking up? Uh, the address was the the relative offset of free, I believe. Okay. Um, from from the base, it looked like what they were what they were calculating. So I think that's what what the Mighty Ducks are doing. Yeah, here minus the address, right? So calculating offset calculation. So I use I use that actually in Binary Ninja a lot. The whole like here um, property. Uh, which Ida has as a, as a function, but the same kind of thing that you could just save the current address, navigate somewhere else, and then calculate the difference between the two. Uh, really, really trivially, just kind of up enter. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and see. That was uh, one of our players. Let's switch over to the shellfish uh, yep. full one and take a look at what their solution is too. And then I'll go uh, back and as, as you kind of keep an eye on these two, I'll, I'll check with production, see what we're thinking on, on him. Yes, yeah, so here we see a whole lot of null bytes from uh, shellfish. In the debugger, uh, they're inspecting this uh, failed assertion in the in the heap, uh, trying to figure out like exactly what kind of thing was corrupted, what they like can control, and how to work with that. Um, it looks like they're using this function called heap info, so it's printing out. So they, these like uh, metadata structures I was talking about earlier within the. Uh, uh, allocators, you have uh, some uh, utilities here to like parse those and kind of like display 
the different uh, lists and stacks and stuff that uh, the allocator itself is making use of. And you can then use that to see like what what here can I maybe like corrupt or what values have I been able to control. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's um, uh, what's going on there. And we can see again, you know, they're trying things, different things over and over again, making small adjustments, running it again, putting some breakpoints in the malloc and free functions to try to figure out when things are allocated and freed up again. Um, so this is important to like see the order of, of operation that's going on within your, and then this corresponds to your, uh, you know, exploit script and what you're trying to do and that that's actually happening in your, um, uh, program in the debugger that you see those actions happening uh, so uh, <coughs> sorry about that um, yeah it's uh, so that's what's going on with shellfish uh, we can try to switch back to MMM again but uh, you know as we said before it's going very fast, so it's a bit tricky to figure out exactly what's going on, but you have this helper function, it's called make uh, IMM, so make immediate value. So this is used, I guess, to put these values in somewhere in memory on a, in an appropriate uh, place with the idea that these are gonna be used within the corruption, uh, like the payload. <laughs> um, so, can see again they're like attaching the debugger using the, the id ida uh debugger to analyze this program and modifying their their oh we can see now they're putting their uh uh sh uh, oh, oh oh that looks like they have a, uh, oh my god let's see do they have a working uh that, that looked like a shell they're copying the ip import we might see them going for a solution here uh they they are they have a remote exploit working they're running the submitter and they need to run it. Yes, there they have it. They are winning. That's impressive. We have a win from Jinmo from MMM. They won the match. Really impressive performance. Uh, really great by both the players. Uh, this was a uh, really impressive match to see. We will be going to an intermission. Uh, as I said, check out Live Overflow's stream if it's doing a recap. We will be back uh, on the hour, so in about 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I'll see you in a bit.
Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to Live CTF. We are in round two, match three of four. We have only one more uh, left in this round. And uh, we have, let's get, let's get through the countdown right away. Let's let the team get going and then we'll do the rest of the explanation of what's going on. So five, four, three, two, one, go. Well, I'm trying to get a clap. Nobody's going to clap yet. Oh, so uh, welcome back everyone. Carl is not with me, but I do have Falk on the line. You might know him as Gamozo. Woo! Yeah. So we don't have video for our guest commentators. I apologize, everyone, for that. But that's fine, because you'll see our video anyways. We're going to be looking at the teens most of the time. Uh, Falk, why don't you uh, tell people, like, where they may have seen you before? Or what you, like, because you're, uh, you know, I think you're pretty popular at this point. You gotta... <laughs> yeah, apparently I am. So <laughs> my name is Falk. Uh, I go by Gamozo. I stream on Twitch. I stream random hacking things. And I'm super excited to be here. And... Looking at some CTF action. It's been uh, maybe five or seven years since I've done a CTF, so I can't wait to see uh, see what the new state of the art is up to. Well, and and you were one of the original people on a live CTF. Like I think one of the very first ones with GeoHot. I was. It was like I, you and was him, that right? when I went heads up uh, against GeoHot and I, he completely slaughtered me? You did. It was there it was, was some hilarious. weird smack talk. Yeah. There was some serious smack talk. I watched it. At the, I, yeah, I was there when it was being set up. I think it was fantastic. Uh, we all had a lot of fun. So. Oh, another Binja user. I'm so excited. All right, hold on. We got to go to... Well, let's go take a look at SourCloud. SourCloud is one of our Binja users who made it on, so I, of course I'm going to go check out their, their screen first. Um, but uh, this, this particular challenge, I believe this was uh, Pac-Man, correct? So, Falk, if I told you the, the challenge was called Pac-Man, P-A-C-M-A-N, does that like what? What do you think about when you hear is that? This, is this is this an Arch Linux, by the way? It's not Arch Linux. No, Pack okay. is the package manager. That's that's one reasonable guess. <laughs> what else? Oh, it's, oh uh, it is a package manager. I see. Okay. Well, at least according but, to that, was that a was that a Windows uh, like like legacy I, theme okay. in that VM? There is a yes. There, I saw that too. I don't know what's going on with that one. That I, has to be Windows Seven, right? I that's the preferred hacking platform, I presume. But I okay. mean, yeah, I mean it. it so, if, so if you don't have mitigations on the host, then it makes it easier to, to test your stuff, I guess. It, it it is a package manager, but it's sorry, it's also it is a, also a pun on on it's an ARM binary. So oh okay. ARCH okay. has pack instructions, so I I think at least it's meant to be like a play oh, on words. Oh no, I see. I don't know if it's it's not it's not actual pack, but there is a pack like thing that they're going to encounter. Okay, so. I already saw the I already saw the manual coming up for ARM, which yeah. is always a good sign. It looked like they were looking up the intrinsic, which is interesting. That means they must be looking at the uh, IL or the decompilation. I can't remember which window I saw that in. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, if, if the the intrinsic is coming up, it's something that Binary Ninja is not actually handling. So it's just gonna just gonna show. Oh, my my glasses on. No wonder I can't see their screens. There we go. <laughs> That helps. Oh, and so we got. So just yeah, to give you a little bit of context. Uh, so and to catch up our audience as well, who may not have been been watching previously, these are like real fast matches, right? These are meant to be speed matches. Uh, this challenge uh, might be one of the bigger ones. So there's this is the challenge that we like. There's a there's a non-zero chance we go to sudden death on this one, uh, because the idea is that every round has to like basically keep within an hour, um, because we have just so many of these things to do, and so if the teams don't solve it in like 45 50 minutes we go to like this sudden death totally simple simple binary like separate binary we replaced the original one and say changed it go uh so we hope and so far we've made it through a whole bunch of rounds and nobody we haven't had to use the sudden death yet uh so it's it's a good trend we'd like to continue oh wait uh seg faults uh that's the wrong kind of seg fault they're trying to run Kimu and Kimu yeah. is just dying. Okay. <laughs> Although I'm glad I have uh, I have Falk on the line because you've done I would say a little bit with emulation. Uh, it's probably well, fair to a, say. a smidge here or there. It, whenever it, it it's a solution to a problem. It, it seems to me though that you often find it as a solution to many problems more so than most people. I I think at this point I just enjoy it, so I think I just bend the work to it. I don't yeah. know if I'm always using it correctly or if I'm just justifying my existence. But I mean, if it gets the job done, and you know, if, every, yep. if you, everything you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail, right? Like that's, uh, and and I will say you have solved some really really fun problems with it. So if people have not watched your Twitch uh, and or even some of your your check out your GitHub repo or your YouTube uh, videos, uh, they just absolutely should because you do some fantastic stuff. Uh, Ooh, so, okay. We've got some interesting things. We're trying to just get yeah. this binary up and running in Kimu, it looks like, from R3K. Yes. I don't know if that's how you say them. Reca the R3K. So, Reca, Reca Pig is the team name. Reca uh, Pig. Oh, Reca okay. Pig. Yeah, so the E's, you know, it's like least speak for, for an E. So we've got Reca Pig as oh. that team. And so I think, I'm trying to remember which, I mean, obviously, just even looking at the, the character set, uh, it's, a, it's a Chinese or, or Taiwanese team. Yeah, um, which is that, pretty crazy. It's it's very strange. I have not seen many like Chinese installations of like VMware Workstation. Seeing those yeah. menus that I'm so used to seeing yeah, in changed. a different language is actually fantastic. I, I love seeing that. It's There's just a... it's really a glance into someone else's work. This is I mean that's the best part about the live CTF being able to see different tooling, different workflows, different yeah, and, and we have a lot of international teams at finals this year. So there's a whole bunch of, uh, of teams from all over the world. In fact, uh, Sour Cloud uh, is from Germany as a predominantly German team. And so we've got, uh, you know, quite a, quite a mix, uh, which, is, which is, yeah, which is, which is pretty neat. So I s looking at them, Ooh. oh, we do have it running now, right? So if we're looking uh, I think in, so, yeah. in the VM, all right. So they got it working, which, and I know that teams were debating um, you know, hardware emulation, somebody had like a little, uh, like, um, uh, beagle bone, I think, uh, that they were considering, like, running it on. Uh, so people were kind of... Interesting. Kinda... So we've got some sort of a little script here. It looks like uh, exploit.py, it looks to be the name of it. There we go. Yeah, so we see a lot of these, and it's... It, oh, I missed it. Was that one um, calling uh, it pwn tools? Because it, it's it, predominantly, yep. yeah, the vast majority are all using, using pwn tools. So we're seeing yeah, a whole it looks bunch like they're those. launching an Eric 64 or a Kimu instance, and then they're remoting into it. I'm guessing that's, I guess they're using GDB or Pwn Tools for that connection. I'm not too familiar with Pwn Tools, to be honest. I actually don't know um, how it does the cross-platform stuff with, with Kimu. That's a good question. I've, I've also not used, I mean, I've used Pwn Tools, but, but not to do that before, so I'm curious. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to connect in with the debugger. Maybe I I don't know. I one of the one of the windows they had open was covering it up, so I was curious what port they were using. Yeah, well, I, I will say both teams, having looked at both of them now, are both running it right. So, relatively quickly, we've got like them actually. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you're watching chat. You've got some love in the chat. People oh. people are excited uh, to to <laughs> have you here. So I mean, we are too. We're we're also very very excited. <laughs> Um, I'm excited. I've got a I've got a great community somehow. Even even though we just you know just have fun and goof around, I I I'm very proud of my community. No, you haven't, we haven't an awesome had any community. drama, any no, weird issues. The, I just I can't keep up with it. You're so active, and you like people will just hang out and chill with you. It's it's fantastic. Every time I dip in there and like see it, it's just very chill. My chat wouldn't think I'm very active. They they don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> I go I go through three month disappearances. <laughs> At a time, and uh, but they hang around for you. They still, they still I know, stick with I it. I know, it's crazy. That's awesome. So, all right, so we've still got Binja up from Sour Cloud. So we're looking, but we are. So, so yeah. 
package blobs. So they're creating uh, blobs, and they're looking at the types of things that are built. So they're, they're, I would say they're in the like find the bug phase of this, right? So yes, most of our other challenges. I mean, we had just for for flavor, we had some other challenges that were like open any file in the file system and tell us what offset to write to. And so people would like open Proxel mem and just like <laughs> write all over it, right? Oh, wow, so, we're even naming things in here, which is pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, I know yeah. a lot of times when I would do CTFs, I would not name stuff. Yeah, we have seen a fair amount of folks that are actually pretty pretty diligent in like creating structures even uh, we've seen and, and actually really trying to do a good job of understand uh, what these things are doing. Oh, okay, I did just see if we look back over in Sour Cloud, um, there's just a whole bunch of A's, which, I mean, come on, you got to like... You, you got to try it. You, gotta, you yeah. never know if it works. You You're going to feel really bad that exactly. you didn't try it first. Like exactly. if, if you lose the competition to A's, that's not a good look. We actually missed you last the very last round, uh, which was a challenge uh, between uh, Shellfish and MMM, which is basically PPP and a few other teams. Uh, the names have gotten combined. What does MMM stand okay, for? Okay, so the full name is Maple Mallard Magistrates, because it comes from a team name that was like uh, Maple Bacon, I think, was the, was the Canadian okay. team. Uh, and then Ma uh, Mallard was the duck. There's a team called the duck. And, of course, magistrates, like PPP, like parliamentarians. Yep. Magist so it's MMM. I, I call them the Mighty Ducks. I, that's that's been the my name. Ducks. It's oh, just like much that. easier to say. Yeah, exactly. Um, we all know that people don't get to decide their handles that get used. No, it's, it's, it is given to you. The best nicknames are earned, not, yeah, not claimed. Exactly. Oh, interesting. So they're trying to figure out the arg to open there, which is interesting that they, they manually kind of specified that arg. So they're trying to like fix up the database and make it a little bit more readable, which is which is interesting because I know when I watched, I tuned in a little bit before and I, I saw like people writing scripts with like one letter, two letter function names yeah. just yep. to really, really speed through stuff. Yep. We've, seen, we've which, actually seen a fair amount of like fairly robust primitive creation too. We've seen some where it's like, you know, send whatever you know so we've seen some, some good full descriptions like things that you could post after scripts not allowed unless oh okay so sour Cloud just hit something that says scripts not allowed unless pac-man unsafe equals one is that some sort of environment variable it looked like yeah now that sounds be my super guess. nice and if i've got a if i've got the ability to create a package that can run a script and i've basically got command injection uh i would sure like to flip that so i you know what like i really thought this actually was arm pack but maybe I I may have just been completely misremembering. I'm not wondering I, if I saw I'm some completely pack, wrong. I, I saw some pack uh, intrinsics in there, it's, yeah, and okay. this is where it could be interesting between Ida and Binja because I know Binja is going to show those intrinsics, and I don't know if Ida is just going to hide those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that could throw someone off potentially. Uh, in either way, sometimes seeing the extra info is is scary, and sometimes not seeing it is scary. You can. You, there's no perfect display that makes matches everyone's needs, right? That's right. Uh, that's true. That's why it's nice to be able to like customize it or you know choose or uh, change settings. So yeah, I, I'm one. Actually, you know what? I think we should probably hit an early hint on this one because again, this is one that I think we're gonna need um, to give people a hint on. It's one of the bigger, harder challenges. Um, I see a mem copy into buff plus twenty, and then I see a massive access at at buff plus ten twenty eight. So I'm guessing it's uh. It's a thousand hex in size, so 4K in size, maybe an eight byte here or there with weird alignment stuff. So I'm that. I mean, obviously, whenever I'm doing a challenge, if I if I see a buffer, and it's being read into, I'm just gonna assume that's where the bug is in a CTF. <laughs> I mean, binders <laughs> are not that big here, right? There's only so many things you can do. So yeah, and, and looking at these, these look like they're dynamically linked. I see the the colorization showing that those are imports for those uh, like standard lib libc functions, yep, yep. and they're not stripped. So this is already a pretty good environment compared to a lot of CTS that I remember where they would just strip it, so you have to run everything through flirt sigs just. Yeah, just to get anything know, just, readable. Just because? Well, it's so it is. Part of it is, I think, because you know, our goal at LiveCTF is to be re really are aiming to be under an hour, and it's it's hard to make something that's different, unique, and interesting under right. an hour. And so you you have to give the, the the players as much help as you can, honestly. Like you really, we've we've given them source on a couple of them, or, or we're just like, listen, I, we don't want you having to decompile it. Like here's the here's the source. Uh, focus on like just the one like interesting thing that we're trying to get them to to, to hone in on. Ooh, Sturcher. Oh, I love Sturcher. That's a that's a fun function right there. Searching searching randomly for a, in a null terminated string for a character with no other regards. That's <laughs> always fun. 
Um, definitely, it seems like they took note of that when they were highlighting it. Yeah, so, I, do I do like when any... people use their mouse to, like, you know, highlight stuff, and you can get a little sense of that. Go ahead. Yep. I definitely do a lot of highlighting uh, when I'm playing around. I know, um, I know, like, I've always used plugins. I think a lot of tools now have, like, native support for multiple highlight cursors where you can just click and highlight different things, different colors. That's... I remember when Ida yeah. added... Um, support for when you click like racks that then started highlighting eax and al and yep. ax where yep. it previously didn't do that yeah i remember when that stuff. went in it was like a game changer for for being able to follow things but i guess oh, now everything's so many out. a's so many a's Ooh. all the a's is that even 4096 a's because they're gonna need at least that it looks like ah that looks like 4096 it might actually be yeah it's, it's hard to it's hard to judge when it's it's that dense but it it could be um, so, do you know the the author of this challenge and a little bit of backstory on this challenge? That chance? is a great question. I should have actually got more of the details on the backstory, but the author is Ghost, who was one of our our guest authors who who came in for us, and I think might even be on uh, on the stream. Ooh, you've got by the way a couple of people in chat suggesting you should do this on your stream too. Do a live CTF uh, run on your stream. I don't think I want you to play it CTFs. or to like yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, forget that there's such a big community around it, and yeah. it's where a lot of people go to learn. It, it is, especially. I mean, there's so that's one of the things that like we're focusing on here. But like a lot of CTFs, yes, DefCon CTF is like the pinnacle, and like you don't just walk in and I actually have had people walk into the room here and be like, "How do I register for the CTF?" And we're like, "Yeah, you you uh. missed the boat on that one several months ago." Um, but like, there are so many other CTFs that are really good for helping people figure things out, get into it, and learn. So it it is it is still a pretty good community. I think that's why I like the Nopsert uh, at Infiltrate is you could just walk in and join whenever and, and yeah, be heckled. Yeah, that was a lot it, of fun. It really was. So Ooh! Uh-oh. Th so it looks like, was that in a Kimu environment? I was, I, I was it I over in the... I think I know that mes message quite well. That was on... Um, on Recapig? I forget the names of the teams. I'm so in, in the Windows 7 one? Oh, I have notes in front of the monitors. That's the only way I keep them straight. Yeah. Oh! Okay. It's, that's my cheat sheet. Yeah, it was the non Hecapig team. Um... Sauerkraut? So Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, Sauerkraut is Binja, and Recapig is the, the Windows 7 uh, VM. So I saw them trying to S-trace something, and it failed. And I'm curious if they are in a Kimu user to root, because Kimu, uh, Kimu user does not support S-trace or debugging at all. Oh, And that's interesting. something that gets in the way a lot. Yeah, that's super annoying. Yeah. Yeah, so, you can't even run S trace or something. Well, so and that's I'm one of the things curious. that we, we talked about is like you know a team wanted to use some real hardware and we're like yeah if you want to set it up and bring it with you. So the only rules were teams couldn't have interactive help from other people, right? Okay. So th they were not allowed to have active humans either locally or remotely contribute in any way. But any technology, any website resources, any tools like fair game, right? Like they are welcome to do it. So they were allowed to bring up. Um, in fact, I was going to look behind me. I don't think they ended up doing it, but they did ask if they were allowed to uh, to bring hardware to use for some of this stuff. Um, and we said, yeah, knock yourself out. All right, wow, so, so... look, I, I want to point out one, one yeah, second real quick yeah. how easy it was for them in Binary Ninja to make a structure there. And they got a really good structure shape when they used the auto-structuring, and they just oh. named a couple of the fields, and it looks really good. I didn't even have to pay you for that. I didn't even, and I'm, I wasn't even looking at that. <laughs> I, I've been trying not to shill Binja, but I am super excited that they're, uh, <laughs> that they're here. And this is, you're right, I'm just watching them. Like, this is a, a good use of it. So you just hit that S hotkey, and you're going to get... Uh, Yes. Some pretty nice. Uh, I mean, we we let let's be honest. It's not even shilling for anything at this point. We know that creating structures in Ida is one of the most painful experiences of a life. It's like, there's there's it, a couple of advantages, but uh, you know, Ida still has great decompilation. I always want to you know give credit where credit is due. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, and and it is interesting. Actually, a good number of the teams are uh, are are heavy Ida users. Uh, but it is fun that yeah. we do have like a like a like a binge Ida. Uh, kind of comparison going on. Although they're both dark theme too. That's also been fun when we see like which theme do our people light theme or dark theme uh, default I, folks. I wish the binge uh, dark theme was darker. I really? Think yeah. Bright. It is kind of great. It's actually not intentionally not like a black. Uh, there's, yeah. I, there might be some darker ones kind of in there, but yeah, that's a good question. All right. So Interesting. there's the problem. They're missing a hint and we need to tell them the, the uh, hint. So we're going to, um, we're going to create a hint uh, because I just saw a note from, from ghost who mentioned that, uh, let's, I think we should probably just write the word memcopy, which is the hint that we're supposed to give them. Um, okay. Because I, I just saw him mention that. Unless, uh, 
Nick, if you want to, if you want to tell us something specific, you want to give them to it. We're going to run that hit to them right now uh, to make sure that they get that. Because yes, I think if they're not seeing that, uh, they're still. I mean, I love. On the one hand, um, yes. Okay, we're just going to literally just go give each team a hint. It just says mem copy. That's all it says. Um, Perfect. I oh, we're getting strings. Grep. What are we grepping for? What oh, looking for. Okay. Interesting. That's an interesting way to figure out what the loader is. I, I wonder oh, what they're yeah. having issues with. I mean, and we did. So I believe we did package up and give everyone the the LD and the uh, libc that we used uh, on each of these. Oh, so people unless it's changed, people aren't going to get thrown off by that, are they? Uh, by giving. So yeah, that was one thing I was concerned about with because we didn't want to give them those because they needed them for exploitation. We gave them because they needed them to run them potentially, right. right? And so it is a little bit of a weird signal, and that was something we debated and we decided, like, you know, what what should we do? Um, oh, they immediately went to that mem copy. Is that hint out already? Yeah, the hint, the hint went out to them, so they definitely have that. Uh, so we should see them uh, redirect their attention pretty quickly now. And I'm going to plug in my power to my laptop here. <laughs> Both of them have been honestly documenting their databases quite well, which it is, is something it is that cool. I was kind of surprised with. Yeah. So they've made structures. I, I saw that allocation, the calic of, I think, uh, 10,018 hex bytes or 10,020 hex bytes. And it seems like all of them have completely defined the fields of, of that structure. Uh, so they seem to really want to understand exactly what this program is doing. Yeah, and um, you used to see more like hacky stuff in CTFs, right? And so even this being a speed round, I think people have realized we still need to do a little bit of this whoa. work. That's a lot of X. That's a lot of X's. What do we do? We're just creating a string. So we're just doing a lot of counts. And are we going to like save that or we're just... Interesting. What? Where are we sending that? But they're they're prepending. That's an interesting way to assemble a string. What is? I, I would have just calculated the length and padded it out to the the total amount. I've never seen that Z fill string. Ten thousand dot Z fill. Command not found. Left justify. Are they are they manually doing uh, like string formatting? Yeah, that's that would have been a simpler way to do this, I think, right? Like, just, like, like this, this, this yells out to me like uh, C plus plus string <laughs> formatting, where you have to see yeah. out and pipe everything and use all the classes. So I think they're just trying to create this 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 string structure. Oh, okay, that matches the the pack structure. Remember we saw earlier when they were like dumping yep. the structure of those packages. So they're they're like they're create they're creating this package type. No such file directory. Open file. Command not found. So is that after? It's it's hard to tell when they're sometimes when they run these commands. It's really hard to tell whether is the output of the command like truncated and the rest of it's going to the shell, and so the shell is telling the command not found, which is often the case, or is it actually the original program? Ooh, what's that? That's doing it. You got an open no such file or directory. So that's why. Oh no, an open though would have to be from the executable. Yeah. Right. That would that wouldn't be. That's curious to me. Why is so a did, random thing getting opened? Yeah, do they have the ability to include or something? I guess here? there's install package, so maybe it's the name of that file. So we see that mem copy of file path right there, and I think that's the like thousand hex byte buffer. Uh, it's hard to completely guess uh, what it is because these scroll by so fast. Oh man, you should. Some of these, some of these people are so hard to follow because they're flipping around so quickly, and you kind of like get a glimpse of something, and then you have to hope you can you can recognize it. Uh, one of the suggestions. Yeah, it's it's kind of tough to think about sometimes, but like your brain knows kind of what it's about yes. to do. Like yep. that's something I notice a lot when watching like speedrunners as yes. well. Is you often can't see dialogues and stuff because they are. They're expecting the die. I guess yep. you did Rubik's cubing. You, yeah, you yeah, still yeah. do cubing, I, I and you do. know, like, you can't really watch someone make the decisions because they already made the decisions before beforehand. They even, like, it's just a smooth execution. I'm still not yeah. there yet. I have pauses in my solves, right? But yeah, the good people, like, it's it was it's already like a part of what they're doing, and yeah. Right, so yeah, we've seen that in several of the players here. One of the suggestions we got is, well, could you release the binaries too? So we didn't have it logistically figured out here, uh, but it's an interesting idea. Uh, we have to be. I think careful with you know teams cheating and 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 piling on and somehow slipping an answer to uh, to a competitor while they're doing it. But it right. would be great to have a format like this where you absolutely could have a chat and an audience. Uh, although you have to like doing it not on camera is just way easier, right? It can be yes. really really uh, hard to uh, to uh, to do this like just under the pressure, under the gun, 
Uh, and like I said, I mean, you, you've done this. You know what it's like yep. when, you know, you, you sit on the, on the hot seat. Uh, so the, the consensus so far from, uh, from Ghost, we just got a message from the, the challenge author, is that it looks like uh, we've got Sour Cloud on the right track. So, okay. which, which, I mean, that makes sense. You see them building this kind of package blob, so they clearly know something about the structure of it, and they're creating, um, creating something here uh, to, to, yeah, they've got several different types parsed. Yeah, it looks like, what do we have in here? A, a type field, some padding bytes, then a pointer to the buffer, a file data, which is UNT64, and a file path, which is an in 64 I'm guessing... Those just haven't been filled That probably in hasn't yet, been correctly think... typed, yeah. Oops. Yeah, I think that path is actually in in line of that structure. That would, that would it, be made more sense. There's a malloc of, uh, I think, or a calic of uh, 1020 or something. So if it's a, yeah, it's just a fixed amount, right? And they're not, they're not adjusting it based on... Uh... No such file or directory. Parsing object of type 1. Okay, so there are types. Now, does it loop here... Um, Trying to see if this is like a TLV or something, because it looks like they have a type one and a type zero. Yeah. And the way I would interpret this is there's like a there's like a one million or a ten million there, followed by an eight, followed yep. by the X's, yep. followed by the zero. So I think yeah, that's that type one. Fields. The eight's the size of the payload, which is just a single character or a string that's parsed. And then the second type. So it looks like you can have multiple types in here. Well it could, so is it those eight X's? Is actually the eight uh, X character string? Or I I, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Sometimes really I tough to say. sometimes I like knowing the answer and what the program's supposed to do, and sometimes I like figuring it out with the competitors too. It's just interesting watching uh, watching them too. You see, they're handcrafting this message now. They've kind of they, they seem a little frustrated. Okay, that's a hang. Oh, oh, it what? Okay. I. Uh, I, we've all done that a lot. Uh, so what was that? I was looking at the other screen. Parsing object of type X. So they um, they basically handcrafted the header and then they pasted a bunch of the X's, and they seem to ooh they're going in for a GDB approach. And when you break out a debugger, you're really kind of getting in there. What's uh, what is challenge actually? So challenge is the binary name. They are every just the way our bundler wrapper script works is that every round it will uh, package up the. <sighs> package up the the challenge it's just, oh, just called challenge this is literally Kimu just doesn't support this oh no yeah this is exactly what you mentioned earlier right that's exactly yeah. what you're talking about All right. oh yeah let's yep. go let's Here go take go. a look back at record pick i don't want to yep, I... yep. Oh, yeah no. yeah they're gonna experience oh, your pain no they're not gonna be able to use the debugger in their environment here yeah and yeah it just it just doesn't support uh p trace now it looks like they're trying to run s trace and um, you can do Kimu under S trace, and there's a built in S trace. It's a little bit worse than normal S trace. But you don't better get, like, than all nothing, the pretty right? coloring. Yeah. But that's, that's kind of the way you have to go if you want to go with this approach. Um, Kimu users have a fantastic environment to get things up and running in, but there are a lot of rough edges, a lot of bugs, a lot of bugs, a lot of things just don't work. Yeah. Well, they're bringing they're bringing their Docker instance up now. So in the meantime, let's go back over to Recapig. We haven't looked at them in a little while. So I just I still see them in in Ida, and I feel like at this point, at, you know, 30 minutes in, if you're not like still looking around in Ida, is is probably not a good sign. Like you you should hopefully be if you're you know using well, it as a dockering. reference. They're <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. It's a good oh, thing good we got thing a fast network here. There. Yeah, we actually have a pretty good connection, honestly. <laughs> Because if it weren't there, they're, they're done. <laughs> that would, yeah, that the rest of the competition. I'm sorry, you only had an hour, and that was your download. Yeah, wow. So it, it's interesting here that there does seem to be a big difference in approaches here by, by Wreck-It Pig and, and Sour... Mm -hmm. Sour something. Sour Cloud, um, yep. <laughs> yeah, no worries. And, and it looks like Wreck-It Pig might be a little bit more on the static side. Yes. And uh, Sour might be a little bit more on the dynamic side of things, which is where I find myself is normally jamming things in seeing it's, what yep. messages i get back and yeah although with this though where it's different architecture i can totally see somebody who normally goes dynamic just not wanting to mess with that right like that's not a crazy thing when you've got to go do a different architecture that you try to go more static than you might normally yeah so how big are these teams working right now 
So the teams themselves, we've actually had uh, a massive number of like combinations. So some of these teams are 100 people, some of these teams are 40, 60 people. There is like a lot of really wow. large teams. It's so the way that that Duck Hunt's, in fact, there's even a whole website. Um, maybe we can drop a, a link in in chat um, uh, for for folks, or somebody else can can post it. Um, yeah, we're getting some spam uh, in chat. Can you kill the spam? Oh, this is not spam. Oh, this is the good spam. Okay. So, good spam. Oh, are they supporting one of the players or something? Okay. Uh, this is the, oh an esports meme. See, I I need to. Uh, yep. I, yep. I need to be up on my memes. Um, so. <laughs> The, uh, I totally got to sidetrack. Oh, Sour Cloud's even installing a lot of packages as well. Good thing you have good internet, because both of them have already blown through their, like, 100 meg budgets. Yeah, their, uh, their, um, tethering, tethering would have been, would have been under the, the expensive ones, uh, at this point. Let's see. So, so yeah, uh, Sour Cloud is actually 30 people here in Vegas, okay. 20 people remote, so 50 people total just on Sour Cloud. Like, these are, these are large teams, and they sent the best person from each team to come here. Right, uh, I'm looking for my paper. Oh, I think I gave it to you that had the scores on the back. Oh no, I gave it to one of the teams. Uh, the hint page on one of the teams actually gave the scores. I was gonna, so we've got the point totals that each of the teams are gonna get for um, for like their placement in, in the live CTF. So, because again, every team here uh, is, uh, is, is, here primarily for DEFCON CTF, and then the live CTF is basically like this extra bonus point pool that they can win depending on how they do uh, here. And so uh, I forget the exact number, so I'll kind of I'll kind of eyeball it. But I think it was uh, if you are out in the very first round. So we started with 16 teams, or we're done with our, our round one, and we're now into the, the second round, or we're working on uh, winning we down here. Everybody yeah. who made it to the second town. Uh, Every, sorry, everybody who's out in the first round, zero points. Everybody who made it to the second round gets like 668 or 600 something points. Uh, okay. and, and then the everybody who makes it, so that's, that's going to be like basically four teams. So we have eight in this current round. Four of them are going to get 600 because they don't move on. They just get the 600 for making it here. The next teams the, are going to be third and fourth uh, uh, are going to make, I think, I want to say it's like 2,000 points. So, so somewhere in the 2,000 point range. Okay. Uh, and then first and second are like, uh, four and two, or, or maybe it's a thousand or something, and then it's two and three, four. It basically, between zero and four thousand points uh, that you can get, and so it. So we'll pull up the exact uh, the exact amount. Um, and for context, so right now the difference between the last place team in the overall event and the top team uh, is about seven thousand points. So okay. four thousand points. That's it's a pretty a, big deal. It's a pretty big deal. It really yeah. is. Like, honestly, we were... Big gap closer. I'm a little worried that, like, we were... We didn't want to, like, completely disrupt the game, but it, it, we wanted teams to take us seriously, and I definitely think we're on the serious side because, honestly, any of any of the teams in the top eight uh, at this point that that solve this if, if um, you know, depending on who gets second and third, but, you know, second and third and fourth, basically, could easily kind of get the win. So, although it is interesting, too... The, of the top uh, eight teams uh, in the DEF CON CTF, seven of them were in the top eight in our bracket. Wow. So this really strongly correlated between people who did well. I mean, which, I mean it kind of makes sense. It turns out they've got really good exploitation, really good people, and uh, they're yep. coming in here. Um, huh, okay. So I'm, I, we're, we're still okay on time, but I, I'm a little worried that we've got a lot of... Uh, There's left to go in terms of even like stabilizing this thing so they both seem to be fighting a little bit with their dynamic environment it looks like yeah. both of them have the binary running but neither of them seem to be getting the introspection that they really want to have yeah so so sour cloud did just move back into uh like actually building a payload so maybe they, yes. they've got something i would that would be great if they've got um uh some some progress but but i do think um I, I, yeah, I do think that, that it's going to hurt them not having a dynamic environment that they can instrument, right? Not having debugging. Just in, right. I mean, in most of the matches, that you kind of take that for granted. Uh, so I think in, in hindsight, this challenge being both a little bit more complex and being a different architecture, this is unquestionably one of the hardest challenges. So we will see, uh, crossing our fingers, that uh, we don't have to go to a, a sudden death because I think nobody wants that, that, that 
competitors want right. to solve it. The and... tension is so high in a sudden death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just, it feels a little more luck based. It feels a little more like, you know, it's just too, too quick and too fast. Um, but uh, it is still a very valid test of skill because it's just all about the speed, which is very much kind of the theme of this. So uh, we'll see what we need to, to do. Interesting. Um, P64S. So String V. Z fill eight. I, I, I haven't seen much Python yeah. development like well, this. Well, P64S is, very S is the is I'm pretty sure that's a pwn tool uh wrapper. Um, okay. that's gonna going to is it uh pointer two string or string to pointer? It's it's something yeah, I think I, I bet you if we, we pull up the uh the pwn tool stocks we'd find that. Um because I have seen that in some of the other scripts, although I clearly need to practice more. Uh I think, you know what, maybe huh. we can have Carl come in and uh, come on voice and tell us what P64S is in Pwn Tools, if he knows. P64S, yeah, so let's get him to I mean, to they have an implementation so right there. Oh, no, no, oh, do they implement? Oh, no, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. That, I'm, I'm so foolish. I thought it was imported. <laughs> it's not. It's, like, on the screen. Thank you. I should just read. And they really like their Z-Fill, don't they? They really do, and it's, <laughs> it's just strange because I don't think I've ever even used that in my life. I've used a couple so I'm of the fills, what, but yeah. what niche that's filling. I'm, I'm going to pull it up in my PyDoc right now. And just implement it real quick and see what it... I, I just, I think they could have easily just done instead like a... Uh, Pad a numeric string with zeros on the left to fill a field with the given width. So, so this is just percent, you know, Percent zero number. number. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Oh, pad. Pad to 64. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're just being able to. Does this can does this do like uh, an A to I of like a very specific length? Oh, they do a well D printf, a percent seven lu. That's writing the blob. Oh, so they're reading the code that produces a blob. A, so there a must be something blob. in there. Yeah. Well, I think it was it. Have you seen the mem copy yet? Because they're kind of. It, I haven't actually I, seen. I did see a mem copy at the end of the function that is handling kind of the switch. So they do have like a write package blob in here, which looks like that. They are implementing this functionality in Python right now. Right, just so they and can create parse valid package functions. Blob, and there's the yeah. mem copy at the end. So right after it reads it, it does something with a mem copy, and and they seem to be interested in this. So there's there are stack canaries. There's no pi, there's no, uh, there is NX, and their railroad shouldn't really matter too much in this uh, specific case. Um, so I think they are, this would potentially be a heap overflow because this, this allocation from what it looks like is in, we have a couple mallocs in there of sizes that I think are user controlled. And there was a calic at the start for 1030 hex bytes, which I think is where the like big thing was read. Interesting. They are doing something that I do a lot is run it multiple times and see if it somehow works the next time, which never is the case, <laughs> but it feels really good to it's do. Just, just maybe. Just, just, just maybe. Just maybe. Maybe the first run for some reason. <laughs> You've heard the definition of insanity. There's like a stray gamma right? that hit my, my <laughs> RAM. Flip some bits, and you just you never want that to be the reason you lost. <laughs> So, uh, well, I, we did see a couple of people brute forcing offsets by running it. Speaking of which, they would just wrap it in a loop and, like, try the whole thing at different offsets until it worked. Yep. So that's, I mean, but that's that's a tried and true uh, technique. It, it, it's tough because that sort of strategy, I think, is the fastest approach. Like, if, it, if your yeah, goal is quite to often. win on speed, if you're doing something like, a, like a, a NOP cert, it's the fastest way to go, but the risk is so high because you build up no knowledge by doing that. Yes. So if you miss... You're back to square one. Yeah. Yep. I you know I totally agree. Uh, and I love the sort of game theory trade off so that risk reward, explore, exploit kind of kind of thing. Uh, so we do have a question in chat uh, from J3 about who participated in the creation of all these live challenges, and how much time do they create them? Uh, the time varies tremendously. This this was definitely one of the the I think the bigger challenges that took a lot more time. Um, because it was obviously a little bit the the structure of this and the the logic behind it and creating the 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 working exploit was was a little bit more work. Uh, compare that to like n volumes, for example, which is the one earlier, which um, uh, Carl wrote last night as I sat next to him and we laughed our, our butts <laughs> off because it was it was just like we made a menu of every volume type we could think of and the ones that were jokes like cross site scripting we just you know printed a funny message. And then there was a bunch of other ones that we actually built little primitive prototypes. You have a form of stream bug. You added this plugin. So it was like, yeah, there's a lot of bugs. Which one's fastest? I don't know. Figure it out. 
Um, and so, like, there was a couple of trolls. Like, there was a, um, a stack-based buffer overflow called gets, uh, but then immediately exit before you re uh, return. And so, yeah, yeah you overrate oh. a pointer that you never got to it. So there's a couple of just little mean things. I mean, they didn't bite on that one. They, I think everybody saw that and, and caught it. So we definitely had um, a bit like that would took like an hour to kind of kind of throw together, maybe. Uh, right. And even including like putting together a little exploit, knowing what the intended solution. So some of them are very quick. So some would take a lot longer time. What, what are people chasing for here? Are, there's not like a key or anything because this isn't server based. So there's no hidden secret. So it's just who gets. Oh. This no, so, so there is a server here. This is running on our infrastructure, oh, and okay. we have got it in a community user as well inside of Docker. And if they have an exploit working that they run against our instance, they get they get a shell, and okay. there's actually a SUID binary uh, that they can run, and each team can run it with their like team ID. So depending which side of the table they're sitting on, their team one or team two for each event, and it will actually automatically trigger an OBS overlay that uh, we get a little winner dialogue. So occasionally... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, occasionally when we're not paying attention, we're looking at one team, and like the winner thing pops up, and we're like, oh, no, we missed it. It was happening over the end of the screen. Shout out, of course, to all the people doing challenges and logistics. I know how hard it is to put stuff like this on, so uh, thank you, everyone, for, for doing all that. That's I'm, I'm sure it's been a stressful week for a lot of people when DEF CON is a vacation for many others. It's um. been very, very busy. Okay, so we got a hint, by the way, that we're going to give to the teams uh, okay. from from Ghost. And so there's a there's a hint that I it went by real quick for me, um, but uh, I think with the production crew. And so yeah, let me just give a quick summary of like some of the folks. So it was also the question of who's been working on challenges, right? So we had I would say I think about six people. I I did like I said uh, earlier. I mentioned I worked a little bit on story time, but I primarily. Um, did all of the streaming infrastructure, so the overlays, the some of the OBS setup, the camera, the lights, the sound, and like that was kind of my responsibility, just getting all that stuff. Um, we had uh, Josh uh, and Glenn who cranked out a bunch of challenges, worked on a bunch of that stuff, uh, and also did a little bit with the infrastructure for the game network for like the thing that teams are throwing against. Um, Carl did a whole lot of everything, so he wrote a lot of challenges. Uh, he also helped a little bit with like the OBS, so the the, the binary that triggers the overlay and some of this, uh, the, some of the other OBS stuff that like automatically updates teams. We actually have separate infrastructure that every round automatically like pulls from a challenge and will uh, update our brackets and update which team is playing in each round, and that's like that's fully automated. Um, it, wow. He worked on that, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of people, uh, and and you know just for context, uh, this is like a little pit little bit of the Nautilus Institute's CTF game, which is even a much broader, bigger. They've got twice the number of people that we do uh, that have been making That's challenges for a long wild. time, too. So it's, you know, the teams have gotten bigger, but so has the organizers. So the number of people yeah. like, that, are, that are playing. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. We are so coming up. I think Rekka Pig oh. was putting a bin SH in there for like a script or a string. So they, they seem to have some idea that they can maybe run a script or run a command. I don't know if that's the case. I, I did see a system... So, so there is a new real quick. Uh, the hint that's going in now says uh, file data. Oh, give me the give me the, the full text again because I forgot it already. Too little <laughs> sleep. File data and script text overlap. So that's the team. The hint that both teams are getting the file data and text script overlap. So there's a union between mm. those two, and that's the next hint. But I, 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 I actually really like this challenge. I think this is a, a really nice challenge. I just think it's, it's a little so small. large. It's on one screen. Right? The, the, basically, all the logic is there, but I still think it's going to be too much for the time period. So I, I'm predicting this might this is going to end up a sudden death one because I just don't see, even with the second hint, I don't see anybody close. I mean, we're seeing Ben SH, but I don't, yeah. I don't know that that's actually a working. I think that's working. a wild guess. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that they're actually... I would love to be wrong. I would be <laughs> ecstatic if all of a sudden a winner pops up and it's happened before. So I could. did see a failure to open a file, like file name too long, which means that they definitely passed a bunch of A's. I think that was SourCloud yeah, yeah. passed a, a lot of A's but into I, I think they the, had that one, an open call. I think they had that one like 20 minutes ago, though. I think I remember seeing that same exact error message uh, earlier in the stream. So I, I don't yeah. think they're like hitting new stuff. It, it feels to me like they're still... They, they, do, they aren't moving with the intensity of somebody who knows what they want to do. Right, right. Right? Like, they're still exploring. And so this is what I just feel like they they don't have enough momentum to, to finish this one out. And again, 
This is not because they're not good. It's not. Because, this is right. just a hard challenge to do on the time pressure on on stage, and so. So Record Pig has a comment saying overflow on that mem copy. I mean, well, we did tell him to look at the overflow or look at the mem copy. So that's you know that's yep. a reasonable guess. That's. Uh, and then it looks like there's a, a file handler, which is some sort of a, a function pointer. So there's like some sort of a dispatch, maybe based on it. So here's what we see. The, there is some sort of like a TLV structure, and you can have multiple of these types kind of, kind of you know, together. I, I wonder if there's more of a type confusion bug, if there is an overlap there. Maybe you can uh, cause the, you can cause validation of a path, but then send a descriptor or, or vice versa or something like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, I mean, and that does make sense with the description. The hit that we just gave them, right, that the, those data overlap. That does seem like a, a good uh, a good hint that that might be the case. Okay, so we're back over there, still running in Kimu. So I think the current plan is we're gonna let them run. So we st do we start exactly on time on this one? Do you guys remember what time we started on this one? I think we were I pretty close. So. I think we were I think we were close to on time on this one. So uh, we uh, we can go a little bit. Uh, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of time because uh, we, again we have to do the last challenge. So we're gonna go to them uh, in just like four minutes. Uh, and I'm going to give them the option, and we're going to say, we think it's time for, for sudden death now, unless one of you, unless you both really want to keep working for a couple more minutes and you think you're really going to do it. Because uh, we do have a, a sudden death that probably is doable in less than five minutes. <laughs> like, we've got some easy ones. Um, <laughs> so we can, we can drop one of those. Uh, current state, pretty lost. How to leak. GDB is broken. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's, a, that's definitely a request for a... We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go to a sudden death um, because I know that given that Sour Cloud is not willing to to wait because they don't feel like they have any progress. Um, uh, yeah, the, yeah, you can't GDB in that environment. Now, yeah. you can't. So you can actually uh, debug this in two different ways. You can use Kimu under S trace equals one to enable S tracing in Kimu to see like what's going on. You can also do Kimu under GDB equals port number and you can connect into that. Um, GDB session that that yeah, is spun right. up by you're, you're using the GDB interface from Kimu itself, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, okay. it's a little bit scuffed. It is. I have tried it, to use it, that before. Yeah. It it'll get you what you need. Okay. All right. Yeah, so so it's not. I don't think that multi. Or, oh. Hmm. All right. I don't know. I, we're gonna I mean, we're gonna queue them up. To debug it, and that print does look like it's a Kimu sort of one, but. We're, well, I, don't I think, think we're, I've seen we're them going to try to do chemo under GDB. I, I think we got to go sudden death right here. So so let's yeah. let me let me let me cue this up. We're gonna make sure uh, sudden death is is coming up. I'm, um, we go, are we gonna go to commission? No, we can just leave it on the camera. I think it'll be fine. We don't have to go into intermission. Um, we'll we'll uh, we'll go over there. I'll tell the teams we're we're going to sudden death. Unfortunately, it was just too hard of a challenge. We're gonna prepare a new one, and um, uh, we'll we'll unleash them on that. So I'm going to put my headset off and I'll be right back. All right? Yeah. See you in a second. I think it's just me and y'all. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Are people enjoying the CTF content? Having some fun? I'm very curious to see what this sudden death challenge is going to be. That's definitely going to be interesting. It sounds like they do have, if they said something's going to be solved in less than 15 minutes, I am very curious what kind of challenges they're going to pull out here. They could just be ridiculous, you know, standard stack overflow sort of things. I wonder if there will be mitigations or cookies, stuff like that. So I, I can't wait to see. Alone with Gamoza. Hey, how's it going? CTF content is fun for sure. I, I, it doesn't even cross my mind too much. You know, when uh, Jordan reached out and like, do you want to do some commentary in live CTF? Absolutely. Why not? Sounds super fun. So uh, it's it's so fun to see people working kind of in their own environments. Uh, I'm guessing those are the competitors right there. I actually don't know. I'm I'm not physically there. I'm in the I'm in my 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 house. Um, but I'm guessing those are the competitors. All right, so that we're gonna we're go ahead and do this there. in five minutes. Uh, we're gonna wait till five more minutes. Uh, the 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 conversation with the teams went. Uh, Recapig is is convinced they got it. They think they have it. All right. So Let's see it. I love the confidence, and we'll see if they can do it. Sour Cloud's like, I don't think so, but I'm willing to go for a few more minutes. Um, and yeah. so we might. Uh, 
So we'll just we'll, we'll keep an eye for five more minutes, but we're going to be ready to go because uh, we don't want to eat into our last match uh, too much because we're trying to keep we're trying to keep on schedule and be fair to all the other teams. But let's see, let's see what they can do. Someone asked, "Have you learned anything cool from this?" I I, I think that was directed at me when I was kind of here alone. Um, the only thing that I saw here that really stood out to me that I really want to figure out is. Someone had something that auto quoted a string. They were trying to convert like an actual command line thing into the like the the strings that you have to pass in as like an array of strings. And they like did something and they were in Sublime. So I don't know if I can do that. I mean, obviously you can do anything in Vim, but I would like to learn how to do that because I I spent a lot of time putting quotes around things. I've, <laughs> I've seen a couple of little tricks like that too. Yeah, somebody else earlier was using a uh, Sublime with a, uh, was, it was Sublime or what? I forget what text editor it was. Uh, maybe even just Visual Studio Code, but they were doing a multi-cursor thing where they did the multi-select. Actually, I think it was Carl last night when we were doing challenge creation. So, yeah, that's that's the best part, right? It's not like the, oh, I learned this new heap exploitation technique. Sometimes it can be, but like a lot of it's just like, oh, I didn't know about that command line tool. I didn't know about that that feature. So, yeah, this is interesting. So they're looking at the script handler. So it looks like Recapig really is is set on the script side. All right, we're, let's let's ask. Uh, I'm curious too of our challenge author if uh, if Nick is still watching the stream as we're focusing here on Recapig. Oh, Sour Cloud really wants the debugger. Oh, I feel I feel that pain. I feel that pain. Yeah, and I I don't think their GDB is broken. That string looks like the the command that you get when you run. E either they're in a weird environment where ptrace is not allowed, or they're trying to run that that GDB in in that Kimu environment, and and Kimu will not take that. Yeah, but yeah. they should be able to do Kimu under GDB. Obviously, that's going to be a hard one to figure out. I mean, if they ran Kimu H, it would be right there in like ten lines of text. Yep, and even just grep it. Uh, but that maybe, maybe, I'm be off, maybe it's their actual host environment that isn't allow them allowing them to debug, but that message looks exactly the P trace not supported I mean, is, is you, literally you a key. Predicted it. Frame. You called that from the very, very beginning. You said, Oh, yeah. they're gonna run into this, and sure enough they, yeah. they exactly did. So I think I think you're right. Okay, so we did oh alright, so we're looking back over here. We got a segmentation fault, but Are we looking for gadgets? I mean Recapig might be making progress here. They they were looking at that that Blix right there, and when I see them looking at a, it this looked a, like they're just looking for a gadget. So oh, is this sig seg? That is actually the correct way to specify a debugger for for Kimu. So this is going to start a debugger oh. that you can then attach into with target remote. Um, so sorry sorry. So Sour Cloud is running it with a deb debugger, or Recapig was was doing that. Recapig. Okay yeah, Recapig yeah. So they has were able a debugger to do that. connected yep. in. They're connected into the Kimu debugger, so they pass dash g uh, to. So Kimu under uh, GDB is the environment variable, but for for Kimu user, you can specify basically all of the arguments. You can also specify through environment variables, and that sometimes is really useful if you're using uh, if you're not familiar with like bin format, which allows you to dot slash run executables that are from a different architecture. And it allows you to pass those arguments even though you're not invoking Kimu where you can pass the arguments hmm. in. In this case, they just pass the dash G1234 standard port everyone seems to use. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they can connect in here with their debugger, debugger. And they're actually yeah. kind of seeing where they are. So um, it is interesting. I don't know. Are they shipping up an address here yet? I'm not 100% sure if they are. Bad object type. Um, so I I, the, I think they're on their way. It does look like yeah. they're getting they're getting some. Uh, and at one point, they, I mean, they had a yeah. I mean, having a seg fault. You're usually when you have a seg fault in the CTS, That's you're sure, pretty you're pretty darn a good close. start. Yeah. So the author is is concurring that they're they're honing in on it. But the question is, are they going to do the time available? And and we can't. The problem is if we keep letting it go. Yeah. Right. Yeah, if we you know it does okay. So it's actually yeah. Listening to the author, it sounds like there's actually a major component that's missing from this exploit that we don't think is okay. going to do it. So we're gonna we're gonna cut over in one minute. We're gonna cut over to our our sudden death. And, uh, Five minute challenge. It. Oh uh, gosh, my we, heart. Well, we're gonna let it go longer because we do have to go to one of them wins to move on. Uh, okay. But this will just be a very very easy challenge, and it <sighs> will be it'll be stressful for both at of them. The, they're looking at the the uh, flag up there, the pointer off flag. 
And yeah, you actually could see uh, in in um, Kimu they they were having problems running this binary until they passed in the correct dash CPU all arg, which is enabling mm. all the feature sets of Kimu. And I'm guessing the default CPU probably doesn't actually support um, pointer authentication. That that would make so. it make a ton of sense. All right, let me go prepare the next one. We're gonna we're gonna cut over to the uh, to uh, t to the new one. So actually, uh, Carl's or uh, sorry, I'm gonna go put my headset down. I'll be right back. One second. Wow, this is this is really scary. You know, he knew the flag was at the top of the help screen. I've been working with Kimu way too much. Kimu users specifically way too much for the past like three months. <clears throat> Shout out to Canoli, the uh, fast tracing environment that I use. So it's a it's. Kimu, Kimu makes things very difficult. I wasn't kidding when I said there's a lot of bugs. That's not that's not really meant to be a dig at Kimu. It's just it's a really rapidly you know uh, working environment. And if you, if you're not familiar with Kimu user, it it passes through uh, basically the guest syscalls to the host. So it has to like hook all of the pointers, fix everything Good. up, translate things where there's Five, differences in the, four, in the APIs. Three, two, one, go. All right, we have all a right. new binary. Sorry, sir. One second, one second, one second, one second. Stop. Sorry. He's going to copy the same. <laughs> Apologize. Okay, now go. Go. <laughs> There's like two separate commands you got to run to replace the challenge. I think you ran the first and not the second. Ugh. No, I see. You, you, yeah. So, I, I'm, All right. Go ahead. I'm excited I'll, to see how they approach quick, these. But yeah, go ahead and answer uh, the, the, your, the other question. It's not like you were, I cut you off when you were... You were Maybe yeah, I was trying chat. to explain a little bit about uh, Kimu user, just that environment and and how there are a lot of edge cases, there are a lot of issues, there are a lot of bugs, um, and that that kind of you know it makes sense. It's it's really hard to do. Imagine you have to intercept every single system call. You have to understand all of the formats for the arguments. And one of the big problems in Linux is there's a lot of weird interfaces where mm. there's just flipped arguments on different architectures whether it's for padding yeah. or legacy support or some weird bug fix because some GNU software in 1983 wrote it that way and they have to maintain it because it would break too much stuff yeah and don't even so it... Kimu has to handle all of those things translate them and everything and it's it's a hard environment but yeah you'll run into a lot of weird issues ptrace is not necessarily a bug they literally just don't implement it they just they haven't bothered with that api because I mean, it is one did, of the if harder they didn't need APIs it that's a lot of implement. work yeah Okay, so this um, challenge, we saw this as uh, you've counted zero eggs. How many groups of eggs are you counted? Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Nick, actually, if you want to drop a link to your solution into the, the chat, you're welcome to at this point. That challenge is dead from a competition perspective. So if you're interested in seeing that solution, we want to focus on the teams now because we've got to see who's going to win. But uh, keep sure. an eye on the YouTube chat. And uh, yeah. Nick is going to go ahead and post for it. Loop. Putting this, into an array? Oh, yeah. it, it can't be that easy, is it? It is exactly that easy. This is oh, this wow. is okay. this is a five minute challenge, right? This is sudden death. So if we needed them, this is wow. what we got. Wow, this is this is really intimidating. Like I I'm terrible at challenges like this because I don't have existing tooling. Tooling, to just, like it's in a race, especially you're you're nervous. You're afraid the other person oh. has some like auto pwn script, right? That's just going to insta solve yeah, it. Exactly. Um, so I feel I feel bad for the teams because I I we don't want to do this either. We would love for the main right. ones to be solved, but uh, just given we can't let each one go on forever and ever. So this is the backup plan that we do have to kind of keep on schedule. So uh, we'll see. Oh no, stack canaries! Oh god! <laughs> they exactly. both they both identified that almost at the same time. Nice. That's fantastic. Oh, I, I'm actually watching the YouTube stream, so I'm probably off from from where you are. I know I have it open in Discord, but I I see the preview, I see the OBS window, and it's too small to read. Yeah, so that's why I'm probably off so well. on a lot of my calls. Sorry. No, no, you're you're good too, and it's uh I don't have a way to like make that bigger, unfortunately. I wish. Yeah, we need. Yeah, exactly. For future future totally issues fine. for remote stuff, we'll figure out a way to. It's actually, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna have separate streams of both. I want to have YouTube multi camera because you can do multiple streams to the same important. Yeah, uh, you can. And I would love to do that. I think that'd be super, super fun. So that's all right. So you give fun. it a number, and uh, I'm guessing you just pass that in, probably scan F or something, and it's just gonna loop through it, and it's gonna put num in there. I don't, I haven't actually seen what num is. I I hope that's not a libc API, man. Num. Okay, it's not. It's about to say. I don't think I've yeah. ever seen num. Well, so we're signals. gonna send a line a hundred. So that's the number of things that we're gonna put in there, and all you're really doing is you're racing to find. 
you're racing to find the layout of that stack and really w what offset to to bang that into. But it's it's a classic stack overflow without a cookie. Yep. And yep, for that in counts. And it's just uh, send another line, and this is probably just another uh, another int. So this is probably going to crash. Um, but they're gonna. This is probably gonna crash by jumping to one. Would be my guess, unless they have to fix anything else up. But I don't think that'll be the case. Um, interesting. Did that not crash? Interrupted. Stop process. What happened? There? I, don't, I didn't see what the end of their their throwing script was. If Receive it, if it... until. Oh. They're not consuming the interactive thing, so they're not getting the prompt. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. They didn't re Interesting. read enough bytes. Yeah, that's a classic. That's a classic. Oh, boy. Even even in the five-minute challenges, yeah, there's a mistake. This nope. is why we normally, like I said, the original plan was at 15 minutes left, we cut over if we had to, just because yep. uh, there's all sorts of little stuff that can get you. Now, I'm not, I'm not seeing yet. I'm still seeing reverse engineering on the record pick side. I just didn't see the quick turnaround that you'd expect, but because we're we're seeing bugs on Sour Cloud, I, I, I still, you know, you can't predict it. I don't know. If the first one to, like, get it clean and get it landed is going to be is going to be our winner yeah yeah i mean they're trying to figure out roughly the the layout of that stack which uh is actually really nice in in binja because binja has that different they're based off of uh the return what, based address off of sp instead, yeah, of, instead of the uh, frame pointer yep Yep, and that's just so useful for when you're trying to do these sorts of challenges. I, I think people get I mean, used can... to it the other way around, but yeah, it, it was that was yeah. a conscious choice because again, like that was our our CTF kind of origin, so it, yep. it made sense that that was that was how it does it. I, I do, I think you're right though. I think that sort of uh, looking at stack layouts is one of those things where I think Dynamic excels. Just throw it in the debugger yeah. and just look, just count, try it, and look at what what uh, your offset is. It's pretty easy to find your return addresses. I also like that Binary Ninja shows you where the return is. Uh, Ida does not. So they already know from this minus 38 hex. So plus 38 hex yeah. from the start of their buffer is the return address. Yep. Um, whereas in Ida, you're going to have to know that there's an RBP there because you can see the index for I, but you have to know there's RBP there, which might may or may not be in there. You have to just look for the prologue yep. and then the return address an, after that. The so there's just a little bit yeah. more guesswork there. And I know that's bit me before in like Nopsert before. All right, so so we are seeing uh, interactive from uh, Sour Cloud. So again, they kind of went debugger and they went interactive. They're looking at the counting, and we're still. But I, see, I, I I am not ruling out Rekapig because I, I I've seen too many right. times where like the person just looking at the decompilation just stares at it and then all of a sudden comes up with the uh, comes up with a solution. So yeah, just as a reminder for for chat, we are in sudden death mode. Uh, Great challenge, a really cool challenge that I like uh, last round, but it didn't. Uh, what do we got? I'm, I'm really, uh, they're, they're getting so close. Yeah. No, no, this, I mean, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't take too much. So we'll see where they, where they land. Okay, the there we go. The here is check. actually really nice. Uh, it shows very obviously what it's doing. It just, how many groups of eggs, so you give it groups of eggs, yeah. which is a number. Then you have to give it a number of eggs in the group. And then you have to give it all of the eggs uh, that it tallies up there. And I think both of them, I think, have been running into issues where they're trying to, like, send stuff. But I think it's going to block until you re re read that they, string, depending just... on how you're interacting with that process. Well, and that is the nice thing about, you mentioned earlier, having, like, you know, a custom throwing framework or doing one-offs or, you know, using something like Pwn Tools. They're both using Pwn Tools. And right. it, that can do a lot of that for you, right? If you properly set yeah. it up, or it will just you know receive until for you. It makes a huge difference instead of having to rewrite your own each time or uh, pull it in. You see so that Wreck-It Pig is trying to, uh, they're trying to um, basically figure out what glibc version that is. So I don't know if they just have pre-made payloads for basically all of these. Yeah, I'm curious. That's actually a good question. And they're... They're setting the context manually, and so they're going to... I don't think I've seen a crash yet from either side. That's a great point. Yeah, that'll be when we know we're, we're close. Right. And I, I think the main issue that, that is happening here is, is probably just sending those things in, because I'm pretty sure that just goes straight out of bounds. I think yeah. you oh, have yeah. to give There's it no checks. one group of eggs, yep. a million eggs, and then just give it the egg values, but I think they're just not interacting with the program. Yeah, if it's gonna if it's gonna block on that, then they're so. 
All right, so we're actually using just the saw, saw Wreck a Pig is uh, running um, LD directly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to launch the uh, I binary. I didn't know you could do that. Yes, I didn't you know can. You could I have seen LD. that that trick before. Yeah, you can evoke the lo loader directly. Which, if you're on a different you know architecture, but That's you've been provided nice. the loader, you can just have it run it for you to match the state. Yeah, it's a it's a cool trick. Huh? I know that's what happens under the hood, but I, yep. I guess I've literally never tried. Just never considered like what have you do manually. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that'll totally work. Huh. All right, so they've at least got like a little interactive framework just to like poke at it under the under their infrastructure. But are they? So I mean, I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, they're. I'm, I half expected them to be on like a uh, like an M1 Mac or something, right? Like if right. Why, why were they like running this under uh, uh, that? So is the well, actually wait is the context oh. there for emulation or is that? Uh oh, what did I miss? Did we get a crash? Oh, there is a debugger. Call stack in read, but I don't think it's a crash. I think that was maybe a break point. Just breaking in or even manually uh, interrupting. Oh, come on, Sour. Dropping into an interactive terminal is definitely high energy. That's not it, something I normally do. Okay, oh, I know. I, I like I like the interactive terminal. Like you can automate up to a point and then drop in and then poke at it uh, and then and then. Oh, it's like, Ooh. Wreck-a-Pig's got a seg fault. Okay. And I'm guessing Wait. that's just going to be PC control there. They're going to have control of execution. What was, so the, what was their payload? I didn't think they had actually written much of a payload yet. Uh, yeah, I didn't it either. sure it wasn't a seg fault in, like, the infrastructure. I'm just a little worried that it's, like, so... Oh, maybe they just must did it manor, manually? Did they seg fault manually, or did they... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero... Oh, okay. They did yeah. something interactive. All right, so, again, as we said... That might be sufficient. Uh, this taking the time. Yeah, this is. Oh, come on. Uh, this is nerve wracking. Yeah, it really is. It looks like uh, Wreck-It Pig's going to like trying to actually write a little bit of their Python right now to probably construct that payload. But I think they're consistently getting a crash. Yeah, I have. I still haven't actually seen well. It's, it is hard to tell with some of these uh, payloads where they're actually using uh, pwn tools to prop open a separate debugging Send process. And... after. Look yeah. at that. They're looking for the end of that specific string. Yep. Both yeah. of them, I think, are fighting with the same issue. Yeah, they're just it not is flushing. Literally, they, they... I mean, that's that F flush of BSS start, I'm guessing that is zero, um, which is that's flushing standard out. And that flush might really be blocking and they might need to consume the it kind of depends on how you're interacting with this if you have like the output going to dev null like that i think would be my approach is just oh that's a clever way to do dev it. Null yeah. that output i'm sure that um, i'd say here's where like if you really know pwn tools i'm sure there's just straight up an option in there to do that um, yeah and our, honestly that's actually one of the funny things like they might be better off just sending it directly and then throwing everything away, like from the like right. you could do this with Echo and a shell script, right? Like it might right. actually be better right. off. Yeah, because they they have to consume that information right now. And yeah, I'm seeing like a, a, a exception in the tubes uh, over on SourCloud. They, uh, yeah, so the tubes library being the Pwn tools thing that does a lot of this kind of interaction stuff. I, I don't think we expected to need a hint in our, our uh, sudden death, and I'm <laughs> hoping it goes uh, it goes quickly. I, I think the hint might be, like, dev null. Yeah, that might uh, probably just confuse them as Because they're though. all fighting with I it. Know. You can see both, both of them right now are trying to find ways that they can consume that output so they can actually provide the command line input. I mean, re receive until should, should absolutely do it, though, right? They should yep. be able to re receive until... I don't know if they're just not doing it, or or again, ignore it entirely, like either receive right. until or just absolutely like send it, ignore all the output, toss it away, use something else. Yeah, so I think we're getting the first throw attempt here from Wreckapig. Wreck Pig, yeah, I agree. Right. There we go. What do we have here? Oh, their their script crash. I don't know how. <laughs> oh, I think they just, they just, well, the one I'm watching, they just switched away. They're back, been back in Ida for a little bit. All right, we do actually have a hint uh, coming for sudden death. Watch out for clobbered counters. Do it. Ooh. Let's write it up. 
Ooh! So there's a side effect to what you're overwriting. And okay. oh, look at that. We actually see Rekapig in Ida right now naming those things on the stack. And I think they're figuring out that they have to fill in those fields because they are clobbering them. Oh, okay. They might not even need the hints, actually. So if, if one of them makes progress on it... Uh, I mean, Rekapig it, just it, named every stack variable. And I think they're thinking through what are the ramifications... Right now, yeah, I, I see it in their maybe. mind right now. It's what are the ramifications to overwriting the length, the J, and the I? It's, and I think they're trying to figure out what, what that means. Yes. It's, it's, the problem is, so we got to decide, do we give the hint anyways? Because we don't know for certain. They could just be like staring at it. Or do we hold off because one team kind of has an idea and the other one doesn't? This is tough. I would be really surprised if Rekapig doesn't, doesn't see this right now. They, they just went in to name those. They, they're they looking at where they're used. Yeah. The, specifically, yeah. they're not looking where their buffer is used. They're looking at where the things that they're clobbering are being used. I think they are entirely aware of the fact right. that they are yep. damaging other locals. Um, this is actually an interesting challenge in that the uh, a buffer that you're copying into is actually at the start of the stack. And honestly, I think that's almost a dead giveaway because that would never happen. The compiler would always put yeah. the uh, buffer at the end of yep. the stack, especially any modern. Um, yeah, anything modern that compiler. looks like it's a so, large buffer and like that, your know, character or anything like that, it automatically gets put there. Right. You would have to go out of your way to put it ahead by like writing in an assembly or doing really weird command line args and like Just, setting that up. So you know that they intentionally put the buffer before those stack locals, which I think is a pretty big giveaway of hey, there's something going on here, you know, these values on the stack are, are intentionally after your buffer for a reason. So right. we're, we're really going to need to see them constructing something where they're they're passing in those correct fields that match up with probably what they're actually yes. sending. Yeah. They're sending a count. They're sending, I think, number of, e number of egg groups and number of eggs in a group. And I think we'll see them fixing those up such that they overwrite them so that they stay the same. Yeah, and I'm even looking, even Sourcloud is looking at uh, the stack as they overwrite. I, they might be in a debugger trying to trying to figure that out. Yeah. I want to I wanna see if they're doing, they might be doing something similar, which, which, which makes sense. If you've got this overwrite and it appears to be, Envolens was easier than this. Yes, yes, I think you're not wrong. <laughs> Oh, come on. Yeah, I, I think I think both teams are basically on the right path yeah. now. No hint is going to be necessary to, to Th hint this to them. Is, this is the Nopsert problem where you are fighting your dev environment. Yeah. You're not actually... They all understand what the bug is. They might not fully understand the ramifications of that overflow. We can see a breakpoint being set specifically on that sub-RSP, so where it's setting up the stack. I think they're confirming the exact yep. layout of the stack matches what they expect. I think Sour Cloud's going the more dynamic route to see what is actually on that stack. Um, I'm waiting for somebody to do something else like uh, GeoHot's uh, Kira tool, right? Where it was I like know, the memory right? visualization. Because honestly, like being able to actually just visualize and look at a stack and something like this would be really, really neat. Because you could you could look at the before, you could look at the after, you want to be able to rewind and pull out those values and like figure out where it offset to put it into your payload. Like you could just visually build your 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 exploit essentially that way. Um, I think one of the easier dynamic approaches here would be there's no pointers on the stack, so that's pretty easy. Yep. Uh, I think that the easy approach that I would go with is throw a non-overflowing payload. They know that the size of that buffer is 20 oh, fair. Bytes. Yeah. So if you throw a non-overflowing payload, put a breakpoint on RET, and look at what the stack looks like at the end of the function, you know what it is supposed to look like in a valid function, and you can probably find your 20 hex. Patch that in, and then correctly fill in yeah. those stack just, locals. Just build it block by block, where you first right. like get to the local, then you then you include it in your overwrite, then you get to your next one, then you include it in your overwrite, and then you keep going through it one at a time. Or actually, you could probably just do a straight shot, look at them all, and then yep. if they're all going to be contiguous anyway. It's so only 20 hex in. bytes. Yeah. Or, or yeah. How many locals were there? There were like 18 hex worth of locals, which oh. is... I missed that. You know, it's funny. I was mentioning Kira, and somebody in chat pointed out that SourCloud actually used RR to do a rewind. That's another, yeah. That is actually another way to do it, right? Like, you can blow yeah. it out, but then you can rewind on the stack and look at the value there, too. Yep. That's that okay. fair. Uh, SourCloud right now, at least for me, probably 10 seconds behind, they are um, they are constructing, they are putting the right values on the stack right now. 
or they're putting what they think are the right values on the stack. Um, we'll I don't out. know if they're right or not, but yeah. they, they definitely are aware that they're clobbering things that they need to fix up. Oh man, I'm gonna need a good, a good uh, break for for this this stream. Uh, thankfully, uh, Carl's gonna take over and join you uh, for the last one. Come <laughs> second. I'm gonna need to rest yeah. my voice. This one's been, this one's been crazy. Um, Absolutely. Oh gosh, it's really coming down to the wire on this, and it's it is. it's it's really fighting fighting tooling here. It is what it really feels like. A lot of getting debuggers set up. I mean, SourCloud. Obviously, it was very frustrated they couldn't get uh, yeah, a debugger yeah, running on the first new, challenge. Yeah, the R1. Which, yep, that's the Yeah, fair. especially if that if you are more dynamic and your debugger is not working, and that's that's where CTFs like this can be really challenging. Is you go head to head with someone who's static, and you do debuggers, and your debugger doesn't work. Yeah, and I can guarantee you, their Ida, their Binja, whatever they're using statically is going to work. Yeah, in every CTF challenge. Yeah, yeah, very, very few. Rarely, rarely will somebody build something designed to break a tool like that, which is basically what it takes at this point to, to make one right. when not usable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In chat, uh, we're, we're saying photo finish here. I agree. I mean, that's kind of the nature of a sudden death is that you're, you're likely to get it. Um, but we're looking at, yeah, I waiting to see this one happen. This one is, I guess I'm glad this didn't happen earlier in the day because if that happened at the yeah. very, very beginning, we would have been uh, a long day. It, we do actually have the option of actually moving our last match of the day to tomorrow morning. So it's it's entirely possible that we actually decide to, to rearrange and uh, and move that, which might be a little bit before your normal you know, waking hours, Falk, but... Uh, um, that it will be. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are a night owl even by West Coast standards. Uh, yes. So, which yes. I actually often see you like, you're awake, you're awake and I'm, uh, or, you know, waking up in the morning and we're interacting on like opposite coast and opposite days, times a day, like relative. Yep. Yeah, right. right now I'm going to bed at like six or seven a.m. Wow. So, it's uh, it's rough. I've been working on a fun project though. So. Ah, oh, neat, 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 neat. All right. So, yeah, actually, having something good to do and having something you're you're excited about though, actually, absolutely makes it harder to like, to go yeah. to bed early. Like, you just it's too easy to get consumed. Oh come on. I see them uh, creating bite arrays. Uh, calc known egg. Yep. Wow. Uh, yeah, they're both. They're both. Oh. I'm just really surprised because I'm pretty sure my my view is that you could just you could throw something inbounds and not corrupt the stack, right? And right. then just literally fill in everything verbatim the right. way it existed. Yeah, max maximize the size of what it could be without overflowing, and then use yep. that to 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 show what the next thing is in. Yeah, yeah, break there. There you go. So we got actually a, a chat question: Do you get a sudden death? Sudden death? It certainly <laughs> wasn't planned. Uh, in yeah, hindsight, so we're gonna switch to a challenge where it's just uh, a foot race. First one to reach the other end of the Vegas Strip wins. <laughs> oh, that would. I'd rather do this challenge than that for sure. <laughs> uh, respect. Yeah, especially the the heat it is right now here. It's crazy. There, so what what happened? I heard there were floods. There, there is that yeah, true? Two nights ago, there was. Oh, it was it was like this massive like monsoon that just hit. I mean, actually, a month. Oh, hold on. Process cool. stopped with code eleven six tech V. I think that is Sour's first uh, seg fold. Okay, so that's a good sign. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm putting my, okay, I'm moving my chips over into Sour, but uh, I might hold some in reserve because Wreck-It Pig, I could see them. wreck -It Pig is architecting. Yeah. wreck -It Pig's going for the solution where they're going to run it and it's just going to work. Exactly, exactly. And if it doesn't, that's when it really starts to be frustrating because it's like, oh, what did I do? And now you're reading over your code 50 times. Yeah, exactly. Whereas on the other hand, Sour Cloud's kind of incrementally like try and break and try and break until it's going to like just all nope. of a sudden like build up to a correct solution. So yeah, I, I love to see the differences. Uh, it's a completely different approach. Uh, you chat, you chat, see by this the way, with like programming as well of, you know, the, the type of person who writes 2,000 lines of code then fixes the 3,000 yes. compiler errors. Yes. Or the person who every time they change one byte in the code, they recompile their whole code. Yeah. Or the very, very rare people that write 500 lines of code and it's flawless and you're just like, how did you, how does your brain work <laughs> like that? I don't understand. <laughs> All right, so we did. Yeah, we did get a question in in chat about, okay. uh, or not a question, but a response. The flooding was clearly because Sour Cloud arrived. That happened. So that's ah, I think that's the flooding. I see. Uh, you know, there was parking garages that people were like swimming in, like just flood water that had like flowed through it. There was dripping in the hotels. Oh, 
It's uh, it's been a little crazy. Wow. Oh man. Yeah, I think we needed a, a command injection bug where you put semicolon into a variable name and. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, run it that way for our wow. for our next one. So this was this was slightly harder than. Although I will actually, I will say. I think they're making this harder than it has to be, and and I think. Yes. Yes. This this is a problem that that I definitely suffer with when you go from a, a much more difficult challenge into yes. a, a simpler challenge, whether it's just life or you're whatever. You're still in that mode. You, you're still in that mindset. Yep. And you're, you're still in the, we need to architect this, we need to n make everything nice and pretty and good. And, and sometimes that, that fights you because you end up overthinking the, the problem. Yeah, I, I agree. And in fact, I think that in some ways, you know, we didn't it compensate and kind of in our des game design, think about like the psychological effect. If you just spent an hour or 50 minutes on a really hard challenge, you're making progress and also you get something brand new. Like that's worse than starting from zero. That's like starting oh, yeah. from negative, right? So you were you were you had all this mental energy, like focused on that one thing, and now you have to completely like step back into something else. It it is going to be even kind of kind of something extra. So I think if we had if we had launched this from the start, they'd both be done by now. I, I have right. no doubt, right? Like they would have absolutely I'm really just like. I'm really curious what's it. going on with Wreck a Pig because they haven't run anything for like five minutes. They are architecting. They are like yes. reading, statically analyzing the code, and they are they are constructing that stack perfectly. Well, I, I will um, say, Recapig was was frustrated. I think by the end, and was thinking they had more time to finish the other exploit. I think the, so. This may have been a different. So teams can send a different team member between right. rounds, right? And so some of the, so everybody who played in round one should have already been very familiar coming back. They knew we, we, you know they've been now they've been told twice now about the sudden death, and they knew the kind of setup of it. Um, whereas it may not, they may not have been as aware as this. Uh, if this is their first round, and I so, love this challenge. So this is great. This is a fantastic challenge. Eggs in the eggs in the basket. This I, actually I, I could love have been this. a This is a this is one. very. Uh, I know I keep saying uh, it's very not absurdy. Yeah. It just you you see someone come in and sit down and just do it in thirty seconds, and it's like, oh god. Uh, why yeah. was my approach so bad? Yeah. Why couldn't I have done it that way? Yep. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Because everyone here absolutely has the capacity to probably solve this challenge in under a minute. Oh, like but you pop it, it up and just... just it, it's that mindset. It, it's really where your head's at. It's it's the first issue that you ran into that causes you to just derail, change and... that focus and really, yeah. really drive down a certain path. And and I don't know if if, uh, if we switch back over to the uh, to the camera in the room, if we show that like if you can see. There is a crowd gathering kind of around them, like off to the yep. side here. Like there's actually, uh, let me see if I can, I can zoom out the camera a little bit. Um, there is like, wow. a, a, just off camera, there's actually some big groups of people here um, where they are like kind of like, surrounded by people. So that really can be nerve wracking. Like that can add and amp up the, um, the, the difficulty of like, you know, you're just trying to solve a challenge and you've got, People around you, you just failed with this other challenge, and this is, uh, yeah, this is this is rough. So, I yeah. know. Oh Wreck a pig, we've got Googling. Python bytes to array. Oh, no. Just use Python 2. Oh, we gosh. didn't have this problem. Back <laughs> yes, in yes. Listen, <laughs> listen. We, I'm sorry, that ship has sailed. It is time for three. I don't disagree. It is worse for that problem. <laughs> but there's actually, dude, Python 3 has gotten better. It's, it's gotten a whole lot better. It, it really has. I, I yeah, I, I switched to Python three like six years ago, and and it pains me how long it's taking others to to shift. Yeah. Uh, although I, I now that both Ida and Binja have fully deprecated Python two, I think Ghidra is your only option if you want to run Python two, and then you're running Good. Python two through Jython, which is which is its own monstrosity. Uh, yeah, so I mean. Jason oh, is graph just, view yeah. in Binja over here uh, for I think the first time maybe we're I mean we're just just disassembling graph view. Graph view is is personally what I always use. Like it, yeah. it's it you can infer a lot of what the program is doing based on the shape of the graph, and you lose that in ILs, you lose that in disassembly decompilation, and uh, Ghidra really really put the um um the the well the code on the side and the like disassembly on the other side and now that's what i do in all my environments i do that in oh, Binge, i do that in ida side by but side i do it with graph view yeah. graph view yeah. is like mandatory yeah, so and that's actually do you have the... decompilation on one side and then graph view disassembly on the other side or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i i still I mean, prefer disassembly and graph view personally 
Really? Yeah, like disassembly is is like graph. Oh, sorry, not for my default, right? I want to have I want to have yeah. high level IL as well, but like if I'm looking at a disassembly, I want I, I still want my graph view. Um, oh come on! I think we're about to see wreck a pig. How many? Fry, like they're just calc known egg. They're they're calling their funk. They just spent a lot of time constructing this function, and now they are using it. Yeah. Yeah, and this, there's a lot of math and a lot of constants and a lot of numbers in here. I have no idea if it's right, but ah, uh, right? It's uh, it feels really scary. it feels far over engineered versus just breaking a debugger and then look at it. But I, you know I what? Know, if I'm it works, sure you could just mem if you could works. just like GDB attach, write mem the stack, load that up into your thing, and then write the first forty yep. bytes from an existing yep. valid copy stack and frame, paste and then, the buffer and just put it right there. What did we just get there? We got some sort of a crash from Wreck-It Pig. Uh, ooh, did they crash on leave? No. They're on... Oh, I can't quite see it. Yeah, okay. We are giving them a hint that tells them exactly what the exploit is. It is what okay. it basically say. Too many bytes here, stack over, stack smash, and there's a win function. Like, no shell code, there's a win function built in. We're trying to give them, like, this is this is some hand on stuff. With Wreck Pig, I think Wreck Pig just, Ooh. they either put a breakpoint on the red to see where they are or they just crashed on it. I saw them looking at it. Now, I hope there's win. Just... Yeah, there we go. You just get the address of it. Like, copy address. You only got to look at it, just run it. You just got to run it. Oh, come on. No, just copy the address of it. Oh, yeah, no, no. no. There you go. There you there go. There it is. My favorite hotkey in Midges, con uh, c Command Shift A. It's copy was, address of I current thing. I was just going to say that copying addresses in IDA is so, so hard. Yeah, I always hit in IDA, I hit space, and then I go over and I scroll and copy to the side. In Binja, it's like a default hotkey. Uh, it's just like copy current address. So they're throwing this against their local run where they're debugging it and stuff. Sorry, and sorry. I'm guessing one, these one second, I'm getting some notes from the, same on the, on the, the producers. Build. Come there, on, Wreck It Pig. Oh, there is Pi. Oh, is Pi what's killing them on. Uh, so are they partial override? If the, so, well, you have a solution script you can look at. What does that do? <laughs> so there is pi. I said I think I said there is a pi. This is not live overflow. We've got Gamozo uh, and I'm Cyphertext Jordan. Uh, uh, well, Brandon Gamozo, Falk, and Jordan Cyphertext. We are watching. Yes, Envolens was was a, a true speed run for sure. Um, so they're they're working oh, up on, on hints. I feel a little bad now because the hints themselves are almost distracting. Um, yeah. But like, we are we are really trying to. Uh, there is pie. Did the hint say there was no pie, or did I just say there was no pie? Now I'm I'm just I'm just confused too. I this one is. Ooh, go fix. Go tell them. That was a big deletion from Wreck a Pig. Go fix it. Get a pen or something. I don't know what's going. Okay. I think the hint may have been incorrect. This is this is madness. This one. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. I feel bad. Oh, no. I feel oh. bad. I've been here so many times. I will say commentating this is a lot easier. It is, right? It's so much nicer yeah. than not being sitting right here and, and having to do it. I'm with not this. feeling the pain myself. No, but you still feel some empathy, right? Because you I, know. Oh, I, I definitely feel the. Uh, what is it? What is it called? The. Is it is it a German? There's some word for like when you feel the you pleasure at not having to experience their pain or something or like you you directly like kind of feel their pain not it not emp I know what empathy is okay yeah yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but like there's there's a word for it I think gosh is it, I mean there's a German word for everything so of course well there yeah is. there just is so you're you're getting questions in the chat if when when are they gonna see you do CTF pwn oh, challenges I, it's been this years is, this it's is been exactly so what years. would happen if I do CTF pwn <laughs> challenges and I'm I'm gonna feel really bad about myself when I go to bed but you would you would then get get you get better at it you'd practice it if you uh segmentation <sighs> fault number of eggs uh, I am I need a break if I was one of these teammates I might just close my eyes start over like. Man. Oh, there we go. So we've got some translation. Fremdschemen. Fremdschemen. I'm saying that wrong. This is... Secondhand embarrassment. Yo, Secondhand oh. embarrassment. This is... I think I have heard of that. Yeah, th yeah. To feel secondhand embarrassment. Yep. There we go. Thank you, chat. This is what chat's for. Oh. 
So number of eggs, dollar sign. There's lots of dollar sign eggs. Oh. We're running it in RR. Oh my god. I, I do know, like, this is one of the validated pwn scripts. We have a simple pwn script that does solve this, uh, and I thought it was pretty straightforward, but man, I, uh, I think we have we have broken our players, and I, I, I think feel we, bad. We actually have. We just need one of them to win, though, and they can they can go go rest and relax, and we'll we'll pick it up tomorrow with uh, the the next round. I uh, I know exactly what these. Um... Oh, we got a little bit of spam. Yeah, and, and classic. Do, do doing this like, uh, you know, normally like in an actual CTF at home. Um, you you have the option of like stepping away, right? And actually, yeah, and sometimes I'm trying a different that challenge, and stepping away sometimes. is what saves you time. It's but here, or or like going to bed, right? Same thing. You're a CTF, and it's like no, no. You just need sleep. Like you're actually not being productive anymore. You got to know when to walk away. You don't have that option in this, and so we're just yeah, we're seeing them like just really struggle. And yeah. again, these are great players. They're good yeah. solvers. This the challenges are fine. It's just. Sometimes you get stuck in this rut, and your brain is uh, brain is working. I, th I think the I've, challenge is I've fine, been here so many times. Like I know exactly. Like I, I know all of the emotions that are going on yeah. right now. Yes, I know. I apologize. We should put a uh, trigger warning. I apologize in chat for all the anxiety that you guys are getting yeah. through. We're all like, but listen, the relief is going to be so good when we see that winner logo. When somebody gets a shell, it's going to feel real good. The so, problem is I, I know that when you lose a challenge like this, you just, you think about it for the next hour and you're like, oh I, my what God, I, I done, literally could have, did, yeah. I could have written a two followed by a one followed by a six and then a couple nulls and then a, a return address and it'd be over. Yep. Yeah. We had one and earlier, like, we had one earlier that Chris Eagle actually was in where he lost the round that he lost it because, so uh, I think I mentioned this was the, the, the file overwrite where you could write to uh, uh, proc self mem and oh. he was getting stuck not letting it flush. Right, so by not oh no, he like his overwrite worked, but his breakpoint when we went to go check it was before the flush, and so he's like, oh, it's just not working. What's wrong with my script? He was yeah. he was he was fighting something that wasn't broken, because he just broke in at the wrong time. So like just you know, stuff that like that, awful. and then you're just kicking yourself, you know, the the whole next <laughs> time. Wow. So we don't cover psychiatrist cost chat. Unfortunately, that is not uh, we, our business insurance doesn't cover. We don't have business insurance. We're not a business. This is this is a nonprofit or not even a nonprofit. This is just like a bunch of people doing <laughs> something for fun. So uh, I know you're 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 joking. I wish I wish we could though. We should give them like uh, big bear pillows or something to like you know yeah. squeeze afterwards. Yeah. Bring a, a, a an empathy pet or something. They can, a dog. They can. They're not. They're not even being actively heckled, though, and that's that's what's really throwing me off here. It could be worse. It could be. It could be yeah, worse. Yeah, and I think I think at the you know eventually when live CTF gets really really common and it's happened all the time and people are really used to it, that's when we're going to amp up the heckling. That's when it's going to be like, oh no no no, yeah. take off the headphones and we're just going to troll you. I, well, I mean that's what like you know infiltrate is like, right? When they would do the nopsers. Are you going to be going to offensive con? In what is that February? Uh, yeah, I, that's the plan. Uh, we were just just talking to them, but yeah, I'm looking looking forward to going out there. Maybe uh, I've maybe... heard that that has the most similar vibe to uh, an infiltrate, and I need infiltrate back in my life. I agree with you. I miss infiltrate strongly, and so far that's it. The other one that might be similar is coming up this year, which is in Paris, uh, Hexacon, in I want to say September okay. or October. So you might want to check out that one. Um, that this year? Oh, geez. yeah, yeah, it's coming up this year. It may be still too too soon to travel. I don't. I, I'd have to talk uh, to my employer. Uh, he, he says <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, you you turn around and ask yourself, <laughs> isn't it nice? Yeah, it's got uh, yeah. It certainly pluses, anyways. So let's see. Like I I saw a lot of code being deleted from Sour Cloud, which is really scary. Recapig is really commit to this one function and they just keep adding args and magic constants to it. I it looks like a crack me. I don't I don't know I don't <laughs> know what's going on with that. Um they, they it's like the descent into the madness. I do. And in this is we did get a a chat question of did the team send their web players? No, these are good <laughs> exploiters. They really this, are. This is this is this, this can is happen to the best of us. This is absolutely what top tier this, yes. binary exploitation people look like yep. in in the in the heat of it. Yeah, it's just the 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 constraints they're under here are very different than the constraints they're normally under, 
and the, the, the shift to sudden death. This is the very first time we've ever had to do a sudden death, and like that, I think it's thrown things off. Um, so, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think, yeah, oh, come on. What are we, what are, where are we even at? Where oh, are we there's at? a lot of up arrow answers and a lot of, I think, hope. All right, are, are we gonna are we gonna like recompile it gets and actually have a sudden death? Sudden death? I don't know what. Uh, are we close? Yeah. Which on which one? Okay, so so um, the um, Carl who's been watching Wreck a closely is like they are really close. They're yeah. Their perfect I function agree. is it. So. Okay, I just I'm gonna sit for a second. I I need a break. <laughs> It's yeah, been no high problem. energy, high energy. So we're now looking at the the memory maps and trying to figure out, I guess, maybe what these addresses are. Uh, so in Ida, the addresses are going to be based at zero because this is a, like a dynamically um, moved thing. So I think right now they're actually trying to figure out the true absolute address of where these things are loaded. Uh, I've definitely clicked on addresses a bunch of times, highlighting them, hoping that hoping that it clicks. It's crazy because the same um, I I don't want to I don't want to say ticks but like same ticks of like clicking the same yeah, thing the up selecting. arrow the, yeah, the yeah. highlighting the yeah. address over and over and over. You know we all do just... that yeah. Oh so the the address also somebody earlier showed me a trick that I hadn't seen that was uh, the ability for Jeff to automatically like re pointer stuff based on relative addresses of of uh, loads so. Oh, that was really, really nifty. I hadn't actually seen that one before. Because I mean, usually I would either rebase Binger or Ida, right, like at the base like load address, or so, just do a bunch of math separately. But There's no reason here you can't do a partial overwrite. You uh, can do a two-byte overwrite of the return address. That is the, exactly the intended solution. That oh. is exactly what you're supposed to do. Is That's yeah. why we said there's a win. You're trying to yeah. hit the win. It, it is pi. Which was, uh, which was, I think, clearly a mistake. Yep. We should have just, uh, although, although even still, they would have otherwise, I mean, you, even then you would want to do the partial overwrite because you don't right. have a, a pointer. Uh, you would have On to the also, server side. Yeah, yeah. And so. Yeah. Uh, Come on. <laughs> where are we at? Oh, it, it, it really comes down to how quickly can you do stack math? And like know the layout of the stack in your head because there's a lot of guessing. Every time you see like yeah. a comma one yeah. adding something to an array, every time that happens, I know exactly. It's like, oh, maybe there is a frame pointer. Maybe I accounted for the frame pointer. I need to go one behind it. Yeah, like, and you're just fiddling with all your stuff. And then you you, right. you fiddle with something that was working and made it broken. And then later on, you think, yeah, it is just compounds. I, I yep. think the most important skill at this point is honestly just resiliency. It's like the ability yes. to, to, to just stay calm, stay focused, kind of keep, yeah. not let yourself get like weighed down. Cause I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing people just kind of like, I mean, I was, was joking when I said we broke our players, but I, I feel a little bit like that. Like we just kind of yeah. crushed them too much. And, and that's, this is the result of it. And unfortunately we, other than another sudden death, which I feel like would, they would just quit and walk off. Right. Um, like, I, you know, we don't have a lot of, uh, of, of levers to pull. So we're gonna see him out. Although I will, I will say, having had uh, so far, um, this is the eleventh match. I guess we've had. We had eight in the first round, and this is the uh, third match of the second round. Um, this is the first time we've had it kind of go go to this point. So, yeah, it could have it could have been worse. I was. This was my fear is that we'd end up in this kind of a situation on all of them. Hey, that's okay. We we can we can make it fun and entertaining. I mean, it's it's a uh, this this is the essence of CTF. Yes. If you can, and it, here's the thing, when you're in this situation, it is the worst feeling, and then you get past it, and you're just like the the relief and relaxation. Yes. Uh, the valleys match the 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 mountains. But so we got a question in chat actually. What's your right now? What's your bet? Who who do you think is going to win? We've got Rekka that was I, I, felt I behind, but now has because that. Because I, I see I see a lot of support Sour Cloud, but I'm going with Rekka Pig. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think their approach, I felt like for a while they weren't making as much progress, but I, right now, I just don't know that we... Almost every time I'm seeing a terminal open with Wreck a Pig, it's in like a, a crash call stack or a breakpoint on the red. Right, right. And Sour Cloud, every time I'm seeing them running it, it's not even crashing. And I'm, I'm so concerned. 
I, I think Sour Cloud went from great start to I'm just confused and now I'm lost and now I'm off in the middle of weeds trying random things without really being intentional, right? So instead of just slow and steady and consistent and like testing your assumptions, measuring things, you know, moving yep. forward, um, yeah, we're seeing, I mean, I would love to be wrong. I'd love to see see him see him pull it out. Yeah, but... I mean that's that's it. We we want to see that big flip. Yep. But but right now I think I think so. So we'll see. Yeah. In chat, what are your bets? I I want to hear uh, I want to hear the chats uh, bots. So, so A1, uh, we have Rekapig and we have uh, Team Sour Cloud. Our two teams. You can the upper left corner. You can see a little bit. Unfortunately, Rekapig. They have like a white title bar. It misses part of the title. But you can see who's. Who's competing usually when we've we've got that uh, uh, that screen up there? Oh, congratulations! There we go. Did that do it? Submitter two. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Oh, there it was. Record pick one. It's wow. congratulations. A brutal, yeah, just, brutal. Wow. I'm watching the the replay, or more specifically, the YouTube just a little after, and they're just fixing up. Oh, they're switching it over. Yeah, and they throw and it at the actual thing. There yep. it is. Well done. Ah, yeah. oh, that was that was brutal. wow. Excellent. Well, thanks. Uh, so, folks, thank you so much. Um, maybe one of our later matches today, we'll, we'll, we'll get him a text and we can get you, because I think we are basically done uh, for the day here. We've got it. The whole room is getting shut down, and so we gotta we got to kind of clear out here. Yeah, no um, problem. But, but it was a blast hanging out with you. Thank you very much for joining us. Everybody in chat, thanks for watching. Um, for sure. I think that was we're, great. We're going to go to intermission for a little bit just to let that kind of run out, And what, but I, I don't think we're coming back today. We're probably going to move our last uh, match of this round to tomorrow morning. Uh, and we'll finish up the last four matches of the whole event uh, then. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for coming by, everyone. Take it easy.
Hello everybody, welcome to the last quarterfinals of the live CTF. Uh, we are uh, a bit behind on schedule, but we're going to do this match today. And uh, yeah, uh, we just heard uh, the main CTF uh, day end, but uh, yeah, we are going to still go on with this match. So we're going to have the players ready. We're ready with production. Yes. So we're going to count us in in five, four, three, two. One, go! All right. So. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. We actually, I, I apologize. I told you wrong. We just tweeted out a correction, but uh, we were, I thought we were going to be done. We were, we were a little bit behind, but we decided it was uh, better to stay late, finish it up today, and stay on schedule. For, give us more time tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going to have some more fun challenges, interesting things, so we don't want to lose that time. So here we are. Cool. And uh, the challenge we are looking at is uh, one of my creations. Uh, it's called No Roplem. It's. Uh, I mean, I think this is not the first time. Is it going to be? Is it going to be a problem? Uh, well, I mean, it will be hopefully only a slight problem. Yeah, uh, like, well, they, they should have no Roplems. No, it, exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a slight, slight Roplem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, it's an idea that's been around uh, on multiple. Like, this is not the first time. It's it's inspired by previous challenges in the same vein basically get a more or less random blob of data and you're supposed to um, get uh, rob gadgets out of that and uh oh that's right so i i'm excited because i i, I don't know the rop tools i don't know the current mm -hmm. state of the art in the rop tools and are people going to like are they going to have smart searches are they going to just grep are they going to like actually yeah so i'm curious to see what people are, are going to end up doing Right. Uh, in this. We can start by going to Perfect Root, one of our uh, two teams in this match. They are opening up Ida. Uh, I think we gave them, I mean, we did give them the source code as well for this one, I think. However, the source code doesn't tell you the, the full story, right? You might want to yep. know like offsets yep. and, and, and so on. So looking in Ida might still be uh, useful, even though you have the source code. Honestly, sometimes even I have source code and things, I'll use Binja just for the cross-reference system, mm -hmm. being able to quickly navigate it, or if I want to script up something yeah, that yeah. maybe it's harder if it's just pure text, right? Uh, text stuff. So anyway, they're taking. They also you can also see them. They're taking a look at the uh, source code. 
Uh, let's switch over to Straw Hat and see them doing basically the same thing, right? Yeah. They're looking yeah. at source code, getting a feel for the challenge. So roughly the way this works is that, uh, I, I said more or less random, they, uh, they can provide a, an encryption key, which will, for all intents and purposes, act as a random seed. It's like seed. a random seed. This, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then after we have generated that, we sprinkle a bunch of uh, RET uh, instructions into this to make sure that there are appropriately sized I mean, gadgets. If something was truly random, you'd expect RETs to happen like only, you know, yeah, one in 256 56, bytes. right? Like, you know, and so you would have not a whole lot of functional gadgets mm. uh, throughout it. So it makes sense to, you know, every n where n is much smaller than that, uh, you know, you, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I did return. every 16 bytes. Yeah, you just um, end up with much more gadgets in the same space. Right, and they have like a megabyte, I think, of gadgets as well. This so. is what I want to see. I'm curious how the raw finding tools work with like a bigger blob of memory. I know a lot of CTF binaries tend to be pretty small. Right. Uh, yeah, so this is, I think, where one of the new tools, uh, Ropper, uh, really, shine, uh, really shined. It, I think it crunched through the whole Linux kernel in like a couple of seconds. Oh, wow, so, yeah. So uh, have no problem with something one meg. No, yeah, no, but yeah. yes, this uh, can have been like a little bit of an issue for some of, uh, you know, the, the older tools. Any kind of pure Python-based tool, for example, yeah, yeah, is yeah. not going to be very performant. No, or, you want yeah. to just like, you know, when you have something that you just want to process a large amount of like binary data like this, then you probably want something that's like compiled code. Yeah, yeah, something something native. So right. we're already in a debugger of our perfect root. We can actually see that they've got uh, got their Jeff prompt up, and they're just Rop Gadget. So they're going to run Rop Gadget on on the binary. They're checking the name, and yep, I was that's pretty quick, right? Right. So and there's a check like we've seen now checks like in both teams. I saw Straw had do it earlier. Yeah. So they're both. I love. I'm. I'm so happy that nobody has made the mistake of of not running check stack that I've seen so far. Like they seem to be pretty, pretty doing that. Right. And the program does have basically all mitigations turned on, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we do give them the address of where all of these gadgets are located, so they can easily calculate the addresses. Well, now wait a minute. Um, oh, we lost uh, the feed for a little bit there. Okay, so. I'm a little confused though because they, I saw uh, something that said 110 gadgets found. Were they looking for gadgets in the binary? It must have been looking the gadgets in the binary. Yes. Not in the payload it generates, right? They need True. to actually first dump that re or they either can just modify the source code, give it a fixed key, mm -hmm. and then generate it. Or yeah. So now, like, yeah, I'm I'm curious if they if teams elect to make it work with just one whatever random key, or if they actually incorporate trying different keys until they get one that produces a really easily, you know, gadgetable. Right, uh, you can basically approach this challenge from like two directions. Yeah. Uh, you can fix the key and like make do what with what you have or kind of set up restrictions on what gadgets you need and then just randomize the key until you get those things. I think the latter, if executed properly, is probably more effective, but you need to kind of like formulate that the, the notion of I need some of these gadgets into like a strict Thing that you can put into code. Yeah, because you have to be able to like measure the fitness of whatever you're producing. Right. Because you might like, you might need like, okay, I need this or this or this and this or this. Yeah. Like you know, I I could even see kind of a hybrid approach, right? Where like I would probably just think of like, what is the most complicated gadget? Right. That What's I want. Like like the must the, have. Yeah, the I one really that. hard thing, and then like everything else, I can work around. Like I can get things into registers pretty easily. Right. But what is going to be the one that? Uh, Stephen has really tall shoes on right now. Yes. I was, I was very. I was like, wait a minute, that's not how it's all. All right, and just in time, we caught. Yeah. Caught, caught on <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and um, so um, let's see. We do have someone googling a little bit. Uh, they yep. are. I think it was was were they looking at the RC four? No, the they were AES. looking at AES. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, not good. Not correct. Well, well uh, it's not that it's not correct. It's just not what we want them to be doing. Right, because the encryption we're using here is RC4. Uh, it's a big, it's a big favorite of mine. I, I try to overuse it and in, in, in stuff because <laughs> it's like it's so easy to implement. It's very very fast. Yeah, you actually don't even need a library for it. No, right? no, it's like. like it's, uh, yeah. I think like uh, in, in Python, you can implement it in like three lines of Python. Um, so uh, here's the thing, is this implemented in the program? Yes. Or, and do, does it, s so I, I'm, a, yeah, I'm a little worried after last round. I'm, I'm worried about sinkholing teams into like these dead ends or something. So I hope 
Right. I'm, I, I'm just thinking. Maybe I should in have. In ten minutes, we might want to throw out a hint. I guess what I'm saying. That, yeah. Like this is the encryption. Yeah. It doesn't that's matter. not the challenge. Yes. Right. Like just don't. It's just. Don't that's worry just about random. It. Um, yes. But uh, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what we end up with. So uh, yeah, because I think uh, in the function they are just named like key scheduling algorithm and like PRNG or something like yeah. something like yeah. this. And that's actually, I mean, it's also it's it's just by chance, I guess. But it's also because it doesn't really matter. Like you just as long as you are able to do the same thing of your own, if you're using yeah. brute forcing or whatever, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Well, and and uh, I mean, remembering back the some of my crypto classes back in the day, like you know, good encryption is functionally identical from from a random C generator, right. anyways. And so it it you know. It hopefully is is it's somewhat intuitive that that's you know essentially kind of what what they're doing. Right. Uh, that like, was a new. There's a website I hadn't seen for it. It was disasm dot something dot. Oh, I didn't see that. That's yeah. They actually it. yeah. Next time they, next time they bring that up, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Right. So, so so I, it looks like Perfect Roots using a website. I wonder if it's just a very fast straight disassembler or disassemble at every offset type thing. Interesting. Um, you we can see Straw Hat here using uh, Rob Gadgets. Uh, the same one that I think we saw from Perfect right. Street, right? So both yeah. of them are going like old school kind of thing. Not like using Rob Ropper, which is, I guess that's the new hotness, right? Well, so. as yeah, we talked about this throughout the throughout the weekend. Uh, uh, no, so uh, what are they running out though here? Though here's the question: Is Straw Hat running it on a dump? It I mean, looks yeah. like, well. No, you have you have oh, yeah. Ben dot raw. So it's they have 16 megs. Is that? That's uh, seems large, wasn't it? Well, maybe they just dumped like too much, like you know, the, the whole p memory segment that it was in, so, or something, something like, like that. that. Okay. Or maybe it was actually 16 meg. Uh, could be, could be that large. Yes. Well, I guess we'll find out how yes. fast uh, Rap Gadget is. So uh, basically, what we saw there was that they have they have run the program with some key, uh, generated this uh, collection of gadgets, uh, dumped that memory to a file. Then they uh, run it through the ROP gadget finder, and they since it's not an else file, the program cannot automatically detect like what what is this. So mm -hmm, the, instead, mm -hmm. they manually specify like this is x86, uh, 64 bit. Like trust me. Yeah, and uh, and you know we're not worried about virtual offsets or addresses. Mm -hmm. Like just disassemble at every offset, yes. please. Yeah. And you can see them doing it here again, uh, just dumping it to a text file so that they can like easily search through this and see uh, what they have to work with. Now they they. Last time they backgrounded, I didn't notice that. They, are they on a different tab? So do they just like kick off multiple ones and let them go, or did one finish and they ran another one? I'm not sure oh, which it was because yeah. I feel like that could go either way. Oh, and here we go. We're looking at the man page for Rob Gadget. So, yep, same kind of thing. Yep. They're both using this same so they, tool. So you can see they're hovering over the raw mode, which is the same. They're looking for this, like, how do I Oh, tell oh wait, this actually, no, they're using Ropper. The man page was for Rob Gadget before, but now they're actually running Ropper. For sure? Was that not just like? They, they had Ropper on screen. They 100% were running. So one of their one of their terminals down here was actually running Ropper. The other one they're looking at the Rop Gadget man page. Mm. So I think they're hedging their bets, right? And trying multiple. So yeah. So now 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 perfect. So this is perfect route we're talking about here. They're still uh, um, checking. Uh, there we go. Rop. That was it. It was there. I saw okay. Ropper. Right. So yeah, they definitely uh, have it up. I actually I like that idea. I like the idea of you know just run multiple tools. Oh yeah yeah. Sure There's uh, there have been uh, situations where I think. One of the tools uh, have found stuff the where uh, the other one hasn't. Uh, I, I don't remember specific examples, but you know there are these tricky situations uh, where, like, uh, the, the different tools can like differ in what they consider executable code. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, with are using different disassembly libraries, right, or have different, like, right. you can even see them doing different things with like the state, such that like you know one of them. Sees memory that's not writable being written to, and then stops. This, you know, stops analysis after that. Whereas the other one continues, and and it may or may not be depending on your situation whether that actually is a valid thing to do. So there's, I can see a lot of context mattering there. Right. So we All do right. see so here. So uh, Rama, there we go. Yeah. So they're just like checking the documentation for like how do I actually specify the parameters for this raw mode. Now they got it. Um, that's just raw so mode. So they're doing the same thing as uh, Straw Hat um, was doing. I think their arguments are out of order. I think they're putting the argument. I bet this thing has has. Uh, poor parsing. Oh uh, yeah. And see, Rapper's still going. Okay. So they still got Rapper going. But I think they're, they're. Uh... Okay. So tell me a little bit about like the you know in in your kind of approach to to solving this. Um, if you're you're I, I I would imagine you're gonna look for the shortest working payload. 
uh, that you can come up with. Yeah, I will. I mean, you, you always have the kind of generic, um, you know, M map read M protect uh, kind of Rob chain yeah. where you allocate the region of memory, you make that memory uh, readable, writable, executable, you read um, shell code into it and jump to it. Um, that's like a generic approach. Yeah. Uh, so I would probably try to look for something like this. I mean, you will need some, uh, you need some pop gadgets to populate the registers. I mean, that's that's going to be trivial. They're going to yes. they're going to find a bunch of those just, yes. just sitting around. And it's they, they always have like a nice thing where like it doesn't really matter if like maybe you're popping another register as well. Like yeah, as long as you just can just rearrange those yep. uh, populations yeah. in, in the right, right order. order. Yeah, it will not matter. Um, and other than that, you basically just need uh, the syscall. So in a sense, you need like. Well, the, if you do the M map, uh, it's like the that needs like all the registers, like the six. Uh, so you need like a couple of pops and a syscall, uh, and from there, I think you should be all good. So I learned a new trick from Chris Eagle yesterday, though, which is why wouldn't you just use break? Right, but then um, it's not going to be executable. There'll be a rewrite data, re yes, but it won't yes. be executable. And it would have been a perfect solution in that specific context because you only needed read writable right, right, in right, that right, case. Right. <laughs> In this case, that means, uh, but it, it, it is actually a good idea because then you can split up the M up into a break and an M protect. Yeah. Uh, so you need only need like Fewer one uh, and three yeah. uh, arguments respectively. Yeah. yeah. So yes, that is actually uh, still probably viable. a better solution, I think. Yeah. Than, yes. than trying to actually some of those like pop R eight or something can be a bit yeah. uh, annoying. More rare, or you've got to deal with more side effects, and then you know. Right. Again, I'm curious to see as they start looking. So. We've seen them uh, run this uh, and dump this out, but again, are they going to just treat that seed as a fixed value? Are they going to just treat it as like, I'm only going to ever look at one buffer, mm. or are they going to build a framework that searches and finds and can try multiple values until it gets a, a quote unquote good one? Right. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, doing a variant where you, like, you, as long as you have the syscall and a few pops, like, you're, we can switch back to uh, Straw Hat and see that they have started writing an exploitation script here now. So, uh, using pwn tools, like uh, most of our players have been doing, um, they are setting up the initial interaction. They are getting that leak to get that base address where mm -hmm. all the gadgets will be located. Mm -hmm. That's the, <clears throat> the base that they will then need to add a bunch of offsets to to get to these different gadgets. Yeah. Uh, and to clarify again, like what the program is doing, it's asking for a key from the user, generating these like 16 me megabytes of ROP gadgets, and then you basically just can input a large buffer, and then it will pivot the stack to this large buffer, and just it will be a ROP chain. So I don't know if you know your anime well, but one of the chat questions is, what anime is that background from Straw Hat? And I actually don't know. Right. I, I'm not much of an anime I watcher. I have so. seen a, like, I don't I know. Apart from that, like, you I would know, the chat can answer it faster than we can. That's, yeah. That's the, the apart summary. from individual episodes of stuff, like the only like full season of anything I've seen is uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yep. Uh, I seen when that. I was like fourteen, that okay. was great. Though. I've seen a couple of Ghost in the Shell and yeah. uh, you know a few more One Punch, but yeah, not uh, not a huge amount. So unfortunately, couldn't couldn't tell you. Although no. I'm curious. Uh, yeah. So chat will have to help us on that. Um, All right. So looking back at the source code. Uh, please provide a key, the toolbox area. Okay, so I mean, it, yeah, I, I'm i really curious again. I mean, what is the, I, I, I feel like this this should just be doable with just syscall and registers, right? Like you really don't need, well, right, so oh, like here's the question though. Look here. Yeah. Look here, we have uh, over on Straw Hat's uh, side. They are looking for the syscall. They're looking for the pop RDI. So they are like, you know, picking their different uh, pieces here. Uh, and uh, yeah, they are uh, getting, slowly getting there, I think. I think they, they are onto that strategy that I was talking about. Well, we're seeing the same thing, I think, from Perfect Root. They've got all the register control first. They haven't gone for a syscall yet, but right. um, they're actually going for some ads. This is interesting. Yeah, so oh, maybe- Oh, are they going to add the base address to no, uh, I'm trying to think of what they, if there's a return address that comes back from like MMAP or break or something, are they going to add to, I, I can't think of a reason they would need to add to it though, uh, they yeah. just need the, it's a good question. need to move it to a different register really. So they already Although have the that, that reminds me of uh, one uh, difficulty of the, if you would go for the uh, break and protect uh, yeah. route, yeah. is that 
uh, with break, you cannot uh, specify the address yourself. You will get the address back in the RAX register. Sure, so you just need to exchange need, it to a different register. Right, yes. Yeah, uh, except actually what you might need is to copy it to another register because you may have to use it more than once. Mm, yeah. Because you're probably going to have to do like some sort of jump to it at the end as well. So you actually save a copy that, yeah, that's a good point. You actually might be better off with MMAP with the, yeah, so depends. With so the that flags it, that you control. It's, you're, you're switching MMAP for maybe like five or so uh, you know, or more. One of the things that strikes me just now is, it's just, you know, it's funny that you don't think of this right off the bat, but, you know, when I'm looking at, much like the, some of the earlier ones where you're like, oh, here's a bunch of syscalls, and then it's like, oh, but getting the string is hard. In this case, you've got a bunch of, um, uh, you don't just have a rot payload that you provided. Right. Um, you're using a payload that exists, so you don't get constant. Like constants, which normally are really easy, right? Like a, a pop RDI is great, except it's, it's, you, don't, you don't control the stack that it's running from, right? No, so, no, you are, you are. Oh, like, you do, actually. You, 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 like, you create a huge buffer okay. of, of so like, you whatever have, you want. But, well, but do you? You'd have to find that value in the stack, is my point, right? So you're not going to get, necessarily, all random values in your 16 megabytes, all 32-bit random values or 8-bit random values. Oh, no, no, no. Like, the, the, the gadget area and your ROP chain are, like... Oh, okay. Two separate okay. areas. So, so like, I thought the rock chain was specified based on offsets into the payload, in which case you can only use values that exist in the 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 region. Oh no 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 no! Like you um, you provide basically you provide the the like a normal normal rock chain, and then there is this 16 megabyte area of random gadgets. Oh so sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank it. you. Like, I misunderstood that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So getting control over your so that makes me want to do another challenge though. So maybe maybe a later not this one obviously maybe a later yeah, 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 yeah. a later one that'd be an interesting variant. Um, but yeah, we can switch over to perfect root and see that they are scrolling through. Uh, get it? I think over like there will be this will be a theme throughout this challenge. There will be a lot of scrolling through gadgets. Yes, which and is searching for gadgets. Yeah. I I'm curious. Uh, nobody came in and we did warn them. This is a ROP payload. Yeah. Um, and some of our stuff has been a little cheeky, like the stacks and the, the, the heat versus you know, heap exploitation. But I will say that in this particular case, um, something, you know, a, a, a ROP compiler type situation might have been pretty nice, mm -hmm. especially one where you can let it fail, try a new random seed until it succeeds. You could just sit back and let your tool do all the work. So yeah. I am a little curious that nobody Nobody came in with something more automated. Um, this is something I've actually, on several occasions, thought about as like a very interesting uh, programming uh, project thing is to do like a constraint-based automatic ROP uh, chain yeah. builder thing. Yeah. Like, um, never really gotten around to it, but it's a, it's a problem. I mean, you know, you know, when I'm in the bathroom or something, like thinking <laughs> about the problem. Like, it's, it's, sure, yeah. you take a shower and you think about uh, ROP payload generation. Yeah, yeah I mean, solving, yeah, as, as one does. Yes, as one yes. does. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, this, uh, we're so completely normal I still people. haven't seen. Yeah, this is this is not strange. This is not strange. I promise. Yeah. Um, I still haven't seen a, a syscall yet from Perfect Root, which is interesting, and I haven't seen uh, Straw Hat's payload in a while, so I don't know if they're building right uh, a similar payload or not. I actually one of the things I really like though about this particular challenge. Sometimes again, we have no idea of the state of a challenge. We yeah. don't know how far they've got or what they've got, but here where they're just creating these gadgets, mm. it's actually really quite nice to, to get a sense for kind of how far along they are. And the players, like we've been talking about, like whether it's, you know, the finding the bugs that's difficult or, or performing the exploitation. Right. Here it's 100% like performing the exploitation. Oh, like clearly, yeah. The bug is just handed to you. You're, you're told exactly yeah. how to do it, right. It, the question is, how do you make it do something useful? Yes. Uh, even though you've got that. So I mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of the challenges in this event, a lot of the work was done by a few people who are not here on site. We've had Glenn off camera, but uh, Negasora in chat. Hey, Josh, thanks for hanging out with us. It's the, yeah. I was, it's not too late where, where you're at, but uh, good to see you. Josh has written several of the challenges that uh, are in the competition. Yeah. Happy to have you. And we miss you. Hope you're having a good, uh, a good time. I think he uh, slaughtered at least one of my challenges, uh, right? Uh, in terms of rewriting it? Yes. Oh, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh has gone through and fixed up several challenges that started a little too hard and uh, tried, yeah. to, tried to clean I, them I, up. I'm saying, I'm it, saying slaughtered. What I mean, I really mean is salvage. Yeah. yeah uh, made it, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Fieldable. Yeah. Oh, there, you know, he did, did it to mine, too. Yeah. So, like I said, I had started one that was just pretty broken. And so, all right, so Rock Team, we've got, um, we've got a Rock Team come together. So, we've got a Pop Racks. Looking at the syscall Pop reference. Pop RDI leak. With M, they're going with the MMAP routes. Classic. Okay. 
So in the, if that in, if that's the case, like if they're doing that, that means that they have all the components. Like because if you can do the MAP syscall, you can do all the syscalls yeah, that you I need. Like you can populate all the registers. Except uh, they don't actually have a syscall, so I don't see a gadget for a syscall yet. Uh, they still get to find that. Yeah. That's but that's issue. not going to be hard. No, no, no. There's like, going to be plenty in whatever range that's, of payload uh, Just got, uh, by, uh, like, statistics. Because that one doesn't even need to be, like, uh, before, like, with a ret. Or, like, it can be, th there's quite a, li a bit of leeway what can come after. Well, it's, it yeah. It's also, it's, it's, it's CD80, what, right, for, for uh, uh, a syscall? Yes. So, oh, right, it's two bytes. So it's two uh, bytes, but that's still not 65K of no, no, random, no. you yes. know, 50% you know, chance and whatever. Like, it's, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very doable, especially yes. 16 megabytes. You're definitely going to get some syscalls. So uh, that makes sense that you would be, I mean, I think if you wanted to play games, you could make it much smaller, and then, then you make them really tackle the problem of, like, how many random seeds should they try to right. get that hardest right. thing? I was, uh, you know, considering going that route when we were making this, but I realized... Not for live CTF. No, no. Yes. Not for this. I think for, like uh, for a longer, more interesting variant, absolutely, that would have been yeah. really cool. I was like, sitting oh, there... Oh, it's only like, you know, uh, 50K big or, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, 100K big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sitting there writing the challenge and then you got to the, like, okay, how large should this buffer be? And I just, like, you know, real, typed in a large big. number. Two to put a bunch of numbers. Yeah. yeah. I think I did, like, hex thousand times hex thousand because that felt cool. Uh, I'm going to be real happy when I finally see uh, Perfect Root put a, uh, a syscall one because I'm just seeing a lot of... Uh, yeah, but they are, are they are putting all of the arguments? No, no, this is completely fine. They're building up the ROP chain here. Well, they're missing the syscall thing, right? right. So they're just That's why I said I'm going to be real happy when they... Do they I think they, do they forget it. Oh, they're looking up the shell code as well, which they need to do like uh, Pop after, move like after they done this, after they done the mmap uh, read, uh, they need to actually read the shell the shell code well, into that. But they 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 haven't. Right. Unless I'm missing something, there's still no syscall. No, but I want to switch over to, yeah, to Straw Hat it. because I saw uh, here they just tapped away from it, unfortunately. But I saw they were also looking at a syscall table. Uh, well, and they put up this. They had a syscall gadget in particular earlier. So mm. let's see how many of the other gadgets yeah. they have. Uh, you can see right that they now. have a ROP 2.txt. So and then now a ROP XX.txt. So they might have switched the uh, oh, seed around a little yeah, bit just to, to try, try something else. One. Yes. Um, yeah. Let's hang here. Hang with them for a little bit just to see if we'll get their their payload. By the way, with this, well, since you have such a big. Um, like ROP chain. Yep. Something you can actually go for here is actually uh, a SIG return uh, to like pop all kinds of stuff of the stack. So I think you could basically do this with two gadgets. You need a uh, pop RAX to set the, the syscall and then you need a syscall and that's all you need. Interesting. Yes. And there's even well, like a, a utility function in Pwn tools to build your uh, SIG return frame that you put on really? there. Really? Yes. You tell it which registers you want to populate, Ooh, that like which like ones you care mode. about. Yeah. And then you just like um, serialize this into the right. thing. You put that on the stack. Hint for the audience or for somebody else uh, who might have to ch tackle a challenge like that one later. Keep that. Keep that one in mind because yeah. that's going to solve some of those CTS challenge. I guarantee you in the next year. Yes. The like the good the good thing with it is like really simple. The bad side is that it consumes a lot of space because like it's it's like a you know you're popping off like all the registers uh, of the stack basically yeah but i mean uh so even on like x64 it's not an absurd amount um, no 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 but but like you know in in some rob situations you may, might only have true. like a couple of elements so it's not a it's not a silver bullet yeah but it's and it, or maybe something the, you should maybe have your, in your second stage kind of thing right so your first stage is going to pivot you to a bigger region potentially yes, or something yes. and then that's the one that you feel Yes. Just because you can, because one can be constrained on space, and the other can be constrained on the type of gadgets you have actually available. Right. Um, yeah, we're losing one of our displays here. I don't know if it's. Uh, let me see if we can do some troubleshooting. We've, it's been flickering enough now. I don't know if you have a bad cable or not. Yes. So uh, while Jordan is looking at that, we will continue looking at Straw Hat. And they are putting their uh, exploit script together. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe they are uh, getting a bit closer there. They're looking at variable attributes. I'm not entirely sure what, uh, what that will be used for in this context. 
again looking for the rob gadget uh tool looking at the uh uh what do you call it documentation is the name sorry i'm getting a bit tired here um but yes i do see perfect route here yes so we have perfect route back uh on the stream so let's check them out do they have a syscall gadget i don't see a syscall gadget but i also only got like a very short glance uh at the script um yeah still missing that uh, syscall gadget right? yeah, talk about talk about nerves in the middle of a company if that's right if that's you have like case, everything like, you've and got everything you've yeah, got everything. except for the one thing you the, the most yeah important. yeah yeah Really, uh, really oh, stressful. Here we go. Hold on, hold on. Type S Y S. No, forty-one space. I l wait. Address. Why are they searching for? Are they looking for? Oh, they're looking for a constant. So they want to be able to. I'm not sure what that was about. Yeah, it's. I'm not entirely sure. So. Well, they, they blew through looking for building the right gadgets, I would Oh, say. look here. I think this is, uh, the, you saw that they, they changed the key from 16 bytes to 15 bytes. Uh, I think that's something that's been messing up their input because uh, I think I only read actually 15 bytes of input for the key. So that might be then the, the 16 input byte might be spilling over into the ROP chain and messing with them. Oh, so they're fixing that up. And now you can see they're stepping through the ROP chain. Uh, okay, it makes sure so the gadgets are right. It's all fine, except they still don't have a syscall. Well, they should realize that though as they actually walk through that. Right. Uh, oh, now, now they have a syscall. Did they get it earlier? No, no, they're no. getting it now. There we go. Oh, there they have All it. Okay, right. okay. So this is going to be, uh, yeah, I mean, this should be it. This should be it. Like, is it well, there? Well, there's still a couple of pieces. There's still, there's still several pieces. Yes. Well, okay, they're not sending the shell code yet, but uh, let's see. No. Well, not. they've actually got to copy the shell code to the buffer too, right? Or do they already do that? No, no, no. So, you're like, uh, yeah, that's uh, the read... Uh, you see, they're do, doing two syscalls. Like uh, uh, at it. the top of the script, you yep, see the yep, MAP yep. set up, and then yep. it's the read. That's it. Uh, and then finally, uh, you see the the, the leak plus two thousand. That's where the location. Oh, they have a. Oh, they have off by one. The typo. Is they have a typo. It was twenty thousand yeah. and two thousand. Yeah. It's off by one. Oh my god. They are like one keystroke basically away. I think yeah. from uh, solving this. Oh, that's nerve wracking. Um, Let's go to the split view at least. We can see a little bit of what's going on with Straw Hat while they are debugging that. They are still finding different drop gadgets. Uh, not quite there. I think if Perfect Dude can just figure out this small little, uh, yeah, you know, issue. What are they googling now? They are. Uh, Here's the problem: is once once something's not working, oh, you check yeah. all sorts of other nice. stuff. Nice. Yeah, it is. it's that's annoying. Um, Oh, that was so unfortunate. I mean, maybe there was a, some issue with the MMAP call as well. They could be, yeah. Uh, but but there was definitely uh, a keystroke wrong there. Um, so we have some 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 uh, excellent puns here in the chat, by the oh, way. What do we miss? So we have first it's Dangan Ropa Gadget Happy Havoc. I'm not sure I take that reference, but we have a Srop Drop and Roll. Uh, and oh, a no. proper pun, yeah. Glenn, Glenn, you could tell it's the end of a long day when you're you're putting puns in the chat. Yeah, uh, I'm with you though. I mean, I'm here for the puns. Right. Dad and uh, SROP is uh, also a specific, the name of a technique uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, so bonus points for the specificity, I suppose. But uh, yeah. yeah, I, I, I think uh, we've got a a clearly a correct approach. Yeah, Literally, to um, see Perfect Duke debugging their uh, ROP chain. Yeah, here. yeah, and then have we seen? Have we? Oh wait, did it start over? Straw Hat. That's a real small. Yeah, let's look at the export payloads. script. Yeah, they think they are, you know, a bit struggling with like. Maybe they're trying to do something more complicated, um, but they are looking at the Cisco table, so. It feels like, you know, it should be... Well, and they've, yeah, they've had the wrap gadgets for a while. They've had a working payload, but they're kind of back, backing off from that. Right. Oh, okay, here we go. So switching uh, back to Perfect Druid. Uh, so what we did not see on screen was that uh, they stepped through it and then they checked the memory mappings, probably to see whether um, the, the M map call uh, succeeded or not. And they're trying to figure out, I guess, why it's not or... Uh, yeah, so they, just, there's just this call. So yes. they're checking the arguments. Now they're comparing the arguments here. 
Oh, I think this is an issue. I think they only put, they took a syscall gadget that was not followed by a rec. Yeah, so the inline one earlier isn't going to work. Right, so th yeah. they will do the syscall, but then it will just continue to, uh -oh. into bad oh, no. code. Wait a minute. I think. Uh, with the R. Right, so they took another offset. Was that to a, a syscall with a ret, though? I didn't see. Yeah, I think so. They put it from the some results of bin. Search. So they might have been like, you know, preparing some other stuff uh, earlier here when they're doing this. You can see they're stepping through, they do the syscall, and now they're passing yeah, yeah. Uh, on. So now they have this working. Oh, that uh, might be it. So let's see if they just continue and just go for it, or if they're uh, gonna, yeah. I don't remember if they actually the pivot to it. Syscall, I think they just trying to see here whether and now this they, they still have the typo they still have the 2000 versus the 20,000 so everything else now they've fixed but they still have the 2000 versus 20,000 well and they're going to notice that if they actually check the arguments yes at that yes call, right that's but what's going to like you know you won't notice it till, until yeah. like you can get really blind to these things right and this is where having like i think in a, in a you know normal ccf when you're with a team yeah. and you've got other people that can like pair program with right, you, somebody else right. catches that and just but saves something you a i also do when doing this kind of stuff it's like, like any offset. I always so put them in variable. variables. Yeah, like yeah, always, yeah, always, always, always. Uh, like I'm almost like on the pedantic side where I would put the like the memory protection constants like in variables, uh, or even use the Pwn Tools uh, constants library that they have for this. Um, so like I would have like a, a variable called like shell code offset or something, which would include that, and you would not yeah. have this issue. Yeah. Or so this is why like you have this trade-off with like. How much of like proper software development practices do you apply to your exploits? Yeah, because straight. if you put unit tests into your exploit, no, yeah. obviously that's not a great use of your time. Sure. Right? Like I'm know, there's a limit. Definitely on the side of being like, you know, overly uh, formal in my uh, exploit scripts. Oh here we go. So okay. They're, they've got their checker and they're gonna compile it, they're gonna look at the look at the arguments. Right, they're gonna double check gonna that the constants it. are so the numeric constants that they think right. they're right. They do have to check the constants, but yes. the problem is it's not the one that they're thinking mm, yeah, of. It's yeah, not yeah. the flags. It's not a problem. It's, it's the other type And of. funnily enough, if we look here with straw straw hat, they are also writing some kind Doing of C, a pro as well. C program. So gonna problem. Yes, you can see pointer equals M map. They're yep. gonna double check that this is what they want, like the arguments are what they believe they should be. Um, so yes, definitely on the right track. It's it really comes down to whether Perfect Root manages to discover this yeah. uh, small typo. No hints needed. Clearly, clearly we've got. Uh, you oh know, yeah, know, this will be. Like, the question is like, will it take one minute or ten minutes? But yeah. it will be there. Like, yeah, this this feels like. We're gonna avoid a, a descent into madness and keep this one. It, it, it oh, is. Yeah. It's right. Oh come on. Oh yeah. That's Every time you see the cursor go like right by. Yeah 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 yeah. Uh, Oh, oh. So they are putting another address in here, searing out some parts of it. Uh, it's close. It's close. You oh, can man. see they're starting to type oh, really man. fast now. The, the, I mean, you can't, I can't even imagine the pressure here, right? It's. Uh, so hold on. Okay. Stepping can, through I it. I can actually can, hear them yes. hitting enter so hard behind Yeah, us. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like, like they are static. they are ropping so yeah, hard right this now. This is ropping so hard for sure. Um, there it is. Just fixed it. Okay, they fixed it. Just fixed they it. They found the typo. They just fixed it. Okay, what's that issue? So they have a local working solution. Yep, 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 so they will be is. going for the kill there here. It is. So we, they're getting ready. Get ready. They're doing submitter. And there it is! Congratulations, Perfect Root! Well done! Well done, well done, Perfect Woo! Root! Great job. All Very right, nice. thanks for hanging with us, chat. That was fantastic. Woo! What yeah, a, what, what a, a day, day, what a day. Uh, a lot of great matches. Um, if you missed any of them, uh, you can go, go check out the stream. Yeah, you can check out the stream. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with the semifinals and the finals. Uh, what time are we starting? Uh, we start tomorrow, I believe, at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Pacific time. Pacific, yep. Um, we will put up another uh, YouTube event, so you know you can just uh, bookmark it and put on the reminder thing. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, just glad you all came here to watch, uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, right? That sounds perfect. All right, everybody, take it easy. G good night.